Belleg Beach in the 2013 World Championships. Along with Canada's Hugh McDonald, I'm Carl Larkey of the United States, and we are so glad to have you watching our live coverage on archery.tv, where we're getting set to watch some great competitors all try to figure out how to contend with Bellex mighty winds, which played havoc with all the archers during a long week of qualifying and eliminations, Hugh. Absolutely. Uh, hopefully, the forecast is correct for today, and the winds will be a little bit lighter. But... Generally speaking, it has been an awful lot of fun and a really big challenge to shoot good arrows at this event this week. And you were putting it nicely. You're being very diplomatic about it. <laughs> it was a tough week, wasn't it? it uh, tough for some. I had a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the challenge. I don't get to play and, and win like this all that often. Uh, so for me, it was. I thought it was a fantastic opportunity to really get some good wind work in and to really... It's freeing shooting in the wind to some degree. Uh, you just sort of put your sight about where you think it ought to go and execute the best shot you can and hope for the best. If you think too much, you're in trouble, probably. Oh, immediately, yes. <laughs> well, hopefully the winds will stay calm. They're calm right now. The Mediterranean Sea, which is just beyond the grandstands, is very placid and very tranquil right now. As you take a look at the quarterfinals in the recurve women's team action, and those are the teams that survived and went on to the semifinals. We'll be seeing these four teams this morning. Korea, Belarus in the gold medal match, Mexico and Denmark in the bronze medal match. Now in recurve team competition, there'll be three archers per team, each shooting two times during each of the four ends or rounds. The bottom line, each nation shoots a total of six arrows per end, 24 total for the match. When it's all over, we'll add up the scores, and the team with the highest point total takes the match and wins the medal. We begin with a women's bronze medal match. This is the women's team bronze medal match between Mexico and Denmark. Mexico out first, the world record in this event. 231 points recorded by Korea. That was in Beijing back in 2008. The lineup for Mexico includes Alejandra Valencia, Aido Roman, and Mariana Avitia. They defeated the Georgians by 14 this week, then beat India by 19, and lost to Korea by four. So Valencia, Roman, and Avitia going for the bronze medal here on Bellic Beach on a Sunday morning, a beautiful sun-splashed Sunday morning. Of course, they'll have to get past the team from Denmark. The Danes also having a terrific week, recording a comfortable win over the United States. And then they were six better than Chinese Taipei. Competing today for the Danes, Maya Yeager, Karina Christensen, and Anna Maria Larson. So this should be a good one, Hugh. It should be an absolutely fantastic match. The, the Mexicans have a really great experienced team, and Ada Roman is having, in my opinion, one of her best years ever. I think I've said that in a previous event as well. Her ranking score at this event was huge. I think it was a 1368. Uh, which is fantastic for the last FIDA 1440 score shot in world competition. So the ranking round has now changed forever. That's a, a great way to go out for sure. Uh, the Denmark team, the Danish team, they've got a really great, strong group of shooters as well. Uh, Karina was a little bit upset with her shooting, and she only shot a 1320. Only. Is, oh, yeah, it's still quite a good competitive score. So. <laughs> Uh, it's, this is going to be a great match between two quality teams. And, of course, they'll be shooting 70 meters today. It'll be Mexico on target number one and the Danes on target number two. A lot of the victories yesterday recorded on target number one. Starting off first, Denmark. Karina Christensen. And a point of clarification, you described the, the event very, very well. Uh, one thing, the, the teams get two minutes for their six arrows. But they will shoot them three arrows each, and then the next team will shoot three arrows and swap back and forth. There you see the winds. They're very light right now, about 1.5 meters. So they've started out with a good nine, which is an excellent way to start. Oh, they had a very good X. So what that's telling me, as somebody who's coming into this, uh, I didn't actually see any of the matches yesterday so it looks like the practice field is giving you very good information right now for what the tournament field is going to do which is a great situation to be in nice to be able to transition over and have that kind of information carry over with you now we go to mexico 
Good nine to start for sure from Ada. Oh, good team communication going on there. You can hear them talking about where she was aiming and, and where the arrow ended up going. And here is Mariana uh, Vichia, who competed in 2009 and 2011 at the World Championships, still looking for her first World Championship medal. And now Valencia. Here's a nice hit. Bullseye. So that's a one point lead for Mexico. This is a terrific start. I'm very pleased with this. I'm sure they are as well. Yes, I'm sure they are. I'm pleased because it looks like it's going to be an exciting match and I enjoy watching it. And that's what we're looking forward to. Good close matches. Did not have a shoot off yesterday. Really? Not a single one. There's a good score right there for Denmark. Yeah, she was solid nine on the left and a solid nine on the right. So it looks like her sight is well centered. Good execution will bring those into the 10 ring. Wow, her sight's all the way in. She must be shooting fairly light bow weight. <laughs> but and she's, she's shooting, shooting well. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't matter what bow weight you're shooting if you're putting in the middle. A slow yeah, 10 is still a 10. As long as it works. Bottom line business, isn't it? Exactly. Seven. Another seven. Uh, that's the second seven straight, same location. Hopefully she does a quick sight adjustment. So Denmark with 52 points here in this first end. A respectable opening, but I think the Mexicans will be solid. Ido Roman, who won the first ever Olympic medal in archery for Mexico at the Summer Games in London last year. Two nines for her to start off. Now Evitia, who was ninth this week in the individual competition here in Belek. Nice nine. There's an opportunity for the Mexicans to open up a really good lead. Lots of time on the clock. You can just take a nice, steady shot. And you can hear your teammate in the background saying, we be in, we be in. And she was right. Excellent shooting. 54 is a good start. That's sort of a... I would say that's a par score for a team round at this level. You want to be shooting, you, 54 averages nines over the six arrows. <coughs> That's sort of the baseline to work from. They've got the jitters out, they've got the first end, now they want to turn that score up, they want to bring it up to 55, 57 sort of zone. Ideally, of course, you're going for a 60. There's so many things you're thinking about and so many things to take into effect, uh, into account, that those are difficult to do when they come along, they're terrific. But a 55 to a 57 will keep you competitive pretty much all day long in the team round. You've shot for so long, Hugh, and you know this situation. I mean, what do you what do you come out of that first end having learned, usually? Uh, a lot of it is the first arrow. That's the big question you have when you come out to an event like this. It's the, the first arrow you shoot. Uh, hopefully you've got really great in a team situation if you've got great team communication and you know each other's equipment and, and how that sort of comes together uh, you can send out the first guy we kind of call it a windsock Benny uh, who just there's choices he sort of decides an option of where he's going to aim shoots an arrow and that's what you feed off that's what you, you use as your benchmark for the rest of it Sort of like the parakeet in the coal mine. Exactly. <laughs> I think they're usually canaries, aren't they? Coal canaries, mines? yes. But canaries yeah, so or parakeets. You absolutely need to know what this field is doing in comparison to the other field and how you go about doing that. You can come in with a guess for what you think it's going to do and send up your first guy, first archer, to, to test the waters. Or you can just send them up and have the aim spot on and see how it works. There's a couple of different options. Good start for the Danes who are down by a deuce to start this second end. Yeah, and I think that will change when uh, Miss Yager gets her sight in the middle. She's shot two sevens, which is a little bit unfortunate. They're still competitive, but if she brings that good group of sevens over into the gold, that she's gonna start, there we go, shooting. Uh, that's not Miss Yager, that's Larson who hasn't missed a 10 yet. Uh, so once Yager starts contributing some good gold here, we're going to have, that'll bring the, the comp competitive level of this matchup. There it is. Got it. 
Det passer med kan ud venstre. So that's a rising to the occasion right now. Yeah, 29 is a tough score. So now, right, the Danes are now averaging nines over all nine arrows. So they've pulled up their socks quite a bit. That puts a little bit of pressure back on the Mexicans. No. And the message was sent and received. Yep. The Mexicans are solid. It's a deeply experienced team. They've been around for quite some time. A lot of great arrows in pressure situations. They'll be able to handle this. Of course, Avitya won the bronze medal in London last summer at the Games. And she continues to shoot well herself. Avitya won the bronze? I believe so. I thought it was Ada. She won the silver, I believe. Oh, wow, all right. Aida won the uh, silver. That's right. That's they right. took silver and bronze. Yes. Yes. Oh, and there's a yes. So they, they're down to a, just a one point lead with a 28. That's good shooting. And the Danes caught up. That's fantastic shooting. So we've got a horse race. So far we do. This is exciting. Great concentration, great focus. That's a nine. Just inside the line. All right, just maintain. Here we go. The 22-year-old Karina Christensen, ranked 18th in the world. Oh, her first nine, and look at how close that is. Oh, my goodness. She's dialed in, isn't she? Oh, she's doing fantastic. And now Maya Yager, who's found the, the gold with her third arrow. She'll be shooting twice today, has a chance at two medals, and that one in the nine ring. Yep, there we go. So that's averaging nines still. Much better grouping. So they survived that first end. They're very much in this match. Roman, another nine. This is the type of shooting we like to see in the finals. All kinds of gold, really tight groups. Great, strong. I love the communication that's going on with the Mexicans here. It's uh, it's both encouragement and information about where to shoot. That was a big tough shot. Tough shot. Tranquilo, tranquilo. Uncharacteristic. Mantén la fuerza en el tiro, eh? And it changes the complexion of things uh, just a little bit. It does. There's still 12 arrows to be shot after this one, so 13 total. Another solid nine. That helps. Yep. Brings them back a little bit. So they'll be down by a couple, I would say. Uh, yeah, by two. So a score of 106 from Mexico at the midway point of this bronze medal match. To 108 for the Danish team. So a four-point swing essentially in that second end as the uh, Danes go from two down to go into two up. Yep. Oh, that's really good shooting. Right now, that's six by Evitia. She'll be able to shake that off. I have great confidence in that. That was just an oops. Hopefully, her team will be able to overcome that, Why, get and back into this. It's really important in the team round to recognize the fact that the team wouldn't be here if it weren't for all of their performance leading up to here. And they wouldn't be, you know, if, if only the other two were here, they would be far more points behind. Every point that you get as a team is you're, you're shooting your best, there is no sorry in team. Right? You know, that's six more points they would have got there than if she had shot for them. A little bit of a chill here in the air this morning as the sun just beginning to rise over the Mediterranean. There's Dr. Erdner, who was re-elected as the president of World Archery this past week. Our congratulations to him. Yeah, he'll do. He'll continue to do a fantastic job leading this organization. Uh, the Mexicans now lead off because they're behind. That's what's gone on just there for anybody who's wondering yes. what happened. Oh, yes. 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 That helps. Roman, right down the yes. middle. This experienced team can shake off at six like nobody's business. And again, they're shooting from 70 meters. I bet if I if I was a betting man, I'd say this one's right in there. Yeah, Close. How much were you betting? <laughs> I said if I was a betting man, I know better than to. Put your money down, Hugh McDonald. <laughs> Hugh McDonald, along with Carl Arkey, hope you're enjoying our live coverage. Here for the World Championships, Recurves Sunday. Nine. And another nine. nine. So nine. Mayhew yeah, coming yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. Solid 28. That picks up. Say. Yep, absolutely. I'm liking the, the averages, the arrow hole patterns on these targets. They're really well centered. 
the archers have a generally good sight mark, so they're just being able to put their dot or loop right on the center of the target and just execute straight oh. with the 10. It looks like the Danes are a little bit low. If I had to say anything. One of the things that's remarkably hard, I, I was reflecting on this uh, over the past couple of months, it's remarkably hard while you're on that stage to be able to acknowledge where your arrows are grouping and move your sight effectively. So it's, it's really a good thing. It's really important to get your sight on the middle right at the beginning. A little bit low. And so that's let the Mexicans, they've picked up at least one point. So now Maya. Now Maya back in the nine row. Tied back up. Look at that. Game on, Garth. Uh, neck and neck. Here we go. Firme segura. Ball is back in Mexico's court. Aido Roman. Not sure a Wayne's World reference will be caught by too many people in the audience. Ooh, there's a seven. But for those who do. <laughs> so now Ms. Avitia. Yes. Ooh, nice tag. Muy bien, Mariana. Muy bien. For the young lady who's ranked 17th in the world. Tienes tiempo. Le trabaja tu tiro. Bien plantada. Yeah, the, it was quite challenging to make it to these top matches, I still think very, very strong archers did make it through. But yeah. Valencia is a very strong archer. You, you saw what she did in Poland. She had to come through with the bronze medal there to get to the World Cup final, and she delivered. Very nice, yeah. Clutch, clutch athlete who will start her university studies in about a month or so. Now that the outdoor season's almost over. Nice of them to delay the start of the Season? <laughs> or, sorry, the education. The education, yes. Yeah, look at that group. Oh, it's a great group, just a little bit low. I don't know if uh, it feels like there's a little bit wind coming in from the tail, which might be coming down off this grandstand and pushing the arrows low. I'm not certain. This is Larson. And I'm yeah, here with Larson X. There, she's found the 10 ring again. That's good. She spent two arrows out of the 10 ring. I think she was tired of that. Limited experience over the past five years, but doing very, very well out here on the big stage. Eight seconds on the clock, and Jäger just a little bit high in that nine ring. I think that gives the Danes a one-point lead. 162 to 161, yes. So you've got a tight one here in the opener. Honoré Curve Sunday at the World Championships in Belic Antalya on the beach, Belic Beach. It's a tight score, and it's a, it's a good score. They're shooting very, very well at 70 meters at a 10 ring that's 12, 12 centimeters across. Well, it's nice to see that the conditions have improved to the point where it's about the archery and it's not about the conditions. This is a display of skill. These, these are very, very skilled archers. Unlike uh, what I was seeing in Colombia, I guess was the last time we were doing this, uh, where the gustiness of the, the grandstand and that sort of <laughs> idea really was making it a challenge, but it was making it a little bit more luck was, was involved with the wind. This is much, I'm much more pleased with this. This is an excellent display of really top end archery skill which is exactly what you want at the World Championships, for sure, well, and at any championship event, but... Well, and it really comes down to the skill and the ability to handle your nerves and the situation and the pressure of stepping up to that shooting line and trying to hit that center ring and trying to get it into the 10 ring, which is the goal each and every time. And here we go. A one-point lead for Denmark. So the Mexicans three will lead ends. out. I, you know, if you could strategize this, this is an excellent way. You get to lead out put some pressure on, shoot some tens, and make the, the Danes keep up. It's a great opportunity if you take advantage of it. And, and eight, eight doesn't help eight. for Aida Roman, who won the first ever Olympic medal in archery from Mexico. So it's, uh, her last couple of arrows have been a little sketchy, a little high left, uh, if I remember. But she's right back there coaching nine. Avitia, yep. talking her through the shot and helping her shoot a nine. With the 10, we're still Firme on course. Bien plantado. So right now, Aida Roman, as much a coach as anybody back there, behind Alejandra Valencia. Nine point. Nine nine point nine nine. Bien, bien, bien. A little bit high. Alejandra, fourth in Paris at the World Cup final two weeks ago. 
<laughs> didn't quite apply the pressure that they would have liked. Now they need some help. Yeah, this gives Denmark a little bit of room to breathe. We'll see what they do. Yeah. And they come through. Big, big shot. Anna Marie Larsen, 20 years old, on the bronze medal team in Wrocław, and she shoots a nine. Still a little bit low. They've got, it looks like, four arrows above the X. So Maya Jager, 22 years old. Nine. 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 That gives goes up to three. Yeah. It was a two-point lead just three arrows ago. Three points and three arrows is tough, not impossible. If the Mexicans throw down a strong end here, a 28 or, uh, sorry, a 29 or a 30. Yes, Morgan. Uh, well, there's the start. That's how you start. Right. That, that will get into the, the heads of the Danish team. So the Mexicans have to execute first. Avitia, oh, way there. outside with a six. That's that a five, might seal yeah. their fate. That's the game. Yeah, right there. You're right. It is a five. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> no one arrow is ultimate, but there's enough. The Danes now have enough of a cushion. To, oh, that's a great finish. Nice X. So I would be very, very surprised if yes. the Danish team doesn't just cruise to victory. At they this would point. have to falter at this point. Yes. Yeah, they need 22 points out of a possible, 23 points out of a possible 30, so two eights and a seven. All they need to do is keep it in the red, basically. Yeah. One down, two to go. They have lots of time, so they need another 14. Yep. Stoically going about their business. Oh, you don't celebrate till the, the arrows are in the target. Uh, you really don't celebrate till the medals are on your neck. <laughs> I think they can start the celebration. Yeah. Two of them can. They've got their job done. Ms. Yager here has to finish it up. Once she found the gold, she's been all over it. Let's finish up with a nice X. I'd, I'd love to see that. Going for two medals today, and she gets the first one right here. An eight, but that's good enough. Eight enough. And there's the group hug. Is that another intentional reference, or was yes. that just? Yes. <laughs> it is if you want it to be. All right. Oh, congratulations, Maya Yager, Karina Christensen, and Anna Maria Larson coming through after beating the United States in the uh, elimination rounds and then topping Chinese Taipei by six. They come out here, fall behind by two in the first end, but then that second end turned things around. They went up by two. It was a one-point match after three ends, and then they blew things open here in the fourth end to win comfortably going away by the final score of 216 to 212 over Mexico. And it all came down. The Most of the difference was two errant shots on the Mexicans team. They shot 1-6, one, 1-5. One, uh, this level, you just can't make that kind of a shot and hope to get away with it. And they almost did. You know, you could. they survived the six, right? Because the, the team picked them up, and that's the job. Right? And they were right there, only yeah. down by one. Yeah. So there's the victory sign from Denmark. As the Great Danes were indeed great on this Sunday morning. To them for sure. Yes. Terrific shooting by Maya Jager, Karina Christensen, Anna Maria Larsen. And the Danes come away with the victory. They won the bronze medal in Wrocław at stage four of the World Cup circuit. And they go even better here with a World Championship bronze medal. So it has been a good outdoor season for the Danes, without any question. And a terrific match. They score 54 points in that final end to 51 for Mexico. Mexico had outscored them in the third end, 55 to 54, to make a tight race of it. but. It came down to crunch time, clutch time. The Danes came up with the shots they needed, and they win by four, 216 to 212. So our congratulations to them as we reset now and get set for our next battle. This is the men's, or excuse me, the women's team gold medal match. 
And this features Korea versus Belarus. Again, the world record, 231 points by Korea in Beijing back in 2008. But this and is the last time I Belarus. believe. This is the last time that they'll use cumulative score for our team round in the recurve. So this is the last chance to set that world record. So Belarus beat Germany this week, beat Great Britain by eight, then defeated or uh, defeated uh, Denmark by four. And their lineup includes Anna Morusaba, Elena Tolkach, and Katarina Timofieva. Timofieva in the middle and Tolkach on the right. And Hanna Morusava, the archer you saw on the left. So an impressive performance this week to get to this point, beating Germany, Great Britain, and Denmark. And now they'll really have to be on their game as they face Korea, a team that defeated Poland by four, then knocked off China in a tiebreaker. And this is one tough lineup. Ki Bo Bei, Yuno Ki, and Shanghai Jin. You, 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 I mean, there's nothing else to say for it except that the Koreans, you would expect the Koreans to win this match. They are the strong favorites and the dominant team in this sport. You look at their track record, you look at their resume, their credentials. Korea has just been outstanding, always outstanding. And this is just another in a long line of great teams that they'll be putting out on the playing field here today. Kibo Bay. Olympic champion, Yuno Ki, dominated the World Cup circuit this summer, and Shanghai Jin has more than held her own as well. She has done very, very well. In fact, Shanghai Jin finished seventh this week in the individual competition here at the World Championships in Belek. Looks like the Koreans will be leading out, uh, and I, my guess is that Ki Bo Bei will be starting off. By the way, Denmark won on target number two. Ooh, that's good news. Yes. So you can win shooting on target number two. The Koreans, though, on target number one, leading off. Nine. Good nine. So Kibo Bay, who did not compete at the World Cup final in Paris, tells you how com competitive it is on the Korean team. Nine. When your Olympic gold medalist doesn't qualify for the World Cup final in Paris. There are... Uh, Limits to the number of yes, how many people from each country is are eligible to go? Only two per. And Yuno Ki with the third straight nine to start off for Korea. So nine nine nine. The right. Slight wind out to the right, according to the wind gauge on the on the screen there, and a little bit of a headwind. It looks like. Well, right until I say that, when, which point it turns around. <laughs> So Belarus with a nine to start things off. I believe that was Marusova. Yes. And this is Tolkach. 34 years old. Unranked. Oh dear. Six. And it's outside our view. Although Hugh McDonald was able to spot that with his eagle eyes. There we go as the camera widens out. There's the six at the top of the screen. And Timo Fieva trying to pick up her teammate and does with a nine. Yep, good nine. So they're down by three immediately. That's a dangerous place to put yourself. Bit of a hole that they're in right now. And Kibo Bay. Eight, still in the same spot. Her shot drifting off to the right just a little bit, makes a bit of an adjustment as she comes back. So we may be picking up a little bit of more wind going on. Here's Chang Hai Jin, 26 years old, ranked 19th in the world, and that's a nine for her. And Yuno Ki now. Hopefully she's moved her sight before this shot, based on the last five arrows worth of information. The Koreans are excellent with communication from the best of my knowledge. I don't Speak the language. Those are fantastic fingernails. Did Aren't they really? That? Did it say Hello Kitty? I believe it did. I believe it did, yeah. yes. <laughs> That's an awful lot of work, I think. Um, I'm just going to have to go by uh, somebody else's uh, experience well, I, on that. I, I'm sorry, I have not drawn Hello Kitty on my fingernails. But not, neither have I. My guess is that it's not as easy as it looks. Takes a little bit of time. 
So Marusava with her Push shot now Tolkach. There's a nice 10. Very good. That helps a bunch. Yeah. Yes. The Koreans actually open the door a little bit for the Belarusians to come back in with those two eights. It's a little bit surprising, a little bit unexpected. So we have to see whether or not the Belarusians can take full advantage of this. With one more 10, they'll be tied up. It's another eight, but only a two-point deficit. They're not out of this game. It could have been worse. It oh, could have been, been worse. worse. Timo Fieva with the eight after the bullseye by Tolkach. And so Belarus still in the match, only trailing by two, 52 to 50. As Korea breaks on top early on, but probably could have had a larger lead heading into the second end. Belarus again beating Germany, Great Britain, and Denmark to get to this gold medal match. And of course, this is old hat for the Koreans. They're used to being in these these matches. As used to as used to it as you might be, I don't think sort of the edge ever comes off. Though I still think the nerves are always still there, aren't they? Yep, it's still important. You still need to get out there and and do your job. And with the Korean team, there's always pressure on every arrow, every event, every match because there's always somebody waiting in the wings. If you falter a little bit, they'll step up, take and, your place. And I don't envy them the expectation on their shoulders. And all, I said it right off the back. You know, I expect the Koreans to win this match. Everybody probably See, in the stands. You. Oh, yes, it's all my fault. That's it's correct. all Hugh McDonald's fault. By the way, Hugh McDonald, along with Carl Arkey, here on Bellic Beach, taking in the team medal matches here on a Sunday morning, recurve Sunday. Yeah, to continue that thought, I don't think any Korean in any match internationally is ever an underdog. Hana Marusava. Yeah, the Belarusians will start this end uh, as a consequence of their small deficit. Another eight. A little bit high for the archer who shot in Sydney at the 2000 Summer Games, was in Athens at the 2004 Games, and placed fourth with her team in the 2009 World Championships in Korea. So that's good experience under her belt for sure. Another eight. Tolkach has only been competing for three years, has never medaled, has had several ninth place finishes. And Timo Fieva, also an Olympic veteran, 17th individually in London last summer. But she's high. Yeah, I don't know if that's nerves. Their group is just a little bit big. It, it looks like they're just trying a little bit too hard to me. I'm not certain. I don't see anything obvious that would cause that. Well, but the now Korean the goes and throws an eight up high too, so there might be something that I don't see. And that's a few eights for Kibo Bay. There's a good nine. Good height still out to the right for the Koreans. There was talk at one point. Yeah, that definitely is Hello Kitty. There was talk at one point, um, they've extended, compared to yesterday, this field is a little bit longer. And so now there's a little bit of an open space at the back end where the wind can take the arrows for the last 10, 15 meters. And there was a little bit of talk about whether or not that was going to factor in. Uh, the sensation of what the wind is doing will be quite slight on the archers. They're, they're really well protected. It's a, it's a really great venue, actually, for shooting from. <laughs> World Archery putting together a terrific venue here on Belek Beach, as they do everywhere we go. Juan Holgado, Juan Carlos Holgado and his crew. He's amazing at what oh, he does. The world's most interesting man. Oh, good night. There's an interesting shot by Tolkach. Now they're starting to get it dialed back in. Tough start in this end. Shooting eight, eight, and seven. But now picking it up with a couple of nines. And oh, there's a nice bullseye. X. There we go. All right, that's what they're looking for. Timo Fieva coming through with doesn't, the 10. Doesn't exactly put pressure on the Koreans, but it certainly say, it says, hello, we're back. Nine. Nine. So Kibo Bay picking things up a little bit personally. The Koreans don't have a 10 yet. There we are. <laughs> From your lips to their ears. 
And Shanghai Jin with the 10. And it's a good one. It's right in the X-ring. So Yuno Ki will try to emulate her teammate. Nine. And comes close. <laughs> so smiles on the faces of the <laughs> Korean archers. <laughs> Five point lead. That's pretty solid. But there's still 12 arrows left. And a lot can happen. 12 arrows in a team round. Especially here in Belek, Antalya, where there were more misses and more shots not taken during this past week. And I think, well, just in talking to a lot of the folks who are competing this week, it's the most they've ever seen. It was spectacular. It was interesting to... And these are the world's best, too. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, you know, from personal experience, there were a couple of shots where you let go, or I let go, and in the team round, and uh, then I was told it was an eight or better. <laughs> and I was absolutely shocked because the sight wasn't even close to the target button. And I, I, that's why we practice, right? You practice so much so that your body can correct it when things are just going crazy. It's still, I'm, I'm surprised. I've heard stories. I didn't see it personally, but I've heard stories of some of the Koreans shooting misses or twos. And these are just numbers that you don't expect from really top shooters. Well, there was a compound score in a semifinal match of 88 to 79, and that got I believe it was Orlic from Croatia into the gold medal match with 88 points and 88-79 victory. That tells you something right there. And so for, for those who don't know, that's out of 150. Yes. So that's about <laughs> half of what the normal score might be. So there were misses. Oh, absolutely. Well, the compounds, they had a bigger disadvantage because they only, their targets only go out to the five ring. Mm -hmm. Right? So we, as recurves, can shoot fours, threes, twos, and ones. A compound, if you're once you're outside the blue, it's a zero. You're in another universe. Yeah. That's a solid end. The Belarusians have really settled down into themselves. This is good. And there. that's another bullseye for Timo Fieva, who finished off the last end with a bullseye. A couple of nerves early on, but it looks like they're settling in. So now it's up to the Koreans <laughs> to do what they do best, which is just shoot tens. Starting to bring it home. At a five point lead midway through the match. Trying to build upon that if they can. <laughs> Raising the stakes. Shanghai Jin with another bullseye. And now Yuno Ki. First two arrows in this end, they've doubled their 10 count. More than doubled it. And there's an eight. For Yuno Ki. Doesn't matter, they still picked up a point. They've now got a six point lead. With an eight, they've extended their lead. So now it is back in the court of Belarus. All they can do is what they can do. They have to completely ignore what the Koreans are up to and just keep shooting good arrows. Nine, Nine for Hana, who's been competing for about 14 years now, veteran. Control what you can control and let everything else go. And here is Tolkach, who will get her first medal ever today. Was hoping for gold. In a tough spot right now with her teammates, though, after that eight. And Timo Fieva called upon once again to try to come up with a 10 to keep her team in contention. Oh, that's another eight. Yeah, at this point, it feels like it's just slipping away a little bit. The New York Yankees had Murderer's Row. The Koreans have three terrific archers in this lineup right here. Kibo Bay, an Olympic champion, leading off, followed by Chang Hai Jin, who's ranked 19th in the world. They have three of the top 20 Ooh. archers, but there is a surprising shot. A little bit of a slip, a little bit of a falter. We've got a six-point lead. You can afford a little bit of that, but a little I bit of a cushion. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it all that often. There's a little bit of a gust coming on that you can feel. And that one drifts to the left a little bit. So it's a six-point lead right now. 159, 153. That's a four-point lead. One. Oh, no, sorry, it's a six-point lead. I was going the other way for some reason. You had me worried. I was going to take off my shoes and do some counting. 
fingers and toes to try to keep score. 18 arrows have been shot. Belarus with a score of 153 out of a possible score of 180. And Korea in good shape right now. 159 posted on the scoreboard. And a couple of shots they'd like to have back. But again, as Hugh McDonald mentioned, when you have that kind of cushion, that kind of lead, you can afford to give a point or two back. Well, and they didn't, actually. They picked up a point, I yeah, think. Yeah, they the did Koreans. pick up a point. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I don't think there are really... The, the seven was a bit of an oops. The seven for the Koreans was a bit of an oops. But I'm not sure that anybody would really take too many shots back. They've been consistent shots. Some of them haven't been fantastic. There have been a lot of eights uh, on the part of the Take Belarusians, which isn't ideal. Uh, you know, I think that's tension, but I, I don't think that those are, I don't think that they would characterize them as mistakes. So there was one shot in the six ring as the first arrow, and that might have just been a, let's see what this field is up to. Might have been nerves, don't know. Can't say for certain. But by and large, I think the, the Belarusians are shooting consistently, just not as well as they would like or as well as the Koreans. Let me ask you this, Hugh. How much of an intimidation factor is there, or is there one at all when you're going up against the Koreans and a team this strong? Again, like the wind, it can be a little bit freeing because nobody expects you to win. So you just get to walk up and shoot arrows. And if you lose, well, you lost to the Koreans. If you win, that's a big deal. Now you've done something. So depending on how you, you handle it in your own psychology, there can be, I'm, personally, I'm not terribly intimidated by anybody. They're people. Everybody's people, the archers that I've met have by and large been gracious and fun and nice people. So they're not scary at all. They're absolutely, they're good shooters, but everybody down on that field is a good shooter. Everybody down on that field knows how to shoot lots of good tens and deserves respect, Ten. but not Ten. fear. No. Oh. Absolutely, that's right. Uh, you have to respect every opponent at this level. You have to be on your game. You have to be coming out to shoot those X's and execute your shot. Another X. Chiang oh. oh. Shan has been shooting a lot of 10s. Another one there, but you know, key. Yeah another two points so it's now an eight point lead with three arrows to go that's pretty tricky to come up of so methodically korea pulling away and belarus with just three more shots anna marusova with her final shot of this gold medal match at the world championships yeah this belarusian match it strikes me as a solid but tense match that uh, They've got a lot of eights that are a little ways out. Uh, and that just seems to be, I think that's an eight. Uh, for me, if they were a little bit more used to being on this stage with this attention, the announcing, all of the noise and, and everything that goes on. Yeah. Good finish. That's a great way to finish the World Championships. Timo Fieva is outstanding for Belarus in this competition. But Belarus having to go up against Kibo Bay. Another eight. eight. Chiang Hai Shin. Yunoki. And Chiang Hai Shin, who's been in that 10 ring a couple of times, oh, ends up in the eight ring. Final arrow for the championship of the world. So this is it. To wrap it up, four better gets it done. Yunoki draws it back. In, this, in these conditions, this is pretty much no-brainer. Done deal. Yunoki delivers with the winning shot. And Korea comes away with the gold medal in the women's team competition, defeating Belarus. So Belarus will settle for the silver medal. And the Koreans will go home with yet another gold medal. Kibo Bay, Yuno Ki, Chiang Hai Jin. Navigating their way through the field here, the World Championships in Belakan Talia, which has absolutely been just, aside from the win, is just a beautiful, beautiful location. Just wonderful to be here on the south coast of Turkey along the Mediterranean Sea and just a great resort community. I, I, rec I would recommend this area to anybody who's looking to get away. 
I think it's a it's a good time, especially if you are the type of person who likes to sit on a beach and just soak up the sun. Read a book. Absolutely. We um, play some golf, maybe a little tennis. We haven't done a lot of the research, so I don't know if there's a whole ton of stuff for people to get out and do. I don't know. There's historical sites in the area, obviously. I'm not sure. Uh, Ephesus. We, again, Ephesus. We need to take you to Ephesus. I've heard that several times. I yes. should go to Ephesus. Yes. Let me put some emphasis on that. Ephesus. The winning style, the winning form for the Koreans as they come up with a six point victory, 212 to 206. But Korea started off strong, jumped out to a two point lead after the first end, got that lead up to five midway through the match, bumped it up to six after three ends, and maintained the six point advantage to the final arrow and win it 212 to 206. So Korea comes away with the gold, silver to Belarus, and the bronze medal goes to Denmark. Denmark, in case you're just joining us, winning the opening match, the bronze medal match over Mexico, 216 to 212. So two good matches to start things off here on a Sunday morning or afternoon or evening, depending upon where you might happen to be in this wide, wide, wide world of ours. I'm Carl Arkey along with Hugh McDonald here on the beach in Bella Cantalia. Absolutely gorgeous view looking out across the Mediterranean and across this playing field that has been constructed by World Archery and we get set with some new target faces for the fellows to take their shot. And we'll get to the men's competition in just a moment, starting off with the men's team bronze medal match. And this will be an affair between France and once again, Korea. The Korean men now taking center stage here in Belek Antalya. On the beach, here we go. And France out first. Gail Prévost, Thomas Faucheron, and Jean-Charles Valadon. They defeated Spain, beat Italy by four, and then came up two points short against the United States. That tall young man on your left is Gail Prévost. And the other two teammates, of course, are Jean-Charles Valadon, who has the baseball cap on, and Thomas Faucheron in the middle. So there's your lineup for France. Faucheron, Gail Prévost, and Jean-Charles Valadon. Jean-Charles Valadon, an excellent field archer, and Prévost, I thought, may have given us one of the best matches in Paris two weeks ago at the World Cup Final, where he really pushed Ho Yek. Nice. Good to do on home turf. Yes, it was well done. And here is the team from Korea. So a semblance of a rematch, because Ho Jin Yek is, of course, on the, the Korean team there. There he is, Ho Jin Yek, with the sunglasses on the right. Lee Sung Yun in the middle, and on the left is Im Dong Yun. And all great archers in their own right. This week they defeated Great Britain by two, knocked off Japan by plenty, and then defeated the Netherlands. Or excuse me, were defeated by, I should say, the Netherlands. That was the shocking up to, uh, upset of the week, one of them. Uh, it was an upset. I'm not sure how shocking it was. I've mentioned a couple of times this Dutch team is solid. Uh, they're great shooters. Jeff, uh, who is here and on that team, I believe, will be competing in the yes. World Championships in, in a couple of weeks as well. Uh, he's a, a youngster, great attitude, really great guys to talk to. Looks like the Koreans will be leading out. Looks like it'll be Lee. Right there. Lee Sung Yun, 19 years old, fifth in the world. Three of the top five male archers are on this team for Korea. So again, you'd expect them to win. Ah, one would. And they start off with a bullseye by Lee Sung Yun, who won two gold medals in Poland at stage four and then was fourth in Paris. Here's Im Dong Yun. Unexpected eight to start with. Im Dong Yun, the gold medalist in Torino at the World Championships two years ago. And now here is Oh Jun Yuk, who's trying to win his first. After winning the Olympics. Yes. Oh, oh what a next. start, what a start. <laughs> He just shoots tens, doesn't he? He shoots a lot of them. Shoots a lot of them. Not always, but there's a lot of them that end up there. No, we had enough wind that uh, through the week he was a little bit outside occasionally. 
Prevo. Poised. Comes through with a nine. It's great to see there are two more members of Team France who could be here who aren't. And these these guys here are solid shooters. It's nice to see the depth of field. These three shooters are fantastic. They've had a great week. They've really performed. It's great to see a country with depth of field like Korea, that sort of idea. Because uh, you know that they're going to keep shooting and they're going to keep at a high level for a long time. And it's going to make for some great matches, great rivalries as we go ahead. We watched Valadon down at stage three in Medellin. And he performed very, very well down there in those windy conditions. And he's performed very, very well here as well. He was in the top eight, if I remember correctly, individually. Mr. Lee who started okay. things off well and <laughs> continues his solid shooting. Strikes gold again. Yes. So already the Koreans are up by two. Let's see if Im finds the middle on this one. Im done, yeah. Nine points. A little bit better. He's tracking it down. Another small adjustment. I like how these guys just get on their sights and adjust them. I'm a sight moving kind of person. There are two main philosophies. Some people will aim off. I really like moving sights. Personally, I find it far easier to just put the spot on the middle if you're going to have a consistent wind. Just out of the 10 range, nine points. points. Look what those arrows are for Korea. Yeah. All in the same neighborhood. Well, and that's a good 56 to start. You remember that 54 baseline that I was talking about earlier? The 56 is a great start. It means that if your opponents want to have a lead, they have to shoot at least three tens. And that's. That's a challenge to do. <laughs> Three tens would tie it. They need two more. After Prevost comes through with a bullseye. Bien préparé. Grand. Et actif jusqu'au bout. Pocheron. Et on reste dessus. And he's shooting wind, wind based stabilizers. They're called blades. Nice. They're uh, sort of shaped Allez. like an airplane's wing, Vincent. so that when there's wind blowing from the sides, you don't get blown around quite as much. Bien. Aerodynamic. Exactly. Jean Charles. 23rd in the world, was ranked as high as 15th back in 2011, just outside the 10 ring. I think that's a nine. Um, so interestingly, I, I think they're using a piece of technology called the Falcon Eye, if yes. I'm reading it correctly, uh, which is a laser based scoring system on the target face itself. It's well calibrated and that sort of idea. It'll help them score quicker, more easily, and uh, to get the, the scores quite accurate right off the bat. There are a couple of challenges if arrows line up too nicely. I don't think that was the case there. It has been confirmed as a nine. It's interesting to see what that will do. I think they introduced it in the World Cup Final in Paris a couple of weeks ago. Is that the first time that you were seen it before? It's a good piece of technology, I think. And I think it'll, at this level, I think we'll make the scoring faster and better. While we have a moment, let's recognize our sponsors who help bring the World Championships to you on archery.tv. Kia Motors, of course, a great sponsor along with Fila, Turkish Airlines, Sport Toto, and Longines. Now, a score 54 is more than respectable, but they're up against Korea. And Korea posts a 56. So we head to the second end. And France, trailing by two, starts off at just that close for Prévost. The 54 is treading water for the men. Uh, you won't lose too much to them, but you will get carried away by the current. You really want to be above 54 if you're going to be competing in the team round at this level in the recurve men. Oh, that's long under the clicker. Nine. Got away with it. I just see. Back to back nines. Need a breakthrough here from Valadon. Valadon. Uh, I would say they just need to keep doing what they're doing and relax a little bit. Those arrows will fall in the middle. Won a team silver two years ago in Torino at the World Championships. He comes through with the 10 that they needed. An important shot right now in this match as Korea. Takes its first crack at it here in the second end. Right. It's so important 
to not try too hard, but just to have confidence in your shot, execute it, and just wait for what you know is going to happen is going to happen. I think Lee Sung Yun really benefited from the experience in Paris two weeks ago. Yeah. He looks more calm and composed here at the World Championships. Of course, when you have Im Dong Yun and Oh Jun Hyuk shooting right behind you. <laughs> That's good to have confidence in your teammates for sure. The big O. With another go, big go, shot. Go, go. Oh, oh, oh. 10, 10, 10. Right there, and the lead grows to four midway through the second end. Yeah, there's very little you can do about that. What is the world record in this one? The world record in this event. In case you were wondering, and Hugh McDonald is, by the way, Hugh McDonald from Canada, along with Carl Arkey. And the world record is 233 points, established by Korea in London in October of 2011. So France answering. Prevo and Faucheron. With a pair of bullseyes, and that's three tens in a row. Can Veladon keep the streak going and Ooh, extend it to four? Yeah. Oh, it's close. What do you think? Yeah. They're calling it a ten. I'm not quite as confident. You're not as convinced, that. are you, Hugh? I am not. That <laughs> that's really, really close. Well, unofficially, we'll count it as a ten. We'll wait and see after the end is over and the officials. Oh, now there is an interesting shot. Lee Sung Young out into the eight ring. They haven't even got a star beside that. They're sure that's a 10. And I'm sure that's a 9. So oh Jun Hyuk. Maybe I was looking at a different arrow. Maybe I missed which one actually went in. The Dominator. I think he's got a custom paint job there. It's uh, it's a slightly off white. Wow. The Koreans just sort of eased up off the gas pedal there. Just a bit. So the French actually pick up two points. And they're tied. So Korea, which at one point, about midway through that second end, appeared to be poised to pull away and run away from the French team. And the world record is safe. Yes, I would think so at this point, but but is the, the they're both eight points down. The world record is only seven points down. So we are tied at 112. As That's Korea gives back two points, or maybe if you look at it the other way, the French pick up two points. Yeah, the French shot an exceptional at 58. That's a great end in a team round. That's a that's a decent end in any round, but a, a 58 in the team round is really very good work. And Korea wasn't bad with a 56, but they give back the two points, and, and so we're now tied at 112. Korea stays consistent at 56. Yep, so it's, that was confirmed as a 10. So in that end, France shot two nines to start off and then four straight bullseyes to get themselves in the match back into it. And after starting off with three straight tens, Korea had an eight and two nines. So we have ourselves a battle going on here in the men's bronze medal match of the World Championships of 2013 here on Bellic Beach on the south of, coast of Turkey. A little bit of back and forth the way we had with the women's bronze medal match. Hotly contested, good scoring, great shooting. Korea has already picked up a gold medal in the women's team competition. Now the men trying to pick up a bronze, but they got their work cut out for them. Right. And Lee Sung Young gets back into the groove. Yep, after his little bit of a hiccup, he's right back in there. Now Im Dong Yun, who says he relies on a sense of feel because he's got impaired vision, claims he can only see about 10% of what someone with perfect eyesight can see. But he was able to find the nine ring. He's been hanging out a little bit to the right, I think, for most of his shots. Uh, he made another sight adjustment there, I think. And now, Kukus. And Ojun Yuck. 
human after all. They're not invincible. This is interesting. There's a, it's a small crack that the door is open, but the French have shown in the last four arrows that they are more than capable of shooting tens. So if they just keep on with that, they will start building a lead against the Koreans. There's a 10. And Gail Prevost is not intimidated by anybody. As I said, he went head to head with Oh Jin Hyuk in Paris and took him to a shoot off and almost beat him. Really pushed him there in Paris before Oh Jin Hyuk went on to win the gold medal at the World Cup final. Another 10. Here we go, opportunity for a two point lead to France. You feel the momentum shifting just a little bit? I wouldn't say that yet. But they are, they've just got to stay in this groove, in this rhythm. And that's the reason. So they managed to. So much for the momentum there. They are holding their own. Still tied. They had a chance right there to break in front. Hey, so Yun, getting it done. He had five World Cup medals this summer. Picked up two in Poland. And I think he'll pick up another one uh, later today. The color has yet to be determined, silver or gold. He mm -hmm. and uh, Mr. O here will be going for gold individually. That'll be a great match coming up this afternoon here in Belek. Antalya, Turkey. So Mr. Lee and Mr. O are here trying to get a medal for their friend, Mr. Im, so that they can all go home with a medal. Oh, oh yeah. what a shot. Yeah. And the Koreans have found the medal again. So just like that, just a little bit of a, as you say, a hiccup. Yeah, France they, needs to answer with a solid set of arrows right here. The Koreans kicking it into high gear with three straight tens to finish off the third end. And there's a good ten. Prevo putting it right back on the line on the ten ring. He's been shooting very, very well. He's dropped only two points, and those both were nines. He's shot four tens and two nines so far in this match. Oh, oh shot on. under the clicker again. Got to get that through. Well, so Paul Choron, who is shooting for his first medal of the year, comes through with a big shot. Slow 10 is a 10. If you can execute it well, hold on to it all day long. There are no ugly 10s. Good execution. Good 10. Good answer. This is a fantastic bronze medal match. Here we go. Tied at 170. They've dropped 10 points each only. Dees, dees, dees. For the man from France, out of 18 arrows, they've only dropped 10 points apiece. Each team has two eights, six nines. And the crowd loving it here on the beach in Delhi. Hope you're enjoying it at home, wherever you happen to be. On a glorious Sunday morning in October, the final big outdoor event of 2013, the World Championships. We've saved the best for last, and this is one of the best matches we've seen all season long, going right down to the wire. We're tied at 170 all. And France with a chance to do what the Netherlands did, pull off the upset. Have another upset, for sure. This is interesting. This is, I can't guess what's going through any of these archers' minds. The Koreans come in expecting to be great. They know they're great. And they're just, the French just keep answering. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not the French manage, the French manage to get a little bit of a wedge in there and just cause just that fraction of doubt that will make all the difference in the Korean scoring here. I don't think so. But now the pressure has been dialed up just that much more. And Lee Sung Yun, I believe that Shoots was a 10. 10 yep. Yep. The 10 machine. Oh, he's been on all day. He's shot, uh, that's his sixth 10. <laughs> Another one. Yep. Im Dong Hyun. Uh, uh, that was the other option. The Koreans would say, oh, the French want to play in that gear? Well, we'll just shift up again. We got another gear or two to go. Interesting shot of Oh Jin Yuk.
Oh. Big screen and on your screen and on the radar screen with another 10. So three straight 10s. Talk about putting the pressure on. Yes, you're right going back to the end. Final three shots of that third end. Prevo must answer. Oh, darn. Another inch to the left. Yep, well, he's been really solid. He's been hanging out a little bit high in the 10 ring. But he's still shooting really great shoots, great shots. All the more imperative now for Choron to come through. Yeah. Oh, he does. Uh, you've got to take that pressure and put it away. The, the imperative is to sh just execute the shot properly. If you execute the shot properly, the air will be in the tent. That's the real challenge of these finals matches is to just let all the pressure wash off your back and just keep executing your regular shot. One point lead for the Koreans going into the final three arrows. Oh. 200 to 199. What a match we've got here. Doesn't get any better than this. Lee Sung Yun has not missed very much today, but he missed just a bit on that shot. Still, out of a possible 80 points, he just shot a 77. And all his arrows are in the bank. He can be proud of himself for a good day's work today. Does create the possibility, even if Im Dong Yun had shot a 10, I was going to say, and Oh Jun Yuk had shot a 10, France still had a chance. Now they really have an even better chance. Yep, that door's open, and Im. It's a little bit scary to say, but Im has had a, an off day today. He's shot two eights and three nines. He's down seven points. He's and the big O has not been infallible either. Oh, got that one, though. That one's on the line, so that's a 10. So, so, here's the situation. 28 points will tie it up. 29 will win it. Two tens and a nine. The French, Frenchmen go home with the medal. Three tens, oh. there's no doubt about it. It all begins with Gail Prevot and Prevot with a nine. Okay, that's fine. That's all right, that's a good start for France. And an anxious moment now for Korea as they can only stand and watch. Ocheron, who shot a bullseye on his last shot. This is fantastic. They have the opportunity to control their own destiny. In their hands, that's a solid X. Here it comes down to Thomas Rocheron. Big time oh, shot. Sorry, uh, John Jean-Charles Galadon. Big time shot by Fauchelot. And Jean-Charles has shot under pressure. He won the World Field Championships, I think, earlier this year, possibly the field event at the World Games. Ten will win it. It's over. He knew as soon as that arrow was My friends, that is what joy and happiness looks like right wow. there. Huge shots for France as they come through in the clutch and pull off the upset. That was good shooting by both teams. Got to hand that to the French. They shot excellent. Just really, really well done. They came through when it mattered the most. And France, which fell behind by two after the first end, came back to tie it up at 112 all after the second end. It remained tied at 170 after three ends. And it looked like it was going to be Korea's medal when they came out and came up with three straight bullseyes to start the fourth end. But here on the final three shots for both of these teams, that's where it really turned. And France came through with the shots they absolutely had to have after the Koreans had just faltered a little bit. Well, and you know what? I have to say that the the best feeling on the planet is what I think Jean Charles just had right there, because as soon as that arrow was out of his bow, he knew that was a good shot. He knew they had won the medal. He was the first person on the field to know they had won that medal. And it's it's got to be great to know that you've let go of that arrow, you've done your job properly, and you're you're in. It's, oh my goodness, that's such an exciting place to be. What a great effort all around Watch by this. Jean Charles Valadon. Yeah, you well can see the fist the arrow. pump. Well before the arrow's in the target, he knows that's there. Ocheron came through with his own big shot. What a shots. terrific match. Oh, my goodness. Close. <laughs> neck and neck the whole way. And in the end, France comes away with a big, big victory. And you can tell how much it means to this team. <laughs> They'll be celebrating tonight here in Belek, Antalya, Turkey. I'll tell you that much. And France is a big archery nation. I think 
these guys have just become slightly bigger heroes in their home country. I'm glad you said that, Hugh, because I can't say enough about how we were received in Paris at the World Cup final and what an outstanding job they did of supporting that event and coming out and uh, putting people in the stands and putting on a, just a tremendous event and, and an incredible setting. Oh, the background was okay, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Try beating La Tour Eiffel. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you what, it's going to be tough to top that match right there. But we'll see if the Americans and the Dutch can do it. It's time now for the men's team gold medal match here on Bellic Beach. And the Dutch out first. The Dutch had beaten the Koreans themselves earlier this week. Shocked them in the semifinals by two points. Before that, they handled the Malaysia and they canned the Canadians by three. Yep, and that was a, it was a close match. Uh, we just uh, we got beat up a little bit by the wind in the last end and they shot a really really solid last end. these guys in my experience are known for shooting a very very solid final end if they're anywhere close they can bring match, it home they will bring it home solidly they're a great team they're a young team they had the advantage of just that courage to go for it. Uh, I, I'm excited to see this match because the, the American team is a solid experienced team as well. Lots of experience there, lots of confidence in themselves. This should be, it should be a really tight, really good match with a, an exciting finish. That's Here's the lineup for the United States. On the left is Brady Ellison, in the middle is Joe Fanchin, and on the right is Jake Kaminsky. They'll be on target number two. The USA, nine better than the Aussies this week, seven up on the Ukraine, and two points better over France in the semifinals. The lineup, by the way, for the Netherlands, Chef Vandenberg, Rick van der Ven, or excuse me, van den Over, and Rick van der Ven. I'll try to keep all that straight as we go through this match, but it should be a great one between these two teams, these two two countries that have met four times in the past two years, and they have split those four meetings. Oh, there we go. It should be an, just an absolutely fantastic match. Shows you how evenly matched up they are. The United States against the, the Netherlands. The, the Dutch to start out. Looks like Van der Ven is going to lead off. Their top archer. Ranked eighth in the world, considered one of Europe's leading recurve archers. So this is Van der Ven, who did produce a major upset, taking out Im Dong Yun of Korea at the Olympics, and then was just edged off the Olympic podium by Dai Zhao Zhang and had to settle for fourth place in London. Oh, he settles for an eight right that's here to start the match. I think that's a nine. Is it on the line? Uh, well, they they've got start. it as an eight star. It's hard, a little, little bit hard to tell from the angle of the, the, line, so the screen, no but it, it looked uh, looked like a nine to me. I'll go with your call. Uh, so Save on five. Now here's Chef. Here's where we need the communication. Chef Vandenberg, 18 years old. And that's an eight. 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 So there is an asterisk by that first eight. We'll have to wait and see what the officials I don't think there's decide. enough wind. I'm not sure what happened on those three, zero, three arrows. The Shaky start, to say the least. Yeah, a little bit weak, but there's an eight for Jake Kaminsky. So Jake Kaminsky, 46th in the world from Buffalo, New York. Here's Brady Ellison out of Arizona. Now lives at the Olympic Training Center in Chula Vista, California, with a nine almost into the ten ring. That's interesting. It, uh, Joe Fanchin as the anchor man. That's, I believe, unusual. I think Brady normally would anchor the team round. So this is a bit of a switch up of order. Joe, who's 26 years old, with a lot of experience internationally, he shoots an eight. So right now, the USA with a two-point lead, 25-23 after the first three arrows. A long way to go, though. Uh, I think it's a little close. I still, I'm going to hold by my call of that first arrow being a nine. Do you care to wager on that? <laughs> nine. There's a solid nine. No argument about that one. Von der Ven with a nine there. Very, very slight wind going on. Vandenover, who's 21 years old. Ten, 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 there we are, in the middle. First bullseye of the match. That's got him fired up. 
and Chef Vandenberg, who was on the men's team for the Netherlands that finished ninth in London last summer at the Olympic Games. So a little bit of a rough start, and the wind conditions are absolutely perfect right now. This is a bit of a tough match for me to watch because I, I would consider myself friends with all six of those guys down there. So I'm not really sure who to root for. Root for a good match. Oh, always for that. Always for a good match. Just a good close horse race. Yeah, it looks like the Americans are going to probably take a lead into the... There we go. Oh, there's a nice tent. Brady with a bullseye. Have you heard that before? Uh, once or twice. Once or twice, yes. yes. He won the Longines Prize for Accuracy mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, didn't he? Maybe not, last year? Not his first time at the rodeo. Rodeo being an apt description, uh, that wave that he does in the introduction <laughs> is, is a salute to one of his heroes, uh, a great rodeo star. And a seven. So I think we're tied. Okay. Unofficially right now, it's 51-50 for the United States, but if Hugh McDonald is right, by the way, Hugh McDonald, Carl Arkey, glad you're with us here on Archery.tv for Recurve Sunday, final match of the morning, team medal matches. We've seen some outstanding matches thus far, but we'll wait and see. The officials are down there taking a look at the targets, and is it a nine? It is a nine. It is a nine, so we're tied at 51 all. Yeah, sometimes it's just a matter of how you see the arrow land, one person versus another. You just see something. You know, I'm not saying that I'm infallible about the arrow from call. Teams, I, just, I was pretty sure I saw that land, and I was pretty sure it caught the line. Well, I did hear you have 2020 vision, so I'm going to go with you, McDonald, on that. 2020 vision after major amounts of correction. <laughs> 51 all. Here we after go. After the first end. And the Dutch will lead off again as we are still tied. It's the original shooting order. Jake Kaminsky. And there's Brady Ellison, who was a rock star in Paris. I'll tell you what, the fans absolutely loved Brady Ellison, and he loved the fans. Had great interaction with them over there, but the, the fans were really great. Looking for autographs. Brady's generally pretty good, too. He's yeah. very, very personable, really down to earth. And really enjoyed the moment out on that big stage at the Trocadero Gardens. There's a good, nine. Nine. Good, nine. good start for the Dutch. Yeah, so Rick van der Ven has been in the gold all the time. He's in a great position to just relax, execute, get more tens. Uh, van den Over, hopefully he's made a good correction. Yeah, the first arrow. Yep, that's I'd say second so. Ten in a row, and that's a good solid X. And here we go with Chef. Chef is, uh, sorry, Mr. Vandenberg, he's, uh, he's a good shooter. He's going to probably be at Youth Worlds. Coming up, and he'll find the middle when he does. That's a good nine, I think. Can you imagine uh, the other archers of the youth championships looking at him and saying, I've got to compete against this guy? He was just at the world championships. Well, there's a few archers here. Yeah, that's true. Are, uh, I believe uh, probably Lee from the Korean team. He's only 19. He's eligible for the youth worlds. Ooh, there's an eight. A little high and outside for Jake Kaminsky. So Brady Ellison will try to pick him up. Brady Ellison on that team that upset the Koreans in the semifinals in London last fall. The first Olympic medal for the U.S. men's team since 2000 as they picked up the silver medal at the Summer Games last year. And here's Joe Fanchon, a USC Trojan, attended USC. Another eight. Another eight. So the Dutch have got a good solid lead at this point. By good solid lead, I mean three points. 79, 76. However, we would caution those watching at home, if you're just joining us, France fell behind by two points in the first end of their match, the bronze medal match, and came back to defeat Korea. So it ain't over till it's over. Although the Netherlands is starting to really apply some pressure here in the second end. Van der Ven with a good shot. And here is Van den Over. Eight. Eight. Van den Over eight. with an eight. Van den Over on the Dutch team that finished 17th at the World Championships in Torino two years ago. 
And here's the 18-year-old Chef Vandenberg. It's very, very bright on on that field. I think if you can shoot, right. wow. if you Sass. can shoot, uh, I was talking with him earlier. He makes those shots fairly regularly. He makes them good. Uh, he was joking that that's why they have him on the team because he can do that. Uh, as I was saying, it's very, very bright on that field. I think it's a pretty big advantage if you can. Uh, if you can have some sunglasses on to take some of the glare off. The targets, fortunately, aren't in direct sunlight, so there's not a huge amount of glare coming off them. Kaminsky getting closer to that 10 ring. And there's Brady back in there. Direct hit. All right, and with a 10, we're looking at a tie. Good communication again among the team members. But the United States on those last three arrows picking up a couple of points to get back within one. Yep, absolutely, and that's that's why you keep shooting the arrows. You don't say, oh, the Dutch have a three-point lead. We might as well go. Not when you come this far. The so Joe Fanchin, Jake Kaminsky, Brady Ellison hanging in there right now. A score of 104 after the first 12 arrows. And the Netherlands with a score of 105. So the United States trying to pick up the gold medal here. The Netherlands trying to continue a great run. Again, the Netherlands beating Malaysia, the Canadians, and then the Koreans. The Koreans falling twice, the men's team that is. But we will see the Koreans again later this afternoon in the middle matches, and we hope that you're with us for that. Whatever time it happens to be in your part of the world, we have some excellent individual matches coming up this afternoon. Mixed teams, we'll have Mexico against Chinese Taipei, and then Korea against the United States. So we'll see Brady Ellison again in the mixed team competition where he'll be teamed up with Katuna Lori. And Katuna has been having a very, very solid year this year. Good to see her got a medal chance at the uh, at the World Championships. Ooh, there's a good 10. Big, big, big shot. Big time shot by Jake Kaminsky out of Buffalo, New York. Now here's Brady, who won a bronze medal at the World Cup final in Paris two weeks ago. Uh, looks like they've settled in. They found the middle. And they're going to start applying some pressure to the Dutch team. Let's see what Joe manages right here. Joe Fanchin, ranked 28th in the world. A year ago, won a gold medal at stage one in Shanghai. Eight. Didn't quite manage to apply as much as he would like. He, it looked like he settled into a shot a little bit slowly. Joe's a very methodical shooter. Very, very good, just the same. Van der Ven, the current European team and individual champion. Nine. Almost outside that nine ring, but kept it in. Oh, not as close as his first arrow. <laughs> He's shot nothing but nine so far, which is decent execution. Van den Over on the line, right beside it. I'll count as a nine. All the two links. Come on, Chef. All right, let's see what Mr. Vandenberg can pull off here. Nice steady motion down the clicker. Throws it in. Mm, yeah, you can see. He kind of pulled it over there just as he released it. Couldn't save it. Nope. So we're now tied. With nine arrows to go. And Jake Kaminsky, who was on that very same team with Brady Ellison in London last summer, winning the silver medal and upsetting the Koreans. He's been in pressure pack situations before, and he comes through. That was a great X. That was really, really solid, yeah. Brady, an eight. Okay, Joe, same thing. Good eye focus, strong eye focus. Lots of time on the clock, 30 seconds for him. They may have put Joe in the third place because he's is nice and methodical about his setup and so him being able to see how much time he's got left seeing that he's got 30 seconds to shoot that's just reassurance there's a nine yep, so another so they shot a 54 on that end 
which is absolutely decent scoring. All right, that's that 54 I keep talking about. That's treading water usually in a men's match. What will the Netherlands do? Nine for Van der Ven. If I had to predict, he'll shoot two more nines. I'm hoping he'll shoot tens. Come on, oh. Vandenover on the team that finished fourth at stage one oh, to start dear. off the World Excellent. Cup campaign. And Eight points. That turn off your flash. Was a yeah, shot that, that leaves Chef right with Being a chance to tie it up. Chef Vandenberg, and oh, he's not close. No, Chef hasn't, uh, hasn't had a great day here. The Dutch actually, so Vanderven has been rock solid as their leadoff man, which is exactly what you like. Uh, he hasn't been spectacular. He's shooting comfortable nines all the way across. Looks like Chef and Vandenover just need a little bit of settling in. They're just a tiny little bit erratic. Uh, kind of like the, the Belarusian match, I would say. It's not poorly executed, but it's just not comfortable. Just a little bit of rela relaxation, a little bit of just confidence in your shot, knowing that that's good enough. That tiny little edge would be the difference between some of these eights and having them be nines or tens. And there are days, Hugh, and I know you being a competitor, you understand this. You've seen it in yourself. You've seen it in other people. There's days where you just feel better. It's natural. It happens. The magic's there. Some days it's not. We were watching Pierre Julien Deloche yesterday in the gold medal match, and that was not vintage Pierre Julien Deloche. He can shoot much better, and I think he would admit that himself. It just wasn't his day. Absolutely. There, there are certainly on days and off days. Uh, By the way, Mike Schlosser was having an on day, and <laughs> congratulations to him because he did do an outstanding job to win that gold medal in the men's compound. Yeah. And then, yeah, so you never want to take away no, from, from no, the victor. They no. always, they have risen to the occasion and managed to pull it out. But now uh, we'll see if the Dutch can pull it out. That's that's why we practice. Well, here's that last end. They're notorious for shooting just a fantastic last end. They'll have to do it again today to come from behind and they'll start off with a nine from Van Den Ven, Van Der Ven. Again, these two teams have split the last four matches over the last two years. So this is the culmination of a best of five. Yes. Right on the line. They're calling it a nine star, I'm calling it a 10. I'm going with you, Hugh. Van Der Ven, Van Den Over, I should say, with the 10. At least we believe it is. And now here's Vandenberg. Ooh. And Chef, Got you can see it. As he released it, yeah, you thought it was going to end up in the eight of the seven ring, didn't you? Oh, I, I've seen him shoot so many arrows like that and get them in. I'm not terribly worried about him. When he released it, he wasn't sure, but it turned out fine. So at least three nines and possibly better. But there you go. I'll see you and I'll raise you. Jake has found the middle. That's for sure. Kaminsky coming through. His last three arrows have been 10xx. He's absolutely pinwheeled that middle. He's got a, he's got it dialed in. Hey, Brady, big big bad shot. Brady Ellison. Fist bump. They're fired up now. A strong finish. Wow, you shoot a 28 and you're risking losing points. That's not what you expect. Listen to the encouragement from the Americans. Joe Fanchin out in the eight ring. So that should be tied for that set. So it should be a two-point lead for the Americans, I think, going into the last three arrows. What we really, what? The at Dutch the very were, worst, yeah. Uh, well, at the very worst, it'll be a three-point lead, as the, the scoreboards are currently saying. Uh, the Dutch really want to be able to throw a little bit of pressure onto the Americans. Nine. Not as much pressure as they had hoped for. Wow, but he's been consistent. You can't complain with shooting nines all the way through in a team round. Uh, he's been a little bit high. He's, he's gone all the way from the right to the left. That was a nice quick shot. A little bit high at nine. This pressure might be enough. Uh, if Chef can put in a good, I, I would love to see him shoot an X. And I think if we finish off with a solid 10 from the Dutch here, I think that 
the Americans will be under a lot of pressure. And is nine. Nine. Chef cooks up a nine right Not there. Quite as much pressure as I would like. I think that's going to be a 55 for the Dutch, which is a good finish. Good final end. It's not the trademark that I'm used to seeing from them. Uh, 57, 58, 59, somewhere in there. So basically, the USA needs about 25 points to win this gold medal. They start off with a strong shot by Jake Kaminsky with a nine. 15 more points to tie, 16 points to win, two eights. I think probably the Americans have this button down. Yeah. Yeah. Bullseye, Brady Ellison. So Joe only needs. A six, a seven, a seven to win. So if he keeps it inside the red, the Americans win. A seven to be sure. Yes. He's been a little bit iffy. He's shot eights and sevens. Yeah. There That's it is. a nine. That's good enough. Yep. It's all over. Put good it in the books. For Joe. Mission accomplished for Joe yeah. Fanchin, Jake Kaminsky, and Brady Ellison of the United States celebrating on the beach here in Bellic Antalya as they are solid gold. Yep, the Dutch brought what I believe is a 55. The Americans answered with a 56 on that last end. So unofficially, the final score will be 214 to 211. Actually, actually, I think they just made it official. Yep. They did give him that extra point, so it's a three-point win for the USA. 214 to 211. Really great. The United match. States, yeah, terrific USA matches. And there is the victory salute as they capture these golden moments here on the beach on a golden Sunday morning. The United States coming through and the USA capping off a good week. Again, they had to beat Australia, did that by nine points, had to beat Ukraine, did that by seven. And then they got the two point win over France. We saw moments ago just how talented that French team is so that makes that win look even better in the semifinals and then they come in here against the Netherlands a team that knocked off the Koreans in the semifinals and they win by three points the Americans do 214 to 211 Jake Kaminsky leading off Jake Kaminsky shot really really solid uh, yeah the the both the leadoff shooters were very very solid in that match and it was good shooting it was a good match. It was a great team effort and a great team effort by both teams. Really solid, really close all the way. It was tied at 51 after the first end. The United States fell behind by one after the second end, 105 to 104. But then there was a critical swing of three points in that third end as the U.S. went from one down to two up at 158 to 156. The 2017 Hyundai Archery World Cup began in familiar surroundings in Shanghai, China in May. This imposing waterfront setting saw the top two women in the world go head to head for gold with Sara Lopez of Colombia emerging on top. Denmark's world number one, Stefan Hansen won the men's competition. To Europe and another regular location on tour, the Turkish resort of Antalya in June. Hundreds of archers began the week, but in the women's event, the beachfront shootout went the way of Denmark's Sara Sonicsson. Despite his win, Cheng Shangshuan didn't claim enough points to make it to Rome. Next, Salt Lake City. In the shadow of the Eastern Archery Center, there was glory for Andrea Marcos of Spain and defending World Cup champion Mike Schlosser who took the gold in a dramatic one-arrow shoot-off against Hansen. Our final stage was Berlin, another debut host city and another victory for Sonicsson, newly installed as the world number one. 
the men's event provided an upset. Sheer determination and stylish shooting from Turkey's Demir Elmagaklu gave him the gold medal. And so to Rome, Italy's capital city, the center of an ancient empire, the venue for the 2017 Hyundai Archery World Cup final. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Estadio del Marmi in Rome. It's Saturday, the 2nd of September, and this is compound finals day of the 2017 Hyundai Archery World Cup. My name's Stephen George, your commentator for live and uninterrupted coverage of all the matches this afternoon. It's a lovely 25 degrees here. The sun is out, the wind is low, and set fair for some great archery this afternoon. This morning we saw Lopez take the women's individual title and Denmark win the mixed team event. Now we have the quarterfinals of the men's competition coming up at three o'clock, followed directly by the semi-finals and finals and about to enter the field of play. The top seven archers in the world right now, plus an Italian archer here to represent the host nation. So we'll look at the world rankings and Stepan Hansen, the world champion on top in position number one closely followed by Steve Anderson, making his first World Cup final appearance. Braden Gellington of the USA, the 2012 World Cup champion. Mike Schlosser, the defending champion. Demir El of the 2015 World Cup champion. Rio Wild not here because the USA already have their two spots. Pierre-Julien Deloche, the 2014 runner-up. Andreas Darum the, in his first World Cup final appearance. And Federico Pagnoni here as the host nation's representative. Also alongside me in the commentary box is Rod Menzer, the 2008 World Field Champion for the USA and acting CEO of USA Archery. Rod, looking at the draw and uh, the first match, Darren versus Anderson, who do you pick? Well, I, I got to pick Steve, but again, in this final, everybody's earned the right to be here. Anybody can win this, but I got, you know, I got a root for Steve on this one. Of course you do, but as you say, I mean, four <laughs> of these men have been number There's one in the world at various times, including Hansen, who's, who's number one right now. Anderson, three in the world is his top ranking. Mm -hmm. But uh, here's Andreas Darum, ranked 25 in the world, Denmark's second male archer in this top eight, coached by the very experienced Martin Damsbo there, giving him a round of applause. Yeah, you couldn't have a better coach than, uh, than what he has right there. I wonder if the archers are enjoying this uh, escort they're getting to the field of play. From the, uh, <laughs> we had gladiators this morning and Roman centurions, but uh, Steve Anson looking like he's taking it all in his massive stride as usual. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you know, but uh, Steve was a, uh, a very accomplished 400 meter runner um, in his uh, college days, um, in high school days. 400 meters. 400 meters. <laughs> it's big for that kind of event. If you'd said shot put or something, I might have, no. uh, might have agreed with you. But ranked four in the world right now and uh, looking to go deep in this tournament in his debut appearance, our line judge Andres Herigus, who will take charge of all the matches this afternoon. And it will be Darren, the lower ranked of the two archers, who will shoot first on target number one. Should be a good match. You know, the very first one of the afternoon, and there's going to be a little extra nerves just for that alone. Yeah, absolutely. We were talking before about the opportunities to practice and, and find your range on the shooting mm -hmm. line here, and there haven't been too many, so this will be a real test these first few arrows, won't it? It will. You really want that 10 on that first arrow. Back score. Yep. Oh, and there it is. And there it is. <laughs> Excellent shot. Anderson in the goal with his first arrow. Not bad, but he'll hope for better with the next. Ooh, and that's a loose up one yeah. from you know. Darren. You know, the wind has been kind of swirling down here, and it's been making it a little challenging for some of the archers. The shooting line's quite shielded, isn't it? Exactly. Uh, whereas you can see the flags on top of the 
targets are mm -hmm. being tugged by the wind, so it's more windy at the target end, isn't it? Exactly. You, you, the wind flag is over on the right, and there are times when it's blowing straight away, and other, like right now, it's actually coming towards the archers. So it is swirling a little bit, and um, you know, it causes a little issue. Steve needs to make a little side adjustment probably there. So Darren opens up with 26, although as you'll see on the scoreboard, his second arrow there, registering as a seven, but maybe upgraded to an eight. And Anderson of the USA, strong start, 28 points for him. So potentially a two point lead could be cut to a single point, but uh, he'll be glad with those opening three arrows, won't he? Yeah, you, you just want to get those through and, and get a little bit of the nerves out of you so uh, your forearm can calm down a little bit um, you know, and you can start shooting a little better. So indoors, Anderson's had a successful season, hasn't he? He was the silver medalist in the Indoor World Cup in, in Vegas in February. So you know, for him to find himself on the World Cup stage for the first time outdoors, that's a big achievement. It really is. He's been shooting so good all year. Um, I mean, he did that at the World Cup indoor, you actually using Mikey Schlosser's arrows. So he just borrowed some arrows because he forgot his at home, and, and then he took second. It's amazing. It's one of the first things you pack, isn't it? <laughs> Sometimes you think so. <laughs> It's not uncommon, though, for archers to share equipment yeah, and get themselves out of a hole. I mean, the, uh, I've seen archers shoot with other uh, with co opponent bows before now <laughs> when, when you've had equipment failures in finals. It's an amazing thing when you, in the archery community, I mean, it doesn't matter what country you're in, if somebody has a problem, uh, if you've got something that somebody else needs, you just hand it over and they just go ahead and shoot with your stuff. So it, it's pretty awesome. Those are some nice shots right there. Yeah, absolutely. Two tens for Darren, recovering a little bit, finding his rhythm. 47 mm -hmm. for him so far. Mm -hmm. So now we're down to the same score for each archer. Mm -hmm. and I know the guys, uh, in talking with uh, Mel Nichols just before the start, and they were, he was telling me that they were shooting a little bit on the left side of the 10 over on the practice range. And you can see that's where Steve's hitting right now. So that's what he was kind of... Uh, Set it in for those really shot the finish. Yeah, he's happy, so they've maintained that one point advantage. Yeah, those are some solid 29, so they're, they're definitely getting into the role of this, and this is going to be a good one. Am I looking at a little Mr. and Mrs. combination there as well? <laughs> yeah, and she's, uh, Linda has done fantastic you know, this year too, so they've had a good influence on each other, shall we say. Um, but it, it's nice when you have somebody in your box. Um, you know, shooting, um, you know, as the coach that just keeps you calm. Someone that's familiar to you and, and uh, you know, it's just kind of walking back there and helps calm you down. Both of these archers have got great coaches behind them uh, mm -hmm. this afternoon. Just to tell you about the rules very quickly, in the individual events, a match is played over five ends. Each arrow has three, um, there's three arrows in each end. The maximum you can score with an arrow is a 10, as you've seen. So there's a maximum of 150 points available. After each end, the scores are totaled up, and the archer with the lowest score shoots first. In the next end, at the end of five ends, the archer with the highest total score wins. Simple. So Darren behind by one after the first six arrows, looking to build here against Anderson of the USA. Yep. Nice. A nine for Anderson. Yeah. Shakes his head a little. We can feel the gust of wind coming in through the commentary position there, actually. Um, yeah, you can see that flag's uh, picked up just a little bit there for the archers. So it's square now at 75. Yeah. So an opportunity for Darren, but he can't take yeah. it. And actually, he might have opened the door a little bit for Anderson. Yeah. He's pretty surprised about it when he's seen him turn around and kind of give the wool. I have no idea why that is there. Uh, look to his coach. 
Finishing up with a 10, Steve Anderson, so he extends his lead by a point. You can see the perspiration just rolling down the side of his face there as, <laughs> as he was holding that shot. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's 25, the thermometer says, but um, <laughs> it feels I hotter. I guarantee you it's almost boiling point for those guys down there. Um, you know, it, it's so funny because sometimes you, you get in these high, these high pressure situations and your body's feeling it, your mind's feeling it, your heart rate's racing, but then when you draw back, your bore is steady as can be. And then other times, it goes all the way through your bore and you're shaking and, and it's hard to even execute a shot. So, you know, it really depends on, on how it affects you today. Um, So Darren ranked only 25 in the world, and uh, he hasn't had a, a podium um, this this year. Um, and he just pipped uh, Chen Xiang Xuan to qualification, so mm -hmm. he's he squeaked in. So maybe he's got he's got a free pass, really, hasn't he? He's not perhaps under so much pressure as Anderson. Well, I, I don't think anybody, you know, has the same expectations from folks. But again you made it in here you're good you're very good just a little low for steve there is there a temptation even with your feet shooting well to fiddle mm -hmm. you, you'll see just leave it where it is <laughs> yeah you'll you'll see some archers um that are always clicking their sight you know it might just be one little click and it doesn't really move it all that much on the target but they will always be one way or the other after yeah. every arrow. Lopez is a demon. <laughs> yeah, she is. She's she's <laughs> she definitely does that almost every arrow. Still, it works out fine for her in the end. So yeah. Uh, there you go. So that only looked a like a ten there. Yeah, mm -hmm. only a point dropped with those three arrows for Darren. 112 solid, but Anderson now looking to build a lead. Oh, that's a good shot. Another ten for yeah. him. 114 points. So two points the advantage I can't really see from our um, vantage point whether that first arrow is going to get upgraded from a 9 to a 10 for those of you who don't watch archery all that often if the arrow is on the line it's the higher value uh, that is is scored we'll wait to see whether that converts into a 10 and a three-point lead for for Anderson what we've seen in the women's matches it you know, Three-point lead sometimes seems like it's a lot, but in this uh, format, this uh, venue, no. <laughs> I think the only lead that you'd be comfortable with is if you had 11 points going with one arrow left, <laughs> and that's it. Otherwise, you know, we, we saw where, you know, a two- or three-point lead in the last end can evaporate like that. Yeah, absolutely. One little gust of wind, and changes everything so both archers looking to try and cheat themselves into mm -hmm. thinking they're just shooting in the backyard right now he's looking good and confident yeah away it goes That's good shot yeah. good shot down to the final three arrows mm -hmm. for each archer yeah. in, in this match steve needs to try and keep pace he does yeah leads down to one though mm -hmm. nothing to panic about yet but no nope. proof that it's going to be close. And that's wild. Yeah, he's pretty from disappointed there. Yeah. The nine from Anderson gave him a bit of hope, but uh, mm -hmm. he couldn't convert that arrow. And there's a ten yeah. for Steve Anderson. Leads back to three. He did what a veteran does: is you get an opening, you try and take advantage. So a seven to win for the big cat. Down it goes, there it's a go. nine. And Anderson takes the match. His best individual finish on the World Cup circuit this year was silver in Antalya, but this will edge him closer to World Cup glory here in Rome. It's a debut win for Steve Anderson. He's through to the semi-finals, where his opponent will be either Pierre-Julien Deloche of France or his countryman, Braden Galantin. Yeah, Steve will not be happy with uh, with exactly how he, he shot that time, but he's going to, um, he learned from it, I guarantee you, he'll be ready in the next one. So it's good to get this one under his belt and and uh, he'll go over to practice range and, and get himself squared away. So straight back on the range oh. to practice for <laughs> uh, 
for him then? Is, yeah. that, that, is that common? They won't um, let any time pass without shooting a few more arrows. Yeah, they're just going to keep going and, and try and work out the little bugs and the nerves that they had and, and try and get a good feel for a really solid shot. And, and so that way you can kind of get things grooved before he comes back in here again. Sometimes you get up there in the nerves and, and the shots just don't quite feel right. So we get back over the practice range if you get a chance and you can get it ironed out. So an early exit for Andreas Darum of uh, Denmark. And you can see what it means to go through to the next round for Steve Anderson. Yeah, the big cat. So is USA Archery in good shape right now? You've got another shooter just about to come out onto the field of play. Um, you've got the world champs coming up. Everything running smoothly? Yeah, um, it, it is. We've, we've got a, a very nice team going to the world championships and, um, you know, things, things are going well, very well. We've got some young shooters coming up too and you'll see some new faces at the world championships and that, that's nice, it's nice to see. Good mix of veterans and uh, and young folks, rookies, shall we say. So the judge and coaches walk onto the field of play for our second men's individual quarterfinal. There's Andrea Marcos of Spain. And Sarah Prius of Belgium, both in action uh, this morning. Knocked out early on, but uh, it was a fantastic competition for the women. But now it's all about the men. The slightly surreal sight of Braden Gellington walking onto the <laughs> field of play, accompanied by uh, a couple of ancient Roman dignitaries. Yeah, Braden uh, coming into you know, going into Berlin and, and coming into this event has been working real hard and his shots he's been telling me his shot is just really coming along he's real pleased with how he's shooting right now really really happy so representing the USA Braden Gellington ranked number five in the world at the moment has been a number one ranked archer his sixth appearance at World Cup Finals, the winner in 2012 in, in Tokyo. He's pulled a medal out of the bag with every appearance. And this one's got a bit of a classic feel to it, actually, I <laughs> it think. Does. Both these archers you're about to see have been world number one in their time. Both are coming back into form at just the right time. Very evenly matched. Between them, they have 65 World Cup stage appearances and 59 medals. Yeah. It's just crazy. <laughs> and yeah, Julien Deloche of France acknowledges the crowd. Shooting on target number two. The Frenchman ranked number 14 in the world on the comeback trail, you'd say. And there is no way I'm going to try and predict the outcome of this match. No, no way. No, they're, they're, you know, PJ's been here, Braden's been here. It's this is going to be a good one. I'm really looking forward to it. Nice, Braden has his dad in the back there coaching for him. His number one fan. That's a nice thing. This is a family feel to the to the USA coaching approach, <laughs> uh, yeah, which I, I quite like because <laughs> it saves on fees, doesn't it? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's a solid start for him right there. That's what you're looking to do. That way you, you have total confidence in your sight, Mark, and you're you're good to go. You don't need to have that doubt if you know. The loss with a ten, yeah. right on the line. Sometimes you get something like that, and then you're wondering if you need to move your side or not. And um, so it's nice. I'll start out pretty middle. Looks good. Looks calm. There's a veteran's face for you right there. Yeah, absolutely. At the start of the season, he confessed that he didn't think that this was a possibility, but now he's here. He's not going <laughs> to pass it up. No, there it is. That's it. Yeah. That's a kind of yeah. dispiriting sight for mm -hmm. your opponent, isn't it? A you grouping will. like that. Yeah, and, and when Braden gets on a streak like that, he gets fired up, and, and it only makes him shoot better and better. So it's, you know, 
So a 10 for Delos with his third arrow and likely to find his first arrow upgraded as well. So just a point between the two archers and neither of them will want to let the other get away by no. more than a point or two, will they? No, no. these two guys, if, if you've got more than a couple points, uh oh boy, you're in trouble. Um, but I think PJ will, will settle down even more here and his grouping will tighten up. And uh, Brayden will just try and uh, stay focused and keep executing shots, so. The crowd watching intently here in the shade, and that's a good place to be in the temperatures that we've got at the moment. And it will be Deloche, who's behind by two. Yeah, the arrow did not get upgraded. That's why we have the judges, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. So Delosh, who took a mixed team bronze in Salt Lake and Antalya on the World Cup circuit <laughs> this year, mm -hmm. has found the 10. And Galantin loses it and finds a nine. A little gusty win there. Yeah. Out of ten. He's just focused and calm. Brain's got work to do, keep him at bay. You can see that wind is picked up. You can see how he's moving him around there. Nine. Another nine for Raiden shaking his head. Yeah, I think it's just the wind right there. He just was probably happy to get something in the gold. Timing sometimes is everything, you know. When, when the wind's blowing, when it's not. Oh, There's a beautiful grouping. Yeah. For a non-contact sport, it's surprisingly aggressive, isn't it? It is. USA, it's like, there you go, my friend. What do you got? Mm -hmm. Yep. And we're all tied up. It's the, the alternate shooting really is like watching boxers trading a punch, isn't it? Especially with these two, who you know are capable of pretty much anything. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they clean it out from here and have a shoot off. You know, they're just that type of uh, shooters. Yeah. Well, we were lucky enough to see a couple of shoots off this morning, and, uh, um, and at the very least, we were getting down to the final end where the scores were level, and it was sort of best of three. Mm. There's some, something of the of the McEnroe about uh, <laughs> about Galantin, isn't there? Yeah, you know, he, in a good way. Uh, yeah, you know, he's. He's, he never tries to be disrespectful, that's for sure. Um, but he is, he's a shooter who, who definitely shoots with emotion um, and passion. And when he's got it going and he makes a great shot, it pumps him up and fires him up to where he just uh, he shows it. Yeah, it's great Nothing to see. That. Great yep. to see the passion. Mm -hmm. That's what the crowd really react to as well, isn't it? Yeah, Back exactly. in the 10 now. Yeah. He looked good on that shot. Really good timing, looked real confident. PJ has found his groove. Yeah, he has. He's using a long hold too, isn't he? He's taking almost all of his 20 seconds each time. Fifth straight yeah. ten. He's looking solid. That's a yeah. that's a braid one to do to get. Yeah, there's pressure now on yeah. Delosh, even though he might not feel it acutely. A mm -hmm. ten will be what's needed to stay level. Oh, he finds it. Yeah. They're shooting good. 
So look, I mean, look how even it is. Apart from the first two nines from Delosh, everything else in the ten, three X's, two nines in the first, the second end for Galantin, and everything else in the ten, two X's for him. Yeah. They're, they're, this is a great match. Great match. So six arrows left for each archer. 88 points each. Gellington will shoot first again. Sometimes that's an advantage, isn't it? Because you're he, you're building rather than chasing. Yeah, he likes to shoot first. Um, again, he's an aggressive shooter, and he, he likes to just to get that off and to try and put pressure on his, his competition. So, But PJ doesn't seem to be... Um, feeling much of it right now. He looks really, really confident. So this match for uh, a place in the semi-finals and Anderson awaits. Can Gellington make it an all USA semi nine for him? Looked like that wasn't as comfortable as he'd like. It was a little longer than I think he'd like, for whatever reason. Wind, aim, just not getting his release to fire. Delosh again with another long hold. Yeah. So now it's been reversed. So now the pressure is, is truly on Braden. I expect him to do well out here, come back nice. Yeah, and he does. talking to himself mm. is that what helps him let go of that yep. shot and move on yep yep by the time he gets back the full draw it's out of his mind yeah another 10 for Delosh still a point ahead oh, and that's an important arrow to find the center mm -hmm. with for Gellantin yes couldn't afford to let Delosh get further away so a bit of pressure back now here on the Frenchman. A 10 will maintain his one-point lead, and it's a 9. Yeah, you, you could definitely see a little bit of uh, movement in his bow and in his body in that one compared to the, the few arrows before that. And I think it was just he knew that all he needed was a 10, and he was going to have the lead finally. So. But so you said right at the beginning, Rod, 117 points each, only three <laughs> arrows left. Yeah. Um, Let's see a couple 30s here and, and uh, close to the center shoot off. Yeah, that would be that would be fantastic because that would show that the two of them were really pushing each other right to the limit. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure they both disagree with me though. They like to just win it outright. Right For sure. Here, right and, 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 if you, and if you were one of those archers, actually, Delosh's tie break record is significantly less good than Gallantin actually. So. If you were going to put your house on someone in a shoot-off, if we get there, you'd favor the USA archer. But um, they don't play on paper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> you're doing a very good job of keeping calm, Rob, by the way. I know you're kind of <laughs> shooting every arrow <laughs> here. Yeah, I'm screaming inside. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we go. Last three arrows. So tense, this match. Nine for Gellington. Not the start he wanted. No. See if PJ takes advantage of that. No, he didn't like it. No. Couple of clicks on the site. Mm-hmm. finds the ten. He didn't like that at yeah. all. So now Braden knows he's got his chance right here. Yeah. You'll see emotion from him. Oh, there time. you go. Look yeah. at that. There you go. Right there. It's a big screen. See? That's, that's Braden. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. 
Love it. And the calm nine in the end for Pierre Julien Deloche. Not enough. A very narrow victory for Braden Galantin. A sixth Hyundai Archery World Cup final appearance for him, and he's off and running here in Rome. The Tokyo 2012 was his last World Cup title. Can he end a five-year wait? Braden Galantin of the USA is through to the semi-finals of the 2017 Hyundai Archery World Cup. Well, that was uh, that was exciting. <laughs> it's a little was nerve-wracking, um, yeah, but he it was it was exciting. Um, and again, he's not brain's not going to be happy with how he shot either. And, um, but he'll calm down, and I expect um, I expect better things. It's going to be a great match, him and Steve. It's too bad they got to shoot each other next. Yep, an all USA semi final as the archers leave the field of play. You can see some slow motion action from the match. Pierre Julien Deloche looking back to his best, but not quite enough. Two points the margin of defeat to Braden Gellantin. And there is the man. You can see. Intensity As you say, a bit of dissatisfaction at his own performance, <laughs> uh, but the determination is right there, isn't it? Absolutely. It, it, these guys know they can, they're never satisfied, and that's what puts them in in this match, you know, into this event is they're never satisfied, always driving to be better. Um, so you get into something like this, you, you're expecting yourself to, to shoot really, really well. If you, if you don't shoot to your, to your expectations, whether you win or lose, you're not pleased and you're going to go back and you're going to focus and, and try and get to where you know you can be. So we're going to go into the uh, other half of the men's draw now and look at two archers who are very impressive at the moment. A Turkish archer who took down the world number one to take gold in the last stage in Berlin and a Dutchman who did the same thing in Salt Lake City and is out to defend his World Cup title. So mm -hmm. again, um, I'm I'm very excited to see this match, actually, and and at the quarter-final stage to see such top uh, archers is going to be really interesting. Yeah, and you know, when you look at Mikey Schlosser and you think, oh, you know, here's a veteran. Well, not really. He's still very young. Uh, so you got two young, up-and-coming guys that are going to be here for a long time, and uh, this should be a, a fun match. Well, Schlosser at 23, actually younger than the Turkish archer just taking the field of play here as he walks to the shooting line we'll introduce you to him properly there he is arms folded in that characteristic pose that he has Demir Emek Akli of Turkey ranked number three in the world this year and the manner in which he took down Hansen in Denmark was pretty impressive actually wasn't it? It, it was um I don't think anybody saw that coming, but boy, he really shot well. He certainly did, but he's up against the man they call Mr. Perfect, uh, and with good reason to um, walking onto the field of play now in the bright orange of the Netherlands. He's the defending champion, and he's in good shape as well. It's the Dutchman Mike Schlosser on target number two. Ranked number two in the world this year as well. Winning 70% of his matches. And when you get into the 70% mark, you know <laughs> that you're doing something right. Yeah. Yeah, and, and again, you know when you're shooting somebody like that that you just cannot give him much of a lead or you're in trouble. So, you know, there's no question that um, Demir is going to have a little bit more pressure on him in this match to start. And we'll see, you know, but again, what he did with uh, Stefan Hansen at, at Berlin didn't matter. He just shot great. So it will be Schlosser, the Dutchman, on target two to begin. Very fast shooter. Somebody that likes to, to shoot quickly. That's a, that's a start. Mr. Perfect with almost a perfect arrow. Yeah. 
Kavagakhlu not quite so near the center, but still a 10. That's all that matters. Mikey's looking, looking good right here. There we go, keeping pace. Yeah, both these guys will will know that Gelentin and Anderson are through. Both mm -hmm. of those archers are capable of shooting 150s in match play. So it's about sending a signal, actually, isn't it, that you're ready? It is. No question about it. You know, if you can get out there and, and set a pace, um, makes guys think. Outstanding. Crowd enjoying those first six arrows of the match. Everything in the tent, 30 points for both archers. Such a great TV sport, archery, isn't it? Yeah, it's all about the, the close ups of the archers' faces, like you see there, and then the results 50 meters away, and the tiny margins that TV is so good at showing you. You know, TV makes it look so easy. <laughs> yeah, I guarantee you um, they're feeling it and their bodies are inside or moving and, you know, the wind is there and you just, you don't always see all of that on TV, but, uh, you know, you see that end arrow. But boy, sometimes you get an earthquake in your body as you're aiming. These guys look good, though. Yeah. Another one finds the same hole that he found with the first arrow. And do you see the timing difference? Um, you know, Mikey is really, really fast on his shot, and um, Demir just a lot longer shot process. He's up there at full draw a lot longer, you know, two, over, three times longer. Over the course of the uh, match, then. Would that cumulatively make a difference, maybe to your muscles or to the way you shoot? I think so. And I think actually shooting fast, especially when you have breeze and you know when you've got some wind and stuff, really can help you. You know, in a sense, you get the arrow shot before the wind could have a chance to pick up or gust and blow you off. Um, but you know, it, it's also just that rhythm. It just you don't give your you just you just go. You don't think as much. Um, Sometimes at full draw, you think too much. Ooh, there is something that you don't expect from Mike. And a bit of encouragement. Yeah, here's a chance from the coach there. at the back there. And yeah. Oh, and he, he takes took, it took too. Took advantage of it. Yeah. yeah. And all of a sudden, from almost nothing, a two-point yeah. lead. Yeah, now the pressure is switched. It's all momentum like any other sport. You've got momentum um, that can definitely play on, on the nerves of your competitor. Mike's also the defending champion, so a, a title to protect creates its own narrative in your head, I'm sure. But mm -hmm. what I'm interested with Emma Gakla is he, he's been very, very close to winning the matches that he's lost this season. There's been a point here or there or a shoot-off here and there. Let's not forget that he's the 2015 world champion. So, um, <laughs> um, uh, world Cup champion. So he, he does have a, a win under his belt in these yes. conditions. And, and so no one's going to be underestimating him. And no, they, they've seen how well he's been shooting coming into here. And, and uh, everybody's, he's not a, he can't sneak up on anybody right now, that's for sure. So a slight concern here for Schlosser, giving away two points so far. Yeah, he no. needs three tens. Mm -hmm. The wind has switched now. It's going towards the target before it was actually coming towards the archers. Mm. I'm sure the wind, you can see him kind of looking at his coach and trying to figure out what to do there. You can see uh, his, his bow moving a little bit more in the wind too. Yeah. yeah, not suffering quite so much from that day. No. Gained two more points, that's quite big. Back in the X for Schlosser. Takes him to 74. A slight worried expression on his face. Nine. Another nine for Ellen McGarkle. Mm. 
That's a good that's a good way to follow up your first arrow. A Turkish archer looking to press home his advantage and he does. Three points now. So after three ends, we're on a, a three-point lead for the Turkish archer, and that's that's quite a platform now, isn't it? Yeah, he's, that's a that's a little bit to climb um, on someone shooting well. But again, you, you just never know. You, you don't you don't expect Mike you to shoot an eight. Um, no, but it happens. So it, you, anything can happen. It'll gust the wind or. You know, all you got to do is go up there and put your arrows in the middle and, and see what happens. Four of uh, Schlosser's six tens have been exits. Yeah. So he knows where the center of the target mm -hmm. is. And you saw two of those were pretty much right on the butt. And it, that makes the nine, the eight, and the seven that make up his scores so far all the more difficult to explain, doesn't it? Right. Absolutely. But, you know, almost half of the arrows of. Uh, and Demir have also been access, so he's really. Nine. It looked like a pretty good shot. I think he's uh, a little surprised at that one. Yeah, he's looking comfortable right now. Yeah, he's looking look good. Like he's going to let up, does he? Yeah. It's all falling apart a little yeah. bit for Mike Schlosser here. Yeah. He's capable of more. He knows it. Mm -hmm. And Elmer Gackley will know that too and won't be complacent. Yes. Yeah. I expect him now, you know, with the lead that he has here, to just keep filling up the middle. Pressure, in a sense, is off. He should be feeling pretty comfortable right now. It's a nice phrase. Keep filling up the middle. Mm -hmm. I like that. Nine. Just a nine with that one, yeah. but still five points now, and we're into the final end. Well, oh dear me, the defending champion in a in a bit of trouble. Yes, he is. Um, you know, five points. That's quite a hurdle, but you know, anything can happen. But. Mm. I I don't know if he's going to be able to overcome that. Uh, Mears is uh, looking just comfortable, relaxed, making really nice, solid shots. Yeah, and, and Schlosser will will shoot first in his final end, so he'll really need to start with a ten and then yeah. keep maintaining that pressure and hope that you know he's he's shot a couple of rogue shots himself. El Mugakli yet to do that, so mm -hmm. he's going to hope that there's a couple of rogue ones in the in the bag that haven't come out yet. Yeah, exactly. There's some nice shots. So this is the third of our quarterfinals. One more to go after uh, this one, and a, another uh, interesting match to come. But we're down to the last three arrows of this quarterfinal between Mike Schlosser of the Netherlands and Demir Almagakli of Turkey. I mean, they came in here rank, you know, four and five for this event, so it's not like it's a huge upset or anything, but um, you expected it to be a little bit tighter. It still might be. Yeah, that's the right shot to find for Schlosser. Mm -hmm. and a nine from Albuquerque, so the lead's cut by a point. Be another 10. Really. Yeah, he, he really needed a 10 there. It was just a very long shot for him. So his lead is five. Hmm. Final arrow of the match for Slosher. He'll be looking to finish well. 
And he does a 10. 140 gives Alan McGrackley six to win. That's pretty comfortable. There you go, face 10 to finish. And the defending champion is out. No back to back titles for Schlosser. Elmer Arklier takes the match. He was Hyundai Archery World Cup champion in 2015 in Mexico City. This season he came from seemingly nowhere to win the fourth and final stage of the season. And now his opponents need to sit up and take notice. He's into the semi finals here in Rome. Outstanding. Nice surprising match, but boy, he shot good. He looked real calm and relaxed that whole time, too. He's confident. He's just so determined. Mm. Uh, and he, he allowed himself the, a tiny bit of a, a bit of a smile at the end there, didn't he? <laughs> he sure did. He, he a little uh, arm pumps there right after his uh, last arrow shot. Again, good to see that little bit of motion kind of coming out. Yeah. Absolutely. Good weekend for Turkish archery so far. Yeshin mm -hmm. Bostan with a bronze uh, medal. A third place here in uh, in Rome. No, still, it's almost no movement, even under those slow mo. Yeah, I love these slow mo shots. <laughs> just in here watching and just uh, enjoying um, those shots. You just don't realize all the, the movements everything has on that shot, how the arrow flexes and the bows are flexing. And you can see how how big that last arrow was for him. Yeah, absolutely. He's got his eye on a second mm -hmm. World Cup title, no mistake. Yeah. Be interesting, I, you know. There's a little bit of uh, Brayden Galen theme right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little. Like, yeah, it was good. I like it. So it's time for the last of our quarterfinal matches. Who will be the last archer through to the semis? Both archers appearing as individual World Cup finalists for the first time. One's the current world number one and world champion, and the other, well, stand by for, some, for the home crowd to go crazy as they <laughs> welcome one of their own. And Rod, this young. Archer, he's having an amazing <laughs> career, season, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. At 22, <laughs> this is the only world title he's yet to win, which is pretty incredible. He's ranked number one in the world. He's the defending world champion. Stepan Hansen of Denmark, averaging 9.83 with his arrows. That's phenomenal. Yeah. Big smile there, he's ready to go. And here he is. <laughs> you know, if you're, if you're a guy who likes to be fired up and, and shoot aggressively, crowds like this can just feed you. Yeah. Um, I don't know enough about him to, to know what his style is, but I do know that uh, Stefan Hansen, he is, again, one of those aggressive style shooters who, who does get fired up, shows his emotions. Absolutely. Um, so it'll, it, this is going to be fun. So Federico Pagnoni of Italy, he's 29, so older than Hansen, although a less decorated Archer on the World Cup circuit. His world ranking at the moment is 47. He's here as the host nation's representative in these finals. And he'll be looking to push Hansen all the way here if he can. Important start well. There you go. And you can hear the crowd. That won't bother Hansen at all, though. He's no. a very cool customer. Mm -hmm. he'll, he'll, he'll feed off the same emotion. You know, he'll be, uh, he'll be like, yeah, OK. <laughs> it's just his style. And when he shot in Berlin and Elmer Arklid took 
took the match instead. It, there was a, a, a sense that the, the wheels had slightly come off Hansen's performance yeah. there. He, yeah. you know, he threw his equipment to the floor and was very, very frustrated with himself as much as anything mm -hmm. else. So he, he isn't invincible by any means. Nope. Nobody here. Nobody ever. And that's a perfect start for Pagnoni. That's what you do on home turf. It's a great start. Oh, dead yeah. eye from Hansen. <laughs> Following pace right here. Just staying on it. Sure is. So 30 points for each archer. A maximum of 150 points available in the match. We haven't seen one of those so far today, although we've got close. We did wonder whether Deloche and Galentine would, would bring us that kind of match earlier on, but it wasn't quite to be. But uh, Hansen's another one of those shooters who's capable of shooting a 150 in match plays. Oh, no question. But again, with the, with the wind being a little, you know, shifty, it's, it, I think it'd be hard to do a 150 day. It's not impossible, that's for sure. But I think if you're, if you're really on, you know, a 150 today is a 148, you know, two down, and that would be equivalent. But uh, these guys, who knows? They can prove me wrong and both throw 150s down here. It could happen. So it'll be Pagnoni again to get us underway on target number two. And nine for him in the gold. Not quite the rapture from the crowd this time. That was a great shot by him. Yeah, absolutely. Great result, of course, with the arrow hits, but just looking at his shot, he looked so calm. His timing was great. And Hansen, of course, shot on this target earlier on today in the mixed mm -hmm. team, which, yeah. whilst not being an advantage necessarily, it will certainly yeah. mean that he's... It has a, a big advantage, I think, actually, because you, you really felt what it was like to stand there. Um, so it's, it's not unfamiliar territory. So three nines for Pagnoni, mm -hmm. 57. So a chance here for Hansen. Mm -hmm. Nine is good, two points to lead. You can really see after Stefan shot that, that first 10 there and, and um, Rico, he, he dropped that one. And you, the next arrow, you could re if you watch Federico, you could just see the nerves a little bit more. It's like it, it added so much more pressure to that um, because now I knew he was behind you know, in his home crowd. And you could just see it in his bone and his body, that little extra shake in his face. You, could, you know, the, the pressure was definitely, you know, had gotten large. But uh, you come back here and, and make a good match of this yet. So he's got the talent, that's for sure. Other experts I've, I've spoken to talk about leaving your, your bad shots behind, forgetting those, and just focusing on, on the next thing. But also they talk about trying to make your opponent think. You can just keep putting a bit of pressure on mm -hmm. each time. Yep. Just force your opponent to wonder about the, what's, what their next arrow may or may not be. Yeah, no question. I mean, if you can, in something like this, where I mean, you got an announcer yelling the score and the crowd, <laughs> there's no way to not know what's going on. So it's, it's really hard to just kind of ignore and just focus on your own. You know, you're hearing it and, and the score's down there and you're just paying attention to it all whether you try to block it out or not. It's right in your face. He looked solid there. That was good. See if Stefan can keep the pressure on here. He does. Yeah. Seems to be kind of getting in his groove. Mm. I think he'll be happy with a nine on that one. It surprised him.
Yep, highest yeah. 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 Do you think the wind is a tiny bit tougher on the arrows on target two? Um, you know, it, it is possible because it's a little bit more open off on the right side, but again, at 50 meters and it's only at the very, very end, so I, I really don't see where it's going to be affecting the arrow down there. It's just really what's on your body and, and the aim. I don't think you're really going to get too much drift. So three straight tens for Hansen. Very comfortable now, and four points up on Pagnoni. Yeah, and he's a shooter that now he's just going to get real comfortable and, and just, again, keep filling the middle. I, I don't expect him to... Uh, to fall through. I mean, the crowd needs to play their part a little bit here, don't yeah. they, and try and lift Pagnoni if they can. I mean, he's capable of shooting tens all afternoon long, that's for sure. We've seen that, mm -hmm. but uh, he, needs, he, he needs his extra man here to start cheering for him. Yeah, I put the smile back on, so hopefully, hopefully he'll come out here and uh, give the crowd something to cheer about. So behind by four, quite a margin in matches like these. So needs to start finding some tens regularly now. That was a quick shot there first, yeah. Femden. You just see the, the confidence that Stefan has right now in this match. Yeah. He's just looking really calm and relaxed. It's cold, isn't it? Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. You know when you get behind and you see him like that, um, you're in trouble. So Pagnoni doing all he can, but he could find himself further behind now. Mm -hmm. There's just no answer to yeah, shooting like that, really. Yeah, you see, you <laughs> see in his eyes, he's just like, okay, I got this. Most guys would get a group like that, and they move their sight just slightly. Eh, he's good. He's just like, nah, I'm good. It's interesting, isn't it? Because you've got uh, a, a real mix of, of archers still left in this competition, and you've got some experience there, mm -hmm. and also some youth. And mm -hmm. both of those things can create uh, an advantage for you. you know, your experience allows you to cope with the pressure. Maybe your youth means that you just don't feel it at all. <laughs> yeah, sometimes uh, the younger you are, the, the easier it is because you just don't you may or may not recognize the magnitude of what you're doing <laughs> and the longer you know you shoot and the more of a veteran you become the magnitude of that gets you yeah then you're shooting with your record aren't that's you? right yeah. that's right you add additional pressure onto yourself um, because you're you feel everybody else's expectations um, instead of just worrying about yourself Pagnoni with a 10 there, but falling further behind to Hansen, who has this arrow and one more to come. Got a little match. breezy here. Where it goes, didn't matter. Pagnoni wants to finish well. Yeah. He does. Nice, 143, nice which would win you a match sometimes. But. Uh, just five needed for Hansen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What a way to finish. Hansen takes the match. The world number one takes out the home hero. Hansen bagged the mixed team title this morning, and he's on course for the double here in Rome. He's just two matches away from a first World Cup title. Stefan Hansen of Denmark is through to the semi finals. That was outstanding shooting. Outstanding, relaxed. Yeah. I don't know how he did that. <laughs>
just uh, amazing. That was that was fun to watch. So that sets up an interesting uh, semi-final in the in the top half of the draw because now we've got this rematch on between him and uh, Enver Ahle of, of mm. Turkey, which mm. is the yes. match that we saw in Berlin, where um, the Turkish archer just just wouldn't let go. <laughs> It's going to be fun. Yeah. So a chance for the archers to take a breather. Just briefly for a minute or two before we get into the semi-finals. And so we will have Hansen versus Emogakli. So number five versus number one in that semi-final. And first up, we'll have the all USA tie of Gelentin and Anderson. So um, uh, Rod, I, do I do I need to uh, provide you with some like a cold a cold drink or something like that just to help you get through it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that would be that would be helpful. No question about it. Anderson and uh, Gannington shot against each other for bronze in Berlin, didn't they? And it was a very good humoured match, actually. Even though it was the bronze that got uh, uh, Braden his spot here, he was very relaxed and they were sort of laughing, joking, swapping coaches, yeah. boxes and, uh, and whatnot. But uh, it's not going to be like that this time, is it? No, but, you know, th they are very familiar with each other because, again, not just on the World Cup circuit, but back at home, they're shooting against each other all the time, you know, and... Then they spent all this time together on the road, and it just, it's, that you, you're friends, you know, it just, sometimes um, you get into situations like this and it can be a total dogfight, and other times um, both shooters kind of, you know, I don't know, they just get, I don't know if it's a little extra nerves or something, but they don't necessarily shoot up to the, you know, their capabilities, but I'm, I'm expecting this is just going to be a, a good one, good, solid match that uh, I'm going to be dying back here <laughs> <laughs> watching them shoot well, there's a, there, you know that how many nations would would kill for both of their archers in a semi-final in a world cup absolutely and again we could have had three and uh, I think you know that's uh, that's an amazing thing and, and these two are guys are great champions um, and just spectacular archers Steve is still learning this game, believe it or not. You know, he really hasn't been shooting that long. Um, and Braden's been shooting for a long, long time and, and winning for a long, long time. So this is a great match. So here we go again, men's semi-final. Braden Gellington of the USA. Another nonchalant wave to the crowd for the fifth-ranked archer in the world this year, a former world number one, and the 2012 World Cup champion, five years since his last title. Will this be the year? This man's going to have something to say about it, though. Steve Anderson walking onto the field of play, the slowly, big nonchalantly. Again, having such a great year, winning outdoor events, indoor events, just podium after podium after podium. And it's been amazing to watch. Been a great year. I'm sure they got dinner on this one too. Whoever, whoever, uh, there'll be something else, won't there? That's right. <laughs> These two guys. Yep. There you go. Teammates. Maybe the extra leg room on the plane home or something like that. <laughs> it's good to see them go over and and give each other. Um, the good old man hug there yeah, um, and before and the match started. And they're, they're teammates, aren't they? And, Absolutely. And, and they've achieved so much as a team this season, haven't yep. they, the USA? Yep. Yep. They have, and we, you know, they shot really, really good in Berlin. And, and again, these guys are good friends. Just going to press pause on that friendship for the next uh, <laughs> 10 or 12 minutes or so. Yep, it, uh, friendship just left. Anderson, first up. Yeah, he looked good right there. He looked uh, much calmer and confident on that shot compared to his first matches, uh, all the arrows in his first match. Yeah, here we go. Now the 10. Mm -hmm. When they got a chance to practice on this venue uh, yesterday, 
Um, I think they were, Braden shot like 48 arrows and missed two. And um, Steve, I think, missed three. But Steve missed the first one, and Braden was very keen to tell him that all night long. <laughs> well, you missed the first one, you know? Um, because they kind of had that little side back going. Uh, looking good. Yeah. As he did in the first match this afternoon, mm -hmm. Gallantin opening up with um, 30. And, uh, Dan there just offering him the odd word of advice. Yeah, both of them are looking much more relaxed here, though. They're just their friends shooting against each other, wanting to win so bad. Um, but yet, just I don't think they're feeling the same amount of pressure, that's for sure. Steve trying to stay awake, I think. All right. <laughs> And, and your role as uh, uh, USA Archie, what do you say to these guys? You know, you, you, you're looking after them, I, I guess, but do, do you have a message for them when they go out? I just I just told them to bring it, you know, um, have fun, bring it, and good luck. And um, so far, that's exactly what they're doing. Okay, Anderson shooting first again on target number two. The shadows start to lengthen here in Rome as the afternoon wears on. By the end of the afternoon, we'll have a new World Cup champion. And Anderson with that 10 intently focused on trying to make sure it's him. But this guy is in his way. And there's another 10 for Gelatin. And you can see from his arrow grouping there in the holes on the target, he is dead center as far as his sight mark and his, his aim. Steve's just a little bit low and to the right. No, nope, except for that one, of course. Yeah, he, yeah, he's a little surprised on that one. He doesn't know what that was. What will Gellington think of that? Will he even consider that eight? I mean, you'll he, see, he, he will have seen he, it. For him, yes, because again, he loves to know exactly where he's at and what's going on. So for him, that... Yeah. To be honest, it'll probably make him relax a little bit more and, and become real, you know, relax pressure-wise and just become more aggressive in his shot and just be like, yeah, I got this. Yeah. Another perfect 30, a three-point advantage now. He hasn't exactly locked the door, but he's put the key in the lock, hasn't he? Um, yeah, or he's about to. It's close. The next couple of arrows are going to determine whether the key's in the lock or not. Yeah, you know, to be fair, I'm going to watch the metaphors. <laughs> Some, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. <laughs> this whole uh, arena here, although we've put a modern stand uh, around it is a is an ancient sporting venue and uh, all the way around uh, sometimes you see the statues uh, that they've got of various sporting heroes and sports represented uh, there's i haven't seen an archery one but uh, either of these two guys could uh, could model for that couldn't they yeah th there is one actually behind us um by the entrance um so i did see one there Still has a statue. Oh, he's, he's looking good right there. That looked, good. That looked great. You can see again, it's, with the exception of that one arrow, he's just hanging just on that right, which could be a little dangerous. Nine. Yeah, nine he, for he didn't like that one. No, it's his first he, nine of the match, and uh, quite yeah. wild compared to his other groups. Yeah, he was he was talking to that one before it ever got there. So. Yeah. And Anderson coming right back. Yeah, that's what Steve needed to do. Braden's still shaking his head. Then. It's getting a little long in a shot right there. Good. Uh, worth it. Three tens. Yeah, keeps that pressure on. Anderson. Yeah. 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 Got the lead two points now. Yeah. What he needed to do. Uh, Mrs. Anderson there. A few words for uh, Steve over encouragement and reassurance. Yeah. 
she's been shooting good this year too. So yeah, a great prospect for her to have yeah. a, a home world championships to look forward to uh, mm -hmm. as well. And yeah. as, as the USA goes not too far to travel to Mexico City so you your team are going to be looking forward to some good finishes there too aren't you? yeah you know you don't won't have the jet lag because it's just a, it's like flying into the cross state somewhere yeah, yeah. so it's, a, it's, a, it's an easy flight for us and I think they're going to enjoy that time zone changes is not too much so they're I mean, traveling to Europe, you, you know, even when you know you're on a big stage like this, mm -hmm. is, is, a, is a big deal, and, and some archers deal with it better than others. And talking yeah. to, to Rio in, in, in Antalya, talking about how long he'd been on the road, you know, a yeah. long time away from home. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you're constantly changing time zones, and, and you do get that jet lag, and it, it hurts your sleep, and you know, it's amazing how well they perform. Um, you know, considering. Steve, when he, he got here, he actually came two days early and he actually put half of his equipment or, you know, one bow in one bow case and actually took two bow cases thinking, okay, yes, if one gets lost, he'd be good. Wow. Well, they both didn't show up for 24 hours, so <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work out so well. That's a long hole for Gallantin, but a 10. Yeah. Yep. So the lead still two points. Mm. And the wind's swirling just a little bit here too. Yep. Back to three though. Yep, that wind flag's just kind of spinning on the pole out there. Now coming to the archers, now off to the right, just constantly spinning. Now the 29 end for Steve Anson, brilliant shooting. Mm. Gellington just a little bit ahead, nine for him there. So it keeps it within reach. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And only three arrows left in the match now. And with a two point gap. Yeah. And the odd nine for your opponent and a 10 for you is, is going to make, yeah, make you it know, interesting, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's like close. Then you're like starting to feel it like, oh no, I only have one to give now. So it's important for Steve to, again, continue to start strong and stay strong through this. So Braden Gellington, who disposed of Pierre Julien Deloche in the quarterfinals. Steve Anderson, who knocked out Andreas Darum of Denmark at the same stage, now head to head for a place in the final match of the afternoon here in the compound men's individual competition. Anderson with a 10. Great shot there, showing you how far away well, those targets are. An hour a point. Yeah. Just as we said here, a 10 mm -hmm. from Anderson yeah. would really make a difference to him. Mm -hmm. And there it is. Good X. He didn't like that one very much, but he got it. Yeah. This arrow is real important, obviously. So another 10. Yeah. Anderson. So here we go. So Gallantin needs a 10 mm -hmm. to take him into the final. That was a quick shot. And there yeah. it is. Yeah. He didn't hang about. No. And Braid Gallantin of the USA knocks out Pierre Julien Deloche in the quarterfinals, and now he's knocked out. His teammates and countryman Steve Anderson of the USA. Braden Gellington, thumbs up to the crowd. He's through and he has another shot at the World Cup title. Outstanding shooting by those guys. It's so strange when you have situations like that. It's like you're you're so happy and so sad at the same time because you're, you're so happy for the guy, you know, for the person who won, and, and uh, you know you really feel for the one who didn't. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, a very, very narrow victory. And you said, I think, uh, 148 points looked like yeah. uh, uh, looked like the most you were going to be able to shoot out out here in these conditions and the pressure. And 147 was what Gallantin ended up with winning the match, so not too far off. Yeah, they did U.S. Air Tree proud. <laughs> yeah, it was a great sure. job. They were, you know, fantastic. There he is, Braden Gallantin, six times in World Cup finals, a medal every time. But five years since Steve will have many more chances. Victory. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I'm guessing that he'll be uh, in the crowd later and uh, and cheering mm -hmm. Braden. Braden on, despite yes. the fact he's probably going to end up paying for dinner later. <laughs> yes, um, I guarantee you he will be. <laughs> In both cases, <laughs> he'll be out there cheering, and and he is definitely paying for dinner. So we'll see Anderson again one more time as he shoots for bronze. Who will his opponent be, though? That's up to the result of the match that we've got in front of us, and um, the. Judge and coaches have taken the field. The athletes of the field of play for the compound men's semi-final match number two. And here we go. So onto the field of play comes Stefan Hansen, the world number one, who took Federico Pagnoni out of the competition by six points in his quarterfinal match and standing there looking confident yeah and he's really the only guy that shot this whole thing so far and just seemed like he was you know practicing he just looked so backyard easy shooting. going and and just uh, relaxed now you wouldn't say relaxed was the word but you could use <laughs> with el Magatli, but actually his determination yeah. gives him that stillness, doesn't it? Yeah, you can see the confidence in his walk. You know, he's um, he's definitely got it. I'm sure he's looking forward to this match. Well, he's had the beating of Hansen this season. Mm -hmm. uh, beat him in the final stage in, in Berlin and um, comfortably beat him too, actually. Uh, I think there was only two or three points in it in that match, but he with two ends to go, he was just looked yeah. so solid. Yeah. Hansen couldn't get near him. Yeah, that's that's one that uh, Stefan would like to definitely forget, and I'm sure he's thinking about that a little bit right now. You see what kind of momentum uh, they bring in this match. Who's going to start out the strongest? So Hansen back on target number one again, where he was this morning for the mixed team and where he was this afternoon for his first individual match. So he'll be happy with that draw. Absolutely. Yes. And that's a serious opening statement <laughs> from sure El Magarche. <laughs> You know that song, Anything You Can Do, I Can Do Better? <laughs> yeah. Focus, sekiz, yedi, altı, beş, dört, üç. No, you can't. Oh, no, I'm a guy. Yeah, I wish I could uh, say that song is for me or you know I, I can't shoot like these guys do. Yeah. 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 do you see the standard improving year after year i do i do and the, and the shooters are actually getting younger the ones who are winning are getting younger and younger and um it's just amazing you know the scores that are being shot are just yes do you think the younger archers now will go on to have long careers or do you think that it's your 20s now that are the, the, the years where you have to do the most damage. I, I think there's something to be, you can see the wind is shaking everything. There was a big gust that came through and yet he put it right in the middle. Yeah. That was an outstanding shot and that's why he's pretty happy about it. <laughs> uh, but I, I, do, I do 
think that that is a good possibility um, just because you know these these young guys are just man it's one after another there's so many good talented young shooters um, I, I've never seen that many of them as I do today um, so it's it's fun to watch and again I as an archer I can admire the skill level that these guys are, are displaying I think if you're not familiar with archery, it's the sort of sport that you can get into as a, as a viewer, isn't it? Because yeah. the skill is evident, and watching it on TV, you can you can see the drama right up close too. Yeah, that you know these head-to-head -head matches, and you, you can see it. It's you know if you're just standing there shooting a bunch of arrows, but you don't have a lot of room for error here. You know, not that many arrows. Not at all. Garkley, one down on Hansen, a nine for him. That wind is still still stronger than it was, but oh. someone doesn't care. <laughs> so the charger finds yeah. a ten with that arrow. He, need, he needed that one. Hansen on the line. That yeah, should be a nine. So Hansen with a slight let off and he finds the 10. So he'll keep his one point lead, may even extend it to two. We'll, we'll see if that eight upgrade, and he probably will be. Well, it, it should looked, be. It, it looked pretty solid, actually. It looked like it was cutting through that line. But yeah, you can see it from there. That should be, uh, should be a nine. So what would your advice be then if you're uh, thinking about taking up archery? And you're, you're watching this at home somewhere, and you're impressed by what you see, what would you what would you say to people who are yet to pick up a bow? Please do. You know, it's a great sport. Um, any age, any ability, um, you know, there's, it, it's great for, you know, anybody that has any type of um, disability too, you can shoot. I mean, it does not matter. It's a, you know, again, a, a, a sport where there's a, lot, a huge family that, of people that'll help you, you know, just, Look for um, a dealer or a pro shop or uh, somebody that can help you get started so you start the right way and then just enjoy yourself. It's, it's just a fantastic sport. And it can take you all over the world. Um, and if you get the bug like I did when I was young, um, it changes your life. Um, your life will evolve, you know, evolve around it. It's just uh, it's an amazing thing. Love the sport. You know, again, you look at somebody like Steve Anderson, he's really only been shooting about five years or so. You know, so he didn't start until after he graduated from college. Um, so, again. So it's not one of those sports like gymnastics or whatever that unless you start when you're about six, you've got no hope. You can pick it up. Yeah, you're, you can pick it up. And, um, you know, there's plenty of uh, really, really good coaches out there to, to help you get started. So another X for Hansen, yeah, three good. points now, and Elmer Gakli, not how it was in Berlin for him. He's he's trying to hang on here now. Yeah, because uh, Stefan, is, he's looking calmer and calmer, and now that you can see the wind just affecting his bow there. And yeah, that was difficult for him. He was just hoping that he'd get a break and he'd calm down enough for him to settle and get a good shot off, but that one cost him. And then again, Stefan, he's up there, he gets on it, and it's gone before the wind really has a chance to move him around too much. He was shooting much quicker, the Turkish yeah. archer, in, in his first match, wasn't he? And, and that he was confident then, and now mm -hmm. he's thinking about it a bit more, right. isn't he? Yeah, right now you can see it in his face and his body language. Um, 
you saw how he walked out and he was very confident right now. He just looks uh, a little disappointed at this point, but yeah, he's still in it. He, you know, he is still in it, but he's definitely uh, doesn't have much room to uh, to miss the ten ring now. Yeah, I mean, Hansen, 30, 29 and 30 with yeah. his first three ends. And, and you can see he's, he's confident and, and smiling and having a good time and and uh, it's just, you can just see it in the body postures. So words of encouragement from the Turkish coach for mm -hmm. Mehmet Akhle, who will shoot first again on target number two. And he's got a five point lead to try to eat into with his last six arrows of this match. He will have been confident coming to Rome because of his performances across the season, but it's slipping away from him here and he needs to step up and find some tens pretty sharpish. Yes. It's Good not enough. Yeah, it's not going to be what he what he needed there. Hansen's going to have to give him yeah. some free points here, isn't he? Really? Yeah. And that doesn't <laughs> look like it's going to happen. <laughs> no, I mean, when you look at the targets, look at his you know, Stefan's last uh, match and target. He just hammered the center, and he's doing it again here. He's just filling up the middle, and he's looking good. He is, and uh, it's a place in the final match uh, against Gelantin that awaits for whoever wins this match. And um, yeah. there's a reason why he's number one yeah. and world champion. So finds the ten, the Turk. So 28 for him, 112. But Hansen really piling on the pressure now. Still six points there. Yeah, so six points the lead yep. and uh, three arrows left for each archer and a smile on Hansen's face because he knows he's given himself a platform to turn this into a, into a victory. Yeah, barring something really crazy happening right now, he's, uh, he's looking good. He's in the driver's seat and really shouldn't be feeling all that much pressure. He should be feeling pretty confident, like, yep, I'm going to do a walk up here. I'm going to throw three more down in the middle and uh, move on. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that's, that's a great slow motion right there. <laughs> I mean, he, he's, a, he's a top level international athlete, isn't he? But he what is. I love about him is he's, just, he's got some of the, he's got a slightly sort of unkempt look about him. Um, and the, the, the odd face, the expression you see, it's like his mum's asking to tidy his room or something like that. Yeah. You know, I, I don't mean any disrespect by that. No. But he's, he's, he's such a teenager, it's brilliant. Yeah. You can see there, he's got his hat kind of sitting off on the side a little bit for for sun and uh, make sure he's got uh, some shade in his eyes for aiming and things. So, so Daniel uh, yeah, boy, he really needed that one in the middle. He certainly did. And well, he's capable of it too. Yeah. He just he can't find it. Yeah. Hope he f you know, finishes strong. Nine. Nine from Hansen, the lead's still six. Yeah, but he's like, yeah, whatever. You know, it's <laughs> and when you've got that, it's, again, there's not much pressure anymore. You're just disappointed because you want perfection. Much better. Yeah. But later than he needed. Mm -hmm. So Hansen on for a 147 finish, yep. which is what Gellantin shot in his match to win. Yep. Put this one in the middle. Yeah, strong Lose finish now. Finish. Come on. Yeah. And a nine. So anything on the target for Hansen? 
Yeah, and that's good. <laughs> you can just see it in his body, face. Yeah. Down it goes. Not just yep. anything. An X10. Yeah. Smashed the center of the target. That was a super relaxed shot. It was just like he was in practice. So. Yeah. So Stefan Hansen does what's required of him. He's the world champion. He's the world games champion. He's the world number one. And he's taken a giant leap towards becoming the World Cup champion of 2017 here as well. Stefan Hansen into the final against Gelentin, and it will be El Magakli versus Anderson for the bronze, and that's our next match. Yeah, should be a good one. Um, we'll have to see, you know, I'm sure the Demir is really disappointed right there, and we'll see if he can come back, um, you know, mentally and get back focused and making good shots. I expect Steve, because Steve, he didn't shoot poor in his, in his match. Uh, against Brayden, but um, I expect him to come out here and, and be feeling pretty good. So uh, it all comes down to the mindset. So now then, with the benefit of uh, having seen all those matches shot, when we looked at the brackets right at the yeah. beginning of the afternoon, yeah. the 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 Gallantin Hansen face-off for the for the title was was there for the taking, wasn't it? And that's what it, we ended up with. Yeah, it really was. And there's two shooters that literally. <laughs> are so alike um, you know they, they both are aggressive shooters they're both you know very accomplished um, you know Braden's a little bit more of a veteran but this is going to be fun um, they both feed off of emotion and I, I'm, I'm expecting to see quite a bit of that in that, in that match but you know again this the first one here um, you know should be fun nobody wants to go home uh, without a medal um, and, uh, uh, and we, <laughs> we kind of saw that this morning uh, with Sonicson actually. Yeah. You, you get to, she had a, her eyes not unrealistically on on the on the top spot here, yep. and and she didn't quite make it. And then she came out for the bronze medal mm -hmm. match, and she she couldn't shrug that off. I mean, right. Bostan yeah, took that bronze medal deservedly, but Sonicson was not in the right frame of mind, and that's going to be a, mm -hmm. a, a big challenge for. Uh, uh, El now, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, if he's able to, you know, with this little break here, is he, if he's able to just relax and just say, oh, well, and, and get back up there and focus, you know, more power to him. But it's a very difficult thing to do sometimes when, you know, you get disappointed that you're you're not moving into the, you know, what your, uh, what your goal was, and that is to win this event. So, and, and he, again, he just didn't shoot really well. So, you know, is that going to affect him? Is he going to be thinking that? Is he going to be worried and trying too hard um, instead of just letting it happen? And we'll see. Oh, the wind's really blowing right now. Yeah, and here we go. The compound men's individual bronze medal match straight back out onto the field with the Praetorian guard either side of him. It's Demir Ermak Akhle of Turkey. The crowd here now well acquainted with this young archer. They can see his steel, his determination. Mm -hmm. Unlucky to find Hansen in such imperious form in the semi finals. And so he'll want to make amends for that in this bronze medal match and see if he can take home a medal here. Yep. You know, and Steve gets to shoot on the same target that he shot in his last match. And, and you know, here he's, he's got to move over. So, you know, we'll see sometimes, you know, again, your comfort zone, you were just here, everything's familiar, um, can be good, but maybe a little change in, you know, which side he's shooting on will help him kind of flush the memories of, of the last match uh, for the mirror. He's going to need to do that. That match is gone and in the past, and he has to focus now because this guy is a formidable opponent. Quite easily, it could have been him in the final. But he's shooting for bronze here, Steve Anderson. What a season he's had. Ranked number four in the world there, as you can see. 9.8 arrow average. And converting 64% of his matches into wins. He'll be looking to get that up beyond the 70 percentage 
mark next season as he as he improves and grows as an archer with his experience but he's already a formidable force yes he is not just his stature <laughs> but i mean his oh gosh he's got talent probably doesn't regret leaving the 400 meters behind does he <laughs> well he played basketball and 400 meters and he's he's a heck of an athlete really really good that's uh, yeah it's just kind of like up oh, yep okay boom just strong fantastic shot to start Let's see if he can match it here Yeah, good start. Low eight for the Turkish archer. Yeah, he was a full draw a long time there. Just lost it at the end. No, <laughs> Steve knew it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, when he starts, when he turns and starts walking off even before the arrow hits. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> he had a famous uh, shoot off arrow at the Reading Trail Shoot this year in, in California where he did just that. and. Um, this is just a phenomenal shot, 88-yard shot, um, and he just drilled it. But he just turned around and called it before the arrow ever hit, and the crowd went crazy. It's, it's just, it was incredible. But he just knew it. His confidence is like, yeah, that's good. So three points already for Anderson in his pursuit of third place here which would be a brilliant end to his world cup season and a great mm -hmm. platform for the world championships in mexico as well absolutely leaning on his boat very nonchalantly that's not what you want, is it? Already no. three behind after three yeah. arrows if you're if you're serious about winning the match. So this is a real test. It and is. he's equal to it, but he's, he really he's needs to, find to shoot a 30 here. Yeah. He needs a 30. That's a good start. Good X right in the middle. There's an eight from well, Anderson. And just like that, it's one point. Sağlam tut sokunu. Emin olduğunda. Az geçme. Sekiz, yedi. Let's see how uh, how this changes things mentally. Again, it can happen so fast. Yeah, Anderson needs to find the gold here. And the wind is not a long hold away. for him. Yeah, it's getting blown around a little bit there. It does, so scores yeah. are tied. So that three-point lead is gone. Mm -hmm. Amazing how quickly it happens. Oh, that's yeah. it. That's, he did exactly what Super. he needed. He needed that 30. And he's got his confidence back. Steve, need, Steve really needs his 10 here. He's twitching a tiny bit, yeah. isn't he? You yeah, can it's see that. Long. Nine for him. So that's a four point swing right there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. What we were talking about before, you don't think a big swing can happen, but um, it can. It's still early, but yeah, what a change. Yeah. Well, we hope you're enjoying the archery if you're watching back home on the internet or uh, on, on TV. We're very glad that you've been able to join us and uh, 
it's certainly been a pleasure to commentate on these arrows today and just the the standard of archery rod has, has been sky high yeah it's it's phenomenal and again these targets aren't that big you know that 10 ring is small and you're shooting it at you know, 50 meters 55 yards it's um, with crowd, with speakers, people yelling your score, the clock counting down. You know, you got it all, and um, this is not easy to do, and sometimes these guys make it look easy. And girls. So now, it's on the other foot. Steve really needs to come out with a 30. Yeah. And he's capable of it. He's shown yep. it so it's far interesting. today. His, his wife just threw him something, and he's putting something on his bow or tightening something, an Allen wrench. Interesting. He had to make a, yes. a, little, a, little. a quick adjustment there. Nine to Anderson. Just wonder if that threw him a little bit because she had to throw him look like an Allen wrench and tighten up like his maybe stabilizer or something came loose and he had to quick tighten it up. And then he threw it back to her and off the goes. Complex machinery, these compound bows, aren't they? They give you a lot of stability and a lot of accuracy, but there's a lot of bits to go wrong. Exactly. Well, we could be tied up here again now. So. Well, Anderson doing all he can. 29. Yeah. Good shooting, especially that with that one. little mm -hmm. distraction midway. So yeah, he's he's back there working on it again right now. So yeah, so his, his bottom stabilizer came loose a little bit. So ten for the Turkish archer. So the scores are tied, but the first Turkish arrow there yeah. looking like it was on the line. So could be upgraded, and that would give him a one point advantage. We'll wait to see if that, uh, that's confirmed or not. So you can see there the shot of the piece of equipment that uh, Anderson had to tighten up midway through that end. Yeah. Didn't harm him too much, only dropped a point, but uh, it will have been on his mind. And he, uh, you want to have confidence in your equipment at yeah. all times, don't yeah. you? Yeah, you, you're flustered as you kind of quick, quickly try, and you know you don't have a long time to do that. And you might not be exactly in the same position again, which can, uh, can change how your bow performs a little bit. So, you know. But it's awful nice having someone like your wife back there who knew instantly what he needed, where it was, threw it to him. He was able to get it down in 15 seconds or so and, and get back in the game. And there we go. I'm not sure whether I want my wife coaching me. <laughs> yeah. I certainly wouldn't get that much sympathy if I messed up. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, Mrs. George, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Two tens for Anderson, 105 for him. And it's keeping the pressure on. Nine. And we're tied again. Wow, the up and down, this is <laughs> it's incredible. It's nerve wracking. Nine. Loose one. Yeah. Anderson, he's not found. No groove. He no, hasn't found a groove. He hasn't. I mean, he opened up with three, three tens, yeah. but since then, it's just he hasn't quite hooked it up, has he? Mm -hmm. No. Not Fortunately like for Anderson, neither has Emmett Arthur, but. Um, but he's taking a one point lead. He's going got the one point lead now, yeah. And um, edging closer to that third place. 2015 World Cup champion, the Turkish archer at 26. Three years younger than Anderson, but more experienced on this world stage. And as a former World Cup champion, he knows what it takes to lock down these medal-type matches. And 
has got just a point ahead now, and that might be all it all it takes. Yeah, shoot a 30 here, it's done. Um, and Steve knows he needs to shoot a 30. So you sitting back here watching this stuff is so much more nerve-wracking than even being out there shooting. <laughs> Uh, I guarantee you for his wife, she's just like, ah, you know, and oof, that's the way it is here. Yeah, for those of you uh, watching <laughs> at home, Rod is at full draw at all times. <laughs> shooting every single arrow that Anson's got. Yeah, Nine. All right, wow, there you go. So now we'll see if Steve takes advantage um, and holds holds to 30. He's got to do that, really. To get to a shoot-off if, 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 if he throws two tens in there. That was a really nice shot by Steve. He, he really had beautiful timing right there and, and just uh, just had the look about him like, yeah, this was going in, there was no doubt. Yeah, giving and you can really see his, on his bow here, he's got a little bit more waver going on, but yeah. the wind is kind of switched again. Long hold yeah. again. So now Steve knows he just needs this 10. And um, oh, that would be something, wouldn't it? Because he's been behind for a couple of ends. Yeah, a couple of ends. You can see a little bit right there. Yeah. He's trying to wait out that wind a little bit, but you only have so much time. It can be really, really and difficult. will be calling the yep. remaining seconds for him. I tell you what, he's going to be happy with a 9. <laughs> yeah, that right was, uh, yeah, and here we need a 10. Yeah, and that's pressure. Ten for ten to stay in it. Ten to force the shoot off. Nine. Oh, it's a nine, nine. for Steven. Ben Hill, Elmer the 2015 World Cup champion, ends this competition in Rome, and he walks away in fourth place. And a kiss and an embrace for the big cat, Steve Anderson from the USA, who takes third place here at the 2017 Hyundai Archery World Cup. Oh. <laughs> That's it, just breathe. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> That's good. Oh no, Fantastic you've got another one. Shot. You've got another one coming up in a minute. Yeah. Uh, good strong arm then from Mr. Anderson. <laughs> He's pleased with that result. I mean, what would that mean to, to him? What, what are you going to say to him when you see him uh, later on at, uh, uh, at dinner, Rod? Uh, you're killing me, Smalls. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <so>. <laughs> I may make him buy. <laughs> yeah. That was a great match, though. And for anybody who loves archery back and forth like that, that was a great match. Um, yeah. Fun to watch. Let's just enjoy some of these slow boat shots here, telling the tale. Some of these guys need to. Razor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, these slow, these up close. It's like, why? <laughs> yeah. Fairly clean cut, that one. Yeah. Looking good. Good match. Yeah. You feel for I do. the Turkish guy. Yes. He, he just, I mean, he gave it everything he had, and it's yeah. been a long old season of yeah. World Cup matches. You've been all around the world, as you, as you mm -hmm. said, Rod. So yeah, you can you can feel anytime someone loses a match like that. Again, it's it's a mixed emotions of you, you can. It's like that in sport. That's what sport. That's what makes it so great. Um, there is triumph and tragedy in, in every event. Somebody wins, somebody loses, and. Um, if you're a competitor and that's what gets your juices flowing, that's what you look forward to. So the last action of the day and a return to the field of play for the 22-year-old world number one and world champion Stefan Hansen walking out here into the arena at the Estadio del Marmi in Rome for the 2017 Hyundai World Archery World Cup. And he places his bow and his replacement in the corner by his coach. He knows he is just one match away from an amazing end to his World Cup season. Stefan Hansen of Denmark. And 
has target one. He has looked so good. No cracks. You know, one that one end, one arrow really. Um, outside of that, he's looked good. But if anybody's got the game to take it <laughs> to Hansen for the same kind of reasons, the, mm -hmm. the, the determination and the ability in these kinds of scenarios, it's this guy who's just walking out onto the field of play as he hands his sunglasses to his father, his coach, and turns to take the acknowledgement of the crowd on target number two. Ranked number five in the world this year, representing the United States, Braden Gallanty. Yeah, and again, he's been working really, really hard to get to this point, so I expect him to shoot well. Both of these guys. And Andres Hegerus, as he has been all afternoon, taking charge of this one. And he'll indicate target number two to shoot first for Galantin. Will he like to shoot first, Rod? Uh, but you know what? That never really bothered me. I didn't really have a preference. Most archers prefer to shoot first. Okay. They, they, they feel that if you, if you put the one in the middle, then automatically you already have pressure on your competitor. But these guys, sometimes it's like they, they almost like to know what they need to do. Um, so shooting second is really not going to bother anybody. That's a good start right there. For sure. That's what you want to do in a gold medal match. It's a long shot for Stefan. Almost the same spot. Outstanding. Mm. All ten so far. And yet another. <laughs> Look at that group. Yeah, and again, you, you shoot it and you're walking off knowing that it has no other place to go but the middle. <laughs> And there you go. Yes, folks, we are in the gold medal match. 30-30. Just to give you some uh, comparisons between these two archers, uh, Hansen won just about everything there is to win already at 22. But uh, Gellington, 38 World Cup appearances. 45 World Cup stage medals, <laughs> 26 of them gold, 13 silver, six bronze. Yeah. He's um, had to repair I his don't know uh, what, trophy I don't know. cabinet <laughs> several times. I don't know what you, uh, what else you can say about that. I mean, what, what an incredible champion. You're, you're in sort of Michael Phelps territory there, aren't you? <laughs> you are in this sport. It's, uh, that's... That's a room full of stuff, let me tell you. <laughs> Impressive. He's probably got a bunch of watches as well, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he could probably s open a store. <laughs> Down it goes, another 10 for Galantine. <laughs> He's Can laughing he at us? that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, middle. This is so great to watch. It's like what you can do, I can do better. Unbelievable. <laughs> One after another. Man. So Hansen with a 1-4-9 against Pagnoni in the quarterfinals is the top scorer so far today. Um, only dropping a point in that match. Gellington's highest score, 147 in that last round against oh. Anderson. The first nine of the match, just a little high there. Yeah. 60-59, it's good stuff. Thank you. 
Stefan's just a little more serious on this match than the last one. He, you know, he was always laughing and joking as he walked back and looked so easy right now, though he is focused. You know, and Brayden's just, yeah, having a good time. He's trying he to relax can, himself. Exactly. He? Yep. He's probably trying to relax his dad a little bit as well. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Like I said, it's hard to watch. So yeah. You just wish you could take control. Yeah. And he's still thinking, you know, still thinking about it a little bit. But right here is when it leaves his mind. Now yeah. he's totally forgot. You can see it in his body too, yep. can't you? Just that little pace forward. And he's entered an entirely different zone, hasn't yep. he? Point behind. That won't worry him at this stage, no, no, not if he keeps sending those kind of shots down. Yeah. Everything in the tent so far yeah. for Hansen. And the, the rhythm that these guys are shooting at, the, the pace is just like, just letting it go. This is a match. Mm. Steps away almost before the arrow was away there. Mm. Still a 10. They stay perfect. Oh, look at that. Yeah, a little bit of dust. You saw He's that human. Little, the quick bobble of his arm and the release broke right at that time and off the arrow went. Yeah, you can see. Yeah. Just, he had a just, shot like that in the in the previous round that he rescued, almost bent the arrow around the corner to still yeah. stay in the ten, didn't he, Hanson? It's like a golf shot almost, but yep. But uh, it didn't work out for him so well that time. No, and, and again, that's just the timing of the wind. You know, sometimes you draw back and the wind is calm, and sometimes you draw back and it's it's it bites you. So this is a turning point, uh, potentially, in the match for Hansen. He doesn't Could have, have too many bad shots. And no. What he comes back with now will be really, really important for yeah. himself and also for Galantine to take notice mm -hmm. of whether mm -hmm. there's a there's a little gap there or or whether he's back on form. Yeah, and here, if, you know, if Braden can get to his shot, again, just that aggressive, quick shot, um, We'll see if he can take advantage of it, but that was a nice shot. Let's see, Venstam. Super. It's heavyweight stuff. These guys are just going and going and going. Yeah. Look at that. And you see the rhythm. Anybody who's watching and is aspires to become a champion you just watch the rhythm of these guys and the confidence they're just they're shooting their shot right now that is what you're seeing is they're just they're not overly concerned about anything and they're just literally trying to execute a great shot it's fun to watch Hansen with a nine so Galantin a 10 will give him a <laughs> two-point advantage and again just he knew it and he just turned around and was like yep that's in the middle um, phenomenal group well, that um, is interesting. I mean, it's not that big of a gap, but pressure is on here for sure. To well, three X's for yeah. Galantin with his uh, last three arrows, five with his last six. Mm -hmm. There's momentum there, isn't there? there Whereas yep. Hansen, an eight with, in one of his last ends, a nine in this, yep. in this last one, there's a, there's a little stutter there, isn't there? And, exactly. Uh, gosh, this could be three arrows between Braden, Galantin, and uh, mm -hmm. another world title. Yep. Braden knows he's got an arrow to play with, and that's pretty powerful when you only have three to go. And Stefan knows that he really has to put three of them in the middle here. Yep. Yeah, that's a good start. Yeah. 
<laughs> you just look at his face, he's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> That's just amazing. That's it. That's just a line, but he's know. mashed that target face up so much you can't yeah, I don't call know. that really. Yeah, nothing, nothing unsecure about that one. No. Yeah. So you're going to, if he puts this next one on the 10, you're going to hear a loud scream. So a nine for Hansen and eight to win. <laughs> Look at that. He's done it. What a result yeah. for one of the most decorated archers of all time. This is his sixth World Cup final appearance. He's taken a medal in every single one. He was the champion five years ago in Tokyo, and now he's back on top again. Braden Gelentin is the 2017 Hyundai Archery World Cup champion. Outstanding. Congratulations, Braden. Yeah, well done. That's. That's something else, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that's, that's a great performance. That's a great performance. It really was. It really was. And just as we saw with Lopez this morning, just a, just a hint of a release now, yeah. just that, that, that emotion coming back now to mm -hmm. him. He's kept yeah. it pent up inside yeah. in order to concentrate, but... And it just released, you know, and like, as, as, again, we saw Steve was up there yeah, cheering, and the team was coming down to... Uh, to meet him after he walks off to congratulate him. So it's great. Credit, credit score. where it's due as, as well, Rod. 148, you were saying, was a, was a winning score. And, and there, it, there it goes. Phenomenal shooting. That was fun. Yeah, and a pleasure to watch and a, and a, really a great thing to, to commentate on. And you won't mm -hmm. see too many better compound individual archery finals no. than that. No, two guys so evenly matched and gosh, great champions. Yeah, I mean, Hansen, Hansen will be shaking his head at a couple of the loose shots that uh, he had in that match, and that was really the difference. Mm -hmm. But at 22, he's got many more years <laughs> ahead of him to chalk up the same kind of, uh, of international record that, that Galantino has, has won hard over many, many years. Yeah, absolutely. He's, he's not going away, and he's going to... He's going to win so many medals that um, he too will be able to open up a uh, watch shop pretty soon. <laughs> what a great venue. Yeah, you kind of fancy that some of those statues could just get up and walk down the stairs and come and uh, shake you firmly by the hand, don't you? That's it. Uh, yeah. It's, what, it is a really amazing venue. It is. The Stadio del Marmi here, right in the centre of Rome, next door to the football stadium where Lazio and Roma share their home matches, and all the passion of the Italian capital city coming out on the field of play here with some fantastic matches here this morning and this afternoon yeah we get more to tomorrow yeah <laughs> it'll be outstanding tomorrow well you're, you're very welcome back in my shop tomorrow if you want to <laughs> want to come and share some of that but uh, i know you've got other duties to perform but uh, it's yeah, it's been something else and uh, i've enjoyed it seeing that shot again uh, of the two of them uh, embracing on the line yeah the, like i said they shoot against each other so often, both in, you know, Stefan comes to the States a lot, shoots a lot of our events, and, and again, they're all friends. You know, everybody here is a friend. Um, they all get along, and it, it's just a, just a great sport. So we'll have the compound men's individual ceremony to, to follow very, very shortly. But first, we'll have the Longines Prize for Precision. And no surprise. With his <laughs> mixed team title won earlier today, and also the second place that he's just earned. Stefan Hansen there will claim the watch for being the most accurate archer and the highest number of tens in the competition. 
Luca Ricciardi there in the blue jacket, the Longines Italia car manager, will present the watch. Congratulations to Stefan Hansen. Yeah, he's consistent, always, always in it. well-deserved, such an accurate shooter yeah. over the course of the competition. Four international stages, starting in Shanghai in May. A long old run mm -hmm. from Antalya through Salt Lake City and Berlin to here in Rome. Well, usually this is the time of the year now, this event is over for those guys. They can kind of relax a little bit before indoor season really gets going, but they can't Not this now, time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, world championships are coming, so they will get right back at it and start working real hard because there's a world championship to be claimed. And all of these archers, you'll see, again, if you watch the world championships, in Mexico, and there'll be some archers now using this as a platform to move on to, to great things in the World Championships. And there'll be one or two, Sonichsen perhaps, in the women's competition, who we'll want to emerge from something from uh, mm -hmm. from Mexico, having been disappointed here in, uh, in Rome, certainly in the individual competition. Yeah, for quite a few of them. I mean, they, they take this and use it as their their drive over the next few weeks of practice to just make sure that they are ready for the World Championship to, I guess you'd say revenge, right? Well, um, but you that's could what do. it is. You could do. Yeah. So the, the US team, you'll be you'll be heading home pretty swiftly after this and then trying yes. to settle before the before the World Champs? Correct, yeah. And do you have a kind of training camp ready in, in Mexico to take them to or? Uh, or? No, the, uh, to be honest, um, They'll uh, they'll be practicing at home again. It's not that long of a flight for us, so um, they'll uh, they'll be ready to go. I, I expect good things from them. Um, we got a very talented team uh, going there, and uh, it's I think I think they're going to have a great time, and we're going to see some really good results from it. But they're getting harder and harder. The the competition is so good and, and the talent level throughout the world is just spectacular. So it truly can be anybody's game, uh, anybody that makes it there. Um, that's why when you see these guys consistently in these finals and winning these medals, it's that much more impressive. So the presentation ceremony for the compound men's individual category. Roberto Frabicini, the Italian Olympic Committee Secretary General, will present the checks and the trophies. And the gift and the watch for the winner will be presented by Fitarco First Vice President Paolo Portique. I see Steve's first place check, so he does have money now for dinner. He can't use that excuse on me tonight. <laughs> it's tough to get a check that size over the counter, <laughs> I would have thought. Um, yeah, uh, he, he could give it to me. And You'll I'll, take care of it, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll take care of it. Yeah. <laughs> Third place. <laughs> for Steve Anderson, 5,000 Swiss francs. That'll buy a lot of hamburgers. Yeah, yeah, maybe a steak too. 
Why not? <laughs> I mean, you know. Good bottle of wine. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't know this yet, but I'll make sure I tell him immediately when we're down here. Well, if you uh, just want to tip me off where you're going for dinner this evening, I'll, uh, you know, if there's an extra seat at the table, that'd be, uh, that'd be very jolly. <laughs> yeah. Stefan Hansen, world number one, but second best here today. Gave as good as he had, I think. I don't think he left anything out there, really, but just not yeah. quite enough this time, and that's how it goes sometimes. It is. Second place, 10,000 Swiss francs. And he shot well here the whole time. He should be proud. Um, I know he's going to be disappointed, but he should be really proud. And a, such a great champion. And, and again, number one ranked. It's amazing and to be number one ranked. Gold medal representing the United States of America. So, uh, winner and World Cup Pelican champion for a second time. Took the title in Tokyo in 2012, <laughs> and he's taking it again here in Rome. Yes. An emotional win for Braden Gallantin. 20,000 Swiss francs in his back pocket. And you know what? If Steve is smart, we might be able to actually convince him to buy the name. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, 20,000 Swiss francs. I mean, that would probably buy you an upgrade. <laughs> To business, wouldn't it, on the way home? Um, yeah, but he, he won't do that for us. <laughs> He'll just laugh at us back in coach. And it's not always about the money, of no, course. It isn't. You know, he's got his hands on that no. wonderful World Cup trophy that so many others have held in the past. Yeah. And he is one of the greats, Braden Gillington. Yeah. That's for sure. You know what a lot of this is, is um, what's going to happen here shortly is the, when, when you get the uh, country's national anthem that is some powerful stuff yeah i know i've been on that podium but this moment right here all the checks and everything are great and trust me he's gonna love all that but this is it i gotta stand for this one A marvelous and a famous victory for Braden Gellantin of the USA. Congratulations to him and to all the archers who made it through to these finals, particularly these three, but especially our World Cup champion. What a day we've had here in the Estadio dei Marmi in Rome. Our compound 2017 Hyundai Archery World Cup champions have been crowned in the mixed team event. Denmark confirmed their dominance and took the title for a third year in a row. In the women's individual event, an emotional Sara Lopez made it three World Cup wins in four appearances. And in the men's individual event, you've just seen Braden Gelentine end a five-year wait for a second World Cup title. Tomorrow, we'll do it all again with the recurve archers, including athletes from the USA, France, Korea, and the host nation, Italy. Thank you for joining Rod Menzer and me this afternoon. Rod, thank you, sir. It's been a pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you to viewers watching online across the world at worldarchery.org and on the Olympic Channel, too. Remember to follow at World Archery on Twitter for all the latest stories and updates. You've been watching live coverage of the 2017 Hyundai Archery World Cup Finals in Rome. We're back on the air tomorrow at 11 a.m. local time.
for the recurve event. Jo join us then if you can. From now, for me, it's bye bye. La disciplina olimpica. Ci rivediamo qui allo stadio dei Marmi domattina alle 11 per la finale della Coppa del Mondo Hyundai Proma 2017. Hello and welcome to Archery World Cup Stage 3. We're in beautiful Antalya, Turkey. A hot, sunny day out here, and we are here for the team final qualification tournament for this year's Summer Olympics in Rio. I'm Steve Anderson from the USA with Pitt Klein from Luxembourg. We'll be bringing you the action here today. Pitt, what do you think about this? We've got 16 teams in men, 16 teams in women, all vying for top three spots to, to qualify a full roster of three athletes to the Rio Olympic Games. I'm quite sure it will be really interesting matches. The weather is really good. There is really no wind, or quite no wind, and I think the scores will be really, really high. Yeah, I have to imagine that uh, the pressure is going to be up, but at the same time, often this brings out the best performances for everyone involved. And as you stated, uh, the wind is a bit down from this morning, the temperature is a bit up, and we're looking forward to a lot of action. If you saw the scores of the qualification, you had to shoot an average of 652 points to be in the cut in the 16 first teams to shoot now the finals for the quota places, which is really high. That is very high performance. And that's for the men's side, correct? That's for the men's side, exactly. Interesting. So we're looking at the French team here. The first match we'll be showing here live is between the French and the team from Kazakhstan. French team, Jean-Charles Valadant. Lucas Daniel and Pierre Plehon, and the team from Kazakhstan made up of Denis Gankin, Obek Saraiv, and Ilfat Abdulin. And what we're looking at here is uh, the first of three practice ins that the teams will be taking. Uh, we are starting our first matches here, so uh, three practice ins followed by a five point set system play with up to five ends, correct? No, four, four ends. Yes, correct. when you have five points, you are winning this final. If it's 4-4, four, four, you have a tie score, you have to shoot a shoot-off. Correct. So from here, teams will shoot the set system play. We're in the round of 16, moving on to the round of 8. And from there to the round of 4, and those four teams will be competing for three individual or three Olympic quota spots. Exactly. And if there's someone, so some country taking a spot in team who has already a single spot, this spot will be shot tomorrow in individual shooting. Correct. So this all started last year at the 2015 World Championships in Copenhagen, Denmark. Teams placing in the top eight there auto-qualified a full roster of three athletes to the Olympic Games. 
from there we had individual allocations, which was done based off of individual performances in Copenhagen. Uh, so some teams, uh, for example, the USA women, they have one woman qualified. However, That's today good. they have an opportunity to qualify the full team of three. Mm -hmm. uh, should that happen, tomorrow's individual qualifier will open up one more spot. Exactly. So currently, you can correct me if I'm wrong, there are three positions three to be spots, had tomorrow. Yes. Three individual positions. Uh, it could be as many as six. Exactly. And again, we are here. This is another practice round for these teams. Uh, they will do this practice round and one more, and then we will be live with head-to-head -head scoring. In the World Archery team format, uh, the teams consist of three archers. Each will shoot two arrows per end for a total of six arrows for an end score. Uh, the, the set system scoring is awarded to the team with the much like tennis, the team with the higher score per end will take the set with two points. Uh, should the set it, the end be tied, each team will be awarded one point. And uh, as Pitt mentioned, they will compete to four. And if it is four four, they will move on to a one arrow shoot off. So everyone will shoot one arrow. If there still is the same score, the judges will look at the closest area to the center to call who is the winner of the match. Correct. So each each archer shooting one arrow, possible score of 30. Uh, should the teams remain tied after those one arrow shoot offs, closest arrow to center will take the win. Uh, getting a good look here at Jean-Charles Valadant, uh, one of the top shooters from France and one of the top shooters in the world historically. He's had some some big moments in his career and looking to add an opportunity to uh, compete in Rio 2016 to that list. They still haven't got any place for Rio, so no singles for no team sport as you see. But for example, Jean-Charles Valadant had a really great competition in Nottingham, the European Championships this year. It's three weeks ago he became gold medalist, but unfortunately he lost in the 16th final when I remember the quota tournament. Correct. So uh, the European Championships also featured the Continental Qualifier individual quota tournament for the Olympic Games. There's a lot of there's a lot of different ways to qualify. <laughs> it gets kind of confusing here. Uh, you know, if you head to archery.org, they have a great explanation. Olympic Qualifying 101 is a great article there on the website, right on the homepage today. But uh, as we mentioned, or as Pitt mentioned, uh, Jean Charles won the European Championships. However, they had a separate day of individual quota qualification for the Olympic Games. And Jean Charles was ranked number one there, but did not advance. And uh, France has still yet to earn even one spot. For the Olympic Games, uh, the, the historic, historic team within archery, a historic nation, and uh, we could be 
absent of them in <laughs> Rio. You have those continental quota tournaments for America, which was shot in Medellin on the World Cup. Correct. Uh, you have it for Europe, uh, which was shot on European Championships. Then you have it for Asia, for Africa, and for Oceania. Oceania. Yes. Yep. That is correct. And each, uh, this, as we mentioned, this is all the qu continental qualifiers are done. This is the last chance team qualifier and the last chance individual quota as well. So France will be hoping to get it done today and not have to send anyone to shoot tomorrow. Uh, same with Kazakhstan, I imagine. So they stand in the way. Uh, France ranked in this tournament 10th place overall as a team with 1,963 points. Their opponents from Kazakhstan actually ranked ahead of them by 16 points, 1,979, earning them a 7th place ranking. So France fighting for up from the bottom of the bracket. Uh, the winner of this will face the winner of Canada and Mexico. Last information about the Continental Quota Tournament. It was always shot for three spots there. Three spots at the European Championships for individuals. As on every Continental Quota competition. Correct. And we saw, uh, I believe, Patrick Houston, Houston won that on yes. the men's side. Yeah, the, uh, the very eccentric archer from GBR. No, he didn't win it. He came third. He was third. There was the Turkish Kazos Mete with 16 years who won that competition. And uh, did we have a Ukrainian in second place? No, uh, Victor Rubin was shooting on the World Championships, his spot. Ah. I don't remember who it was. We need to have that those notes handy for us, huh? <laughs> so one more practice end here, and then we will be underway with scoring rounds. As you see, the French team got a better group now than the first set. Yeah, they are a little bit tighter than they were to begin. Uh, first set was was pretty widespread. I mean, they were fighting exactly. the wind a little bit and, and uh, mm -hmm. figuring that out, figuring out the field. Um, now, it is important to note that the men's field is on the the men's competition is is being held on the other side of the field from where we are holding these TV matches. There's one one match being broadcast live on TV. Uh, if it's a men's match, they're being brought cl clear across the field, which can lead to dramatically different reactions from the wind. Yes, because there are like uh, 40 targets between. Correct. So the left side of the field is uh, well, the field is surrounded by trees. Uh, the left side seems to be a little bit more protected than the right side due to the, the swirling of the wind and 
Uh, there's also a, a stadium over there to help. So, again, that was the final arrows of practice, and now we are about to go live head-to-head. -head. Uh, just heading down to pull the arrows now. Uh, upon return, it will be for score and for all the marbles, as they say. <laughs> can work with that but with this one you're almost better off trying to just maintain a, a an arrow shot and executed uh with an aim in the in middle. middle yeah yes. and then see where it flies and then maybe maybe make an adjustment from there if need be for sure but you can you can make a shot one time uh, have your teammates shoot two more and then step up and have a completely different result from the wind on your second arrow so it's it's a bit hard to gauge uh but these are the best archers in the world. They tend to figure it out pretty quickly. Should be like that. Yes. So we are going to start this match now with Kazakhstan on target 63 and France on target 64. So the team from Kazakhstan in the white and the French team in the blues. Again, from Kazakhstan, we have Denis Gankin, Obek Sadayev, and Ilfat Abdelin. From France, Jean-Charles Valadon, Lucas Daniel, and Pierre Blihon. see uh, our, our coach from France <laughs> dusting off Pierre Plahon a little bit. It is it is warm out there. It is really hot. And here we go. There is the buzzer. We are underway for the final team qualification tournament for the Rio 2016 games. Again, I am Steve Anderson here with Pitt Klein from Luxembourg. And our first match ahead of us is France and Kazakhstan. And here are the first arrows of that match. Looks like we have a nine for each team there. <coughs> nine for Kazakhstan. Ten for France. Perfect. Dead center. Perfect shot. And being as this isn't considered a finals match, we do have both teams shooting at the same time. A uh, normal finals match will be alternate clock, and each team would shoot three errors. Yes. So. The one who is ranked first, or who has a better ranking position than the other team will shoot first. They can decide if they want to shoot first or not. Correct, yeah. But in this situation, uh, we are not in a, a finals match, so they shoot congruently. Uh, both teams shoot at the same time. We'll, we will do our best to bring you the uh, arrows as they happen, but we may be a little behind in reporting those scores. So right now, four arrows in. France with two tens and a nine. And Kazakhstan trailing by two, 38-36. And again, that's, a that's, nice yep. shot. Two X's for Pierre Plion. And a nine there for Kazakhstan. So a, a seven will draw the end, and an eight will win. Jean-Charles Valadant stepping up, the European champion. And there's a good nine, so France takes the first set. 2-0 will be the set total. And again, can you uh, explain to us how the set system works so that the, the viewers can understand who so will win and how? France will have two points lead in set system now. They shot a set of 57 points, Kazakhstan of 55. If there would be a draw now, um, every team would get one set point. If one team has five set points, they win the match. If there is at the end a draw of four to four, 
set points, there will be a, a one single error shoot off. So every team member will shoot one error. If there is still the same score, like for example 30 to 30, the judges will look at the errors and the error which is the closest to the center will bring the win to this team. And those, uh, those team shoot-offs are always very exciting because, as you mentioned, that, that one arrow closest to center always has ramifications, and, but it does, the, the one arrow doesn't always decide. You know, unlike an individual shoot-off, you, you get to have a few arrows to make up that total. I saw already several times that they had to look at the second closest arrow to the center because the, f the, first, the, the first arrow was the same. Same distance from the center of the target. So while we're between ends, we will give a rundown of the teams that have already qualified a full quota, three athletes each. Uh, this is on the men's side, Australia, Brazil, People's Republic of China, Spain, Italy, Korea, Netherlands, Chinese Taipei, and the USA. Uh, yet to qualify, but competing here today on the men's side of the bracket, we have India versus Turkey, Ukraine versus Malaysia, Finland versus India, Indonesia, Belarus versus Russia, Germany versus Slovenia, Great Britain versus Japan, Kazakhstan versus France, and Canada versus Mexico. And again, here we are in our first match of the day that we will be previewing here on, our, on World Archery TV. We have France and Kazakhstan. Uh, France with a 2-0 set point lead going into the second end. And it looks like we've got the wind picking up, getting some, uh, some violent movement here through the tent, throwing some papers around. Could make it interesting for the archers. <laughs> Hope you're not picking up too much of that through our microphones. If it would be an alternate match now, it would be Kazakhstan to start the three first areas. Correct, yes. In the, in the finals matches, Gold where they medal are shot, matches. alternate shot, um, the team who is trailing shoots the first three arrows. But in this situation, uh, they will shoot at the same time. First arrows in the target. Looks like we have a nine for France and an eight for Kazakhstan. You heard uh, Lucas Daniel saying now to the teammates where he was aiming to give like a small tip where they can improve the next arrow to have maybe a better value than nine. Correct. So he gives a reference saying, you know, I might have aimed uh, left side of the red and my arrow impacted right side of the yellow, so maybe you need to aim even a little bit outside of that it's it, just a reference point that they can then use to to uh, better their aim to account for the wind exactly and after four arrows france will have a one point lead 32 to 31 uh, scores are definitely down. That's a big 10 right there. That's a good 10, yeah, yes. 10 in this, uh, in this wind is is definitely a bonus. And oh. it, yep, as you can see, France with the 6. But it's not over yet. Nope. Anything can happen with any one arrow. Didn't like that As one. you see, this was a 7. So a 10 will tie. And 20 final seconds arrow, left. Yep. 
Jean-Charles Valadant with a lot of time left, 15 seconds on the clock. Uh, these recurve archers tend to get arrows off pretty quickly. They don't need to have a lot of time, so he's going to wait on the wind and no. uh, almost made a count. A nine, Kazakhstan will take that set. Uh, we will be in a 2-2 two -two deadlock here, moving into the third end. Let's watch it. the other matches. There is India against Turkey, where Turkey has a two-point lead. Ukraine-Malaysia is a 2-2 tie. Indonesia leads 4-0 to Finland. Belarus has a two-point advantage against Russia. Germany and Slovenia, we are still waiting for the score. As well as for Great Britain and Japan. Kazakhstan and France is a 2-2 tie and Canada is leading four points against Mexico. So we could have some matches decided here. Uh, one more end to go, essentially. Uh, well, we could have two more ends, but one more end and we will see some teams whose dreams are dashed and some who still live on. Uh, that team from Canada, I know with Crispin Duenas, Hamilton Gwynn, and Brandon Jureb, they will certainly be looking to advance a full team. Currently only have one athlete qualified for Rio. I believe that is Crispin. And the same for Mexico, Correct. which are the opponents. And here we go with the third end. Looks like they're going to have uh, Lucas Daniel followed by Pierre Flahon, followed by Jean-Charles Valadon. That's the order they've gone with the whole time. Is that correct? You'll occasionally see some teams switch in order, maybe put the strongest shooter first and then last. Yes. Um, and they may do that so they can give a good bearing on what the wind is doing. Uh, tend, you tend to want to have your, your strongest shooter last just because in a, in a pressure yeah. situation, they tend to come through. Exactly. At least the one you can shoot under pressure still good areas. Correct. And Kazakhstan with a 9 looked very close to the 10 line. We may have that changed eventually to a 10 uh, once the judges get a good look at it. France with an 8 to lead off that set or that end. Uh, another 8 there. The wind was coming from the left before, so maybe they have to correct the side. A little overcompensated, yes. yes. So 26 with the first three arrows for Kazakhstan. 
Uh, France with the opportunity to tie it here. Jean Charles. And he, he tied it. Yes, he gets it. Really strong shot with it. Kazakhstan with another nine, moving them to 35 points after four arrows. And Daniel Lucas with an arrow out in the five ring. He's not going to love that one. Not the arrow you want to shoot in a match. No. Dead Strong center. Eggs. Yes, Pierre's had a few of those this, uh, this match. And it looks like a 53 for Kazakhstan will close out that end. Uh, Jean-Charles with the final arrow for France still to be shot, but it will be a moot point. Uh, Kazakhstan is going to take the lead, move to four set points to two. So if France still wants to win this match, they have to go in a shoot-off. Correct. They will need to win the next end, take two set points, and move to the team shoot-off, three arrows total. Okay, we have some scores coming in now from the women's side of the field. Uh, looks like Germany has a 4-2 lead over Estonia. Great Britain after two ends, 4-0 over Spain. Their third end has not yet been reported. Uh, Ukraine 4-0 over Denmark again after two ends. Mongolia 4-0 over USA. That is not good for the Team USA's hopes. Um, Chinese Taipei with a 4-2 lead over Indonesia. Poland 4-2 over France. Kazakhstan, the women's Kazakhstan team, 4-2 over the host nation of Turkey. And Italy, the lone team to secure advancement into the next round with a 5-1 victory over the nation of Iran. On the men's side, we have Germany winning the match against Slovenia 5-1. And we have Canada winning against Mexico 6-0. So some matches decided here. Uh, entering into the fourth end, we could see our live match, France versus Kazakhstan, decided as well. Kazakhstan leading four to two. Uh, all they need to do is draw this end, and they will draw take the, the, the five-three victory. Uh, should the French side prevail on this end, they will then move to the shoot-off end, three arrows each team. And we'll hope to see some fireworks out of that. Start of the fourth end.
Solid nine to start for Kazakhstan. He didn't look happy at that shot. Nope. And Lucas Daniel with an eight. Kazakhstan with the one point lead after one. And there's another nine for Kazakhstan. So 10 to tie for France. Pierre Plahon. Yeah, looks like he has a 10. We're not showing it up on screen yet. Correct. 10, so 18-18 tie at the moment going into the third arrow. Uh, the Kazakhstan put up a nine. nine. Solid Charles. nine for John Charles. And the Kazakhs are they're in the nine ring. They're just surrounding that ten ring. They could uh, looks like they could really get dangerous if they start to find their stride and get get those arrows inside that ten ring. But at the moment, after four arrows, we are still deadlocked. And France needs to find a way to gain an advantage. They need a big ten right here. Ten would be good for them. Nine points. He was shaking a lot on that arrow. Correct, yeah. Pierre's had some, some big shots this match, and that'll help him. There's an eight, so nine, nine. nine to win the, the, the set. And going and bring bring them to, to a shoot, shoot off. off. European like champion, shot. nine. Good. Did what they needed to do there. So, ladies and gentlemen, we will have already on the first match a shoot-off. Let's see what it will bring. Correct. John Charles with the, the big arrow there. It was a nine, but it was enough. Uh, Kazakhs were, were in the nine ring the whole time. The final arrow there into the eight opened the door for the Frenchman. And uh, John Charles came through. Had some, some big shots from Pierre. He's pretty much uh, kept everything within the nine ring. He's had three or four dead center ten so yes shooting strong so far uh, the wind got him on a few and you know had some of those that one arrow out in the sixth ring and, and and that happens when the wind picks up you know looking across the board at some scores on the women's side uh, you know Spain had an end of just 32 points uh, the US team had an end of only 37 points there was a number of ends that that uh, were in the 30s there so scores were relatively low uh, but that's why we play the set system here on the recurve side. Keeps the matches exciting. Um, doesn't let that one that one bad arrow ruin everything. Now, even if you have a miss, for example, in one set, you can still win your match. Correct. Compared to the compound side, if you shoot one bad arrow, you're nearly lost. Correct. Yeah, the compound side is a, a game of don't miss, whereas the, the recurve side is a game that rewards you for your, your good shots. So it's it's a bit of a different thing. I mean, they they are quite different in the way the the uh, competition actually plays out, mm -hmm. um, and and thus the difference for the two different scoring systems and the the two different ways of determining a victor. Germany is coming back quite fast, so it looks like they will have a shoot off, but not sure. Oh no, they had a practice in. Huh? You have the women's scores. I have the women's scores. Uh, nothing has come through just yet. As soon as we have those, we will feed them back to you. And here they are. Looks like Germany, on this is on the women's side, Germany is now in a deadlock with Estonia, 4-4. Great Britain takes the win over Spain, 6-0. Ukraine 6-0 over Denmark. Mongolia and USA going into a shoot-off at 4-4. Chinese Taipei over Indonesia 6-2. Poland over France 6-2. Kazakhstan and Turkey is yet to see the, the score come in, and we had already reported Italy had won the match versus Iran. And they are going to pin up new targets. They always want to have fresh targets for scoring in a shoot-off situation. Uh, whereas Pitt mentioned, should the teams tie here in the shoot-off, they will measure to the closest arrow to center, and that will be the deciding factor. Thus the need for new target faces. They want to make sure they can get the most accurate measurement to the center. Exactly. 
Watching at the results from the men's side, we have three shootoffs India against Turkey, Ukraine against Malaysia, and Kazakhstan against France. Teams who were winning already is Indonesia against Finland 6-2, Great Britain against Japan 6-2 as well, and Canada against Mexico 6-0. Oh, and Germany against Slovenia 5-1. So, with some victors decided, uh, unfortunately that means there's some people out here who, you know, dreams are dashed. They've been training for this for four years or more, and this was their, their final opportunity to put a full team together. Uh, still, a, still a chance at earning an individual slot tomorrow, but, um, you know, anyone who's looking to compete at the Olympics likely wants to do so with a full team. Uh, number one gives you another shot at a medal. And number two, it probably uh, sends you there with a little more comfortability. You're, you're accustomed to traveling with the people who you normally travel with. And, and uh, there will be some athletes attending individually. And, uh, yes. Some of those shooting today, we'll have to hope that's them. <laughs> the French crowd has a lot of supporters here. Yeah. The women's team was joining them now. And it looks like, was it? Two eights for Two them. eights. Eight yes. for each team. Uh, currently, it looked like Kazakhstan's eight was a little closer. So, so far, they have the tiebreaker there. And one minute on the clock for this. So, an average of 20 seconds for each archer. Uh, as we mentioned before, that's that's a good time for, for recurves. They can move through that pretty quickly and have plenty of time on the clock to do so. So, after two arrows, let's see if we can get the results to pop up here. So we have a looks like France was winning. Yep, it looks like we have a win for France, and they are celebrating us. So it looked like that first arrow for Kazakhstan may have actually touched the nine ring. We'll see if we can get a, a close up on the French target. Anyway, France has more than uh, 25 points. We don't see it yet. Yeah, they're definitely convinced that they got the win there. So it looks like France will be moving on. Uh, have another opportunity to qualify to that full team. They will go to the fourth final and they will be facing shooting against Canada. Canada. And we should have results from the women's side of the field available here in just a minute. We'll reloads, relay those back to you as quickly as possible. Uh, if you're looking to follow along, the action can be followed at inseo.net. That's I-A-N-S-E-O dot net. Uh, live results are updated there. Again, we will feature one match, and there will be a whole host of others going on. Uh, moving to the quarterfinals, so eight teams on each side. There are eight women, eight men, and they will be all looking, again, to advance to at least the top three. Top three will qualify the full team. Uh, so you win, you win three matches and you're in. You, you win two and lose one, you've still got a shot, but that bronze match here will be the hardest. There will be a lot of pressure there. Because That'll you be know you are so close and... Correct. Still can lose it. Yeah, the, I mean, winning the gold match here is irrelevant. Um, really, this is an interesting situation because you're not so much, you know, I mean, you're shooting against an opponent, but the, the goal is much different. Rather than winning, your goal is simply qualifying. You know, this is, this is just a, a, a small step to... If you're first or second, you don't care at that correct. moment. Correct, yes. It's, it's the one time where... Gold and silver is irrelevant, but bronze is, is so much more cherished. The local team, Turkey, was losing in a shootoff 26 to 24, so India was 
Qualif was going through this match and going to shoot in the fourth final. Still waiting for the match Ukraine and Malaysia. And still waiting for some scores on the women's side to come in. And we, uh, we still don't have results in, but our, uh, our new in-the-field colleague, Braden Galantine, uh, just rushed down here to report that the USA women won their shoot-off and will move on. So it looks like they will be facing Ukraine here in the quarterfinals. They need that one more win. Uh, currently, only one athlete qualified for the games from the USA, that being Mackenzie Brown. And uh, I'm, I'm being told now we are going to bring that match over here. We're going to feature it, it live, and we're going to have Ukraine and USA women. Okay, and ahead of our featured match here, USA versus Ukraine on the women's side, uh, we'll run through the scores from the first round, starting with Estonia with a comeback win over the team from Germany. They were trailing 4-0, came back to tie it, and ended up winning. That's a tough one for Germany. They have three great archers, three archers who realistically could compete for an individual medal at the Olympics. Yes, uh, but now they keep the individual place they have got. Correct. Yeah, they have in one Copenhagen. individual place, but uh, they will not qualify a full team. Uh, Great Britain over Spain, Ukraine over Denmark, USA over Mongolia, Chinese Taipei over Indonesia, Poland over France, Kazakhstan over Turkey, and Italy over Iran. So here we go. First arrows of the quarterfinals, and we're looking at USA versus Ukraine. Let's see if we can't get you some scores up on the board here. And this is USA Archer Hyun Park. Uh, she is uh, originally from Korea, now a citizen of the U.S. 
And that one looked a little tall in the seven ring. So Ukraine 18, USA 16 after two arrows. Looks like eight points. And it looks like Katuna with a, they're calling it a nine. There's a nine for Ukraine. And the lone Olympic qualifier, Mackenzie Brown, with a nine. Anastasia Pavlova shooting. There's an eight. So door is open, Hyun Park. See if she can respond here. And that's a six. It's not going to get it done. Ukraine with the three point lead with one arrow remaining. And that nine will, will seal the deal. They'll take the first two set points. 2-0 Ukraine. It's a good shot by Katuna, which, again, it's a moot point, but at the same time, you want to you wanna use that as an as a indicator. Practice shot. arrow. Yeah, it is essentially a practice arrow. Yeah, pressure's off. You can just take the shot to try to get a gauge on what the wind is doing and, and if you're sighted in well or not. And Katuna with a good 10 there to close, so. And again, we will try to bring you scores just as soon as we can get them updated from the info system. Uh, those of you wanting to follow along to the complete field, inseo.net, I-A-N-S-E-O.net, and you can find the results there. Again, we are watching the team final qualification tournament for the Rio 2016 games. Hey, and there we are on screen. They got to warn us when they're about to do that. <laughs> Why don't you give us an update on the men's side of the field if you have that available? Not yet. Nothing yet? I think they have so many traffic in, for the moment on INCO that it's really little, snow. A little slowed down. Do you have the winners from the first round? Yes. Uh, in the fourth final, uh, will India face Malaysia? So India won in a shoot-off and Malaysia won in a shoot-off. Indonesia against Russia. Germany against Great Britain and uh, France against Canada. So the GBR team I know had a, a good showing in in uh, European championships across the board really. They, they had uh, some successful results for men's and women's recurve and compound teams. So I'm sure they're hoping to keep that going here. And first results coming in on the women's side. I uh, still don't have anything from Estonia and Great Britain. Our featured match here, Ukraine 2, USA 0. Uh, Poland leading one of the favorites, Chinese Taipei 2-0. to zero. And Kazakhstan over Italy 2-0. to zero. So again, uh, those are not completely updated yet. Still waiting on Great Britain, Estonia. Uh, we don't have a good view of the field to see if we can't just look down there and give you a score. But we'll give them to you as they come. So here we go again. Second end of USA versus Ukraine.
One point lead for Ukraine. Correct. I think we're seeing the effects of uh, the, the change in field location. So the, these women were previously in the middle of the field. Now they're down here on the end uh, near the trees. I think it's got an effect on on the the arrows and how they were previously sighted in. And they're, they're still trying to find center a little bit. So Ukraine with a nine there, 26 after three. Nice Big 10 there. Yep, Big 10 for Katuna Lorig. Bring them within one. Good smooth shot there for a nine for Ukraine. Now Mackenzie Brown. Dead center. Two nice errors. All even at 35. So Mackenzie, I mean, the pressure is a bit off for her. And there's a seven for Ukraine. So the U.S. is going to have a chance here. Hi, Yoon Park. Uh, the, the, a bit of a newcomer here in the U.S. So looking to get her shooting strong. There's a good nine. So she shot her way onto the team. Uh, should they qualify three, she will go. But you know, she was essentially seventh or eighth after the first trials and then moved her way up over the next two to earn a top three spot. Uh, Katuna, the same thing. She had fallen way off the pace and then had a great run at the last trials event to move into the top three. Uh, an eight there will draw them at 52. So that's not what they were looking for. They picked up a point for each team. Uh, U.S., you know, that's essentially that's a loss. You call that a loss right there. Now, Ukraine, if they win the next to end, they, they will, will win, win the, match. the match. Correct. So USA is in a do-or-die situation. The tie, the tie keeps them alive, but you know, they really need that, that end win to draw things even. So let's watch it. the results from the first end. On the men's side, it was India leading 2-0 against Malaysia. Indonesia takes a two-point lead over Russia, Germany a two-point lead over Great Britain, and France uh, is behind Canada with 32. Okay, first updates from the women coming in. Uh, Estonia, which we didn't have an update from them before, but they have a 4-0 lead over Great Britain. Uh, our featured match here, Ukraine 3, USA 1. Uh, no update yet from either Chinese Taipei in Poland or Kazakhstan, Italy. Uh, Chinese Taipei, one of the traditionally one of the top teams at any competition, and failed to qualify in Copenhagen. And now they're looking to do so here, but after one end, they were down two points yes. to zero. So Chinese Taipei is one of the countries where you always have won in a gold medal match, but you don't talk a lot about this country. Correct. And we will see uh, Tanya Ting in the individual gold medal match, I believe, uh, yes. Sunday, Tony Alti Beach. And they are, after the next update comes through, they are trailing Poland 4-0. Looking on the men's side, there's three draws. There's a draw between India, Malaysia, Indonesia and Russia, and France and Canada. Germany, Germany takes a, a four-point lead against Great Britain. And here we go with N3. Mackenzie Brown leading off for the USA. Oh. 
Ukraine leads with a nine. And the U.S. with a nine as well. Anastasia Pavlova shooting. Good looking shot. Results nine in a points. nine. Hai Yoon Park with a nine. Real smooth looking shot. Dead center axe there for Ukraine. They found the center now. Three point lead for Ukraine. This is what they needed now. And that one looked just off the 10 there. For just Ukraine. out, yes. Hyun Park, 10. Ten Should have a tie ball game. One arrow to go for each team. This one can decide the match. A nine there, so U.S. has the opportunity to take the, the set here and draw the match even at three. Katuna Lorig needs a ten, nine to tie. Nine. Was nine. <laughs> so U.S.A. needs to win the next set to go into a shoot-off. Correct, much Do like we saw with the, the first match with France there. Exactly. Yeah, they're down four to two. Um, can't afford a tie. Uh, tie is a loss in this situation. And with the third end complete, we'll see if we can't bring some updates here. As we saw here in our featured match, Ukraine is leading the USA 4-2. to two. And we are awaiting results from Estonia, Great Britain, Poland, Chinese, Taipei, and Kazakhstan, Italy. The judge, judge is watching at this 9, which is really close to the 10. Yeah, that nine, which can decide, it, it the match. decide the match. That's correct. You still see the nine asterisks. If this is changing now to a ten. I don't believe they got that. I think it's going to remain a deadlock 54-54. Now, the judge, I, I believe, would have signaled a victory yes. had it been changed Normally to Normally, he has to do it. Correct. You see the arrows corrected to a nine, so... We will continue this match. And across the field, Estonia continuing the hot shooting. Uh, the number 16 seed team. They are moving on to the semifinals with a 6-0 victory over Great Britain. Uh, our Poland 4-2 over Chinese Taipei. So Chinese Taipei keeping their hopes alive. And Italy and Kazakhstan tied at three points apiece. Going to the men's side, we have Germany, who won already against Great Britain five runs, so Germany made it already to the semi-final. We have Indonesia leading, leading against Russia 4-2, and India leading against Malaysia also 4-2. France against Canada, uh, a two-point advantage for France.
And we've got some very excited fans back here, both for Ukraine and the U.S., uh, getting very loud, because obviously this is a very critical match for each team. But this is what the judges need. Yes. Need. And here we go with the fourth and possibly deciding end. Veronika Marchenko shooting. Nine points. Nine for Ukraine. And a seven for the U.S. So two points in the hole for the U.S.A. Another nine there for Ukraine. They're continuing. They're very consistent, keeping things uh, in the nine ring. Uh, and there's a seven for the U.S. That could. No, it was an eight. Excuse me, yeah. eight. Yep. Three points uh, could be tough to overcome if Ukraine can continue to put arrows in the nine ring. Nine points also. And looks like it's a, a ten there for Katuna Lorig. So two, two point advantage for Ukraine at the halfway point of the end. Wind picking up a bit there. Kenzie Brown with a nine. And we are deadlocked. 34 points apiece with two arrows to go. So Ukraine was shooting a seven. Correct. Uh, nine for the U.S. And, oh, excuse me, nine for Ukraine. Seven, seven for, for the U.S. US. So you've got to think that Katuna's got to have a ten here. She's got to. She has time left. There are 25 seconds. Correct. She knows that this arrow really has to be perfect now. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on this one arrow. Eight points for, for U.S. Seven wins for Ukraine. And there it is. It's, uh, it's a seven. Six, two. Yep, correct. Seven. So Ukraine will advance. Six points to two. And let's see if we can't get some other results here. We were still waiting on uh, match results from Poland and Chinese Taipei and the match between Kazakhstan and Italy. Those yet to be decided. Estonia, the only team already determined to be through. Again, the Estonians uh, ranked 16th, so they... We're barely able to qualify for this yes. final qualification tournament. Again, I I don't know the total number of teams out here, but first you had to you had to qualify for this 16 team bracket, mm -hmm. and then you have to make your way through the matches, hoping to earn one of those top three positions. And as mentioned before, the level was really high to come to these 16 first teams. I saw this one time. I don't know if you remember, but in Copenhagen. Those who became world champion at the end were also ranked 16th after qualification. Correct. I think it was uh, Ukraine. Ukraine on the women's compound team. Exactly. Yep. And that's a that's a world championship. So I mean, this is this is taking away the teams that have already qualified. So theoretically, the teams that are, you know, even better. But this they is uh, normally they should be because the those who were shooting on uh, on the world championships and got their place there. They are not shooting in this competition now, so the Correct. best teams are already qualified. Correct. Okay, and waiting for results to come in. On the men's side, we have a shoot of India against Malaysia. And we have a winner. Uh, France is winning 6-2 against Canada. France keeping the hopes alive. So we have now a match Germany against France uh, in the semi-final on the men's side. Two of the stronger European teams there. And on the other side, you, I believe you said uh, Malaysia was through? No, Malaysia and India, they have a shoot-off. Shoot-off from Malaysia and India. And still waiting for the result of Indonesia and Russia. And we got some results through Italy over Kazakhstan. 
And Chinese Taipei in a 4-0 deficit draws the match even with Poland. 4-4, they will go to a shoot-off. We also have the winner now in the match, Indonesia against Russia. It's Indonesia who takes this match 5-3. to three. So from uh, some preliminary results coming in, Pitt was happy to step out of the booth and, and grab a spotting scope and spot some arrows for us. It looks like Chinese Taipei has taken the shoot-off victory over Poland, and it appears that Malaysia has advanced over top seed India. And India, typically a very strong team, obviously the top seed here. Uh, to not have a full team in Rio, I think, will be... A bit of a surprise to a lot of people within the archery circles. Yes. They also have one man who is shooting the bronze medal match on Sunday. Against crazy three Korean guys. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the Korean men... No, he's they... shooting in the gold match, the English guy. Is he? So. Yeah, because there was two Koreans shooting in the semi-final against each other, so... One Correct. had to lose. One had to lose, yeah. Yeah, the Korean men uh, put on quite the show, qualifying one, two, and three here on uh, Monday, I believe that was. Yeah, we were shooting qualifications on Monday. No, he's shooting for the bronze match against Kim Bujin.
So, Pitt, we haven't been informed yet who our next featured match is, but I think if you if you look behind the, the shooting line here, we see a crowd from Italy and a crowd from Chinese Taipei gathered. I'm willing to bet that's who we're going to be looking at next. So Chinese Taipei women, uh, again, one of the stronger teams traditionally, uh, led by Tanya Ting, a, a great individual shooter in her own right. They will be up against our team from Italy, uh, another featured match here on the women's side of the bracket. Uh, the other match on the women's side of the bracket, Estonia versus Ukraine, who we just watched in a victory over the U.S. And on the men's side, we will have Germany against France and Malaysia against Indonesia. So the stakes get a little higher here. You win, you're in. You lose, you've still got a chance, but it's a pressure-packed bronze match to qualify for that Olympic spot. Exactly. We have on the men's side actually a European match and an Asian match. Correct. Quite interesting. And in our next featured match, Chinese Taipei, Tanya Ting, Lin Shi Chia, and Lei Qin Ying against the team from Italy, uh, Gwendolina Sartori, Lucila Baori, and Claudia Mandia. Maybe familiar with Massimiliano Mandia. Yep, I know, uh, I know Max really well, and okay. his sister here, Claudia, excellent shooter in her own right. I remember... This year in Nîmes, mm -hmm. uh, the indoor tournament, Max shot a, a 590, yes. which is a great score. For recurve, yes. Yeah, great score for recurve. And his sister came in with a 592. And oh, he said, never shit. never have I felt so bad about a 590. And I lost to my own sister. <laughs> so, yeah, she's uh, definitely a, an accomplished indoor shooter. Uh, obviously uh, a great outdoor shooter here to be competing for Italy, who's a, a very competitive European team, very deep squad. Uh, they have a pretty good stable of archers to choose from, and to make top three for them is, is definitely... Italy always has good archers, as well as recurve and compound archers. Correct. They're a very strong archery nation. 
not later than two days ago or was it yesterday when Italy shoot the new world record in mixed team? Uh, that was yesterday. Two days ago. Oh, the time flies over here. I don't even know. But I believe, <laughs> I, yeah, I, yeah, it was two days ago. You're right. Yep, they had the first perfect score in mixed team ever. And there we are. We've made it on camera again. So. Start of the first end. Tanya Ting starts things off with a 10. Uh, Tanya Ting will be competing for a bronze medal individually on Sunday. Uh, we've got a 9 for Italy. I believe that was Gwendolina Sartori. One point lead for Chinese Taipei. And here is Claudia Mandia. Uh, halfway through. And that is a seven. Uh, Chinese Taipei had a ten there, so uh, essentially a three point advantage for uh, Chinese Taipei over Italy. And that's assuming Italy can shoot a 10 here on their fourth arrow. Uh, nine there for Chinese Taipei. Uh, one arrow to go for them. And chances are they're going to earn these first two points. Eight points for Italy. 15 seconds remaining. Yep, and it's a sealed deal. Chinese Taipei with the 57. That's almost always going to win the set points for you. So this is uh, a practice arrow for Claudia. She puts it in the nine ring. And starting off our semifinals match, Chinese Taipei, two points to Italy, zero. And with a very strong 57 to start the yeah, match. That will always, always be a good score for you. Very rarely will that not earn you the set points. And looking at the, the field of the teams remaining, none of them have yet to shoot over. Uh, Italy had one end where they shot a 58. Other than that, no team shot over a 56. So... Italy capable of putting up a big score as well. Still waiting for the results of the other matches. France has a two-point advantage over Germany. They shot also really strong, 56 to 57. This is for the men's side. And results coming in for our other women's match. Uh, Ukraine with a 57 over Estonia, who had a 50 in that end. And the points from the second match on the men's side. Indonesia takes a two-point lead over Malaysia with 55 to 54.
And back into the action, just about ready to go with end number two of our team final qualification tournament here in the semifinals. Again, the winner of this match will earn their spot in Rio 2016. The loser still has an opportunity, but has a pressure-packed bronze medal match where they have to win to put a full team into the Olympic Games. So winning this match is really important for the countries. Tanya Ting leading it off for Chinese Taipei, Gwendolina Sartori for Italy. And Italy with a nine, Chinese Taipei with an eight. Solid nine there for Li Chin Yang. Draw score for the moment. <coughs> Just the inside of the 10. And Claudia Mandia matches it. Keeps things even at the halfway point through the end. And there's a 9-4 Chinese Taipei. Very close the year from Chinese Taipei, but it looks like an eight. Nine points for Italy. So Italy needs a seven to tie. Eight will take the two set points and draw the match. Claudia Mandia, she's got six seconds on the clock, so gotta get through it quickly. She does, and it's a nine. Good enough to win the set. There you see it's really difficult to shoot always such good scores than Indonesia was doing before. Uh, Chinese Taipei, sorry. Oh, like, yeah, 57. Obviously very difficult to do. That takes everyone firing on all cylinders, making great shots to, to achieve a result like that. Uh, looking back at what Chinese, Chinese Taipei had done before, in the previous match they had 50, 52, 55, and 56. So... They started slowly and, and worked their way up and uh, obviously had a, a great start here in the first end. Uh, but Italy was able to draw even with them there. And we will look to get an update here just as soon as we can. Maybe to give some important information for those who are not watching often or don't know the archery sport, we are shooting on 70 meters and the 10th rank, which is the maximum of points you can get, has the size of a DVD. Yep, 12.2 centimeters across on the 10 ring, so exactly right. It's the size of a DVD, uh, shooting at 70 meters. And you add the wind in and things get very difficult. Getting results from the men's side, where it looks like um, the matches are not so tight than here. Indonesia takes a four-point lead over Malaysia, and France takes a four-point lead over Germany. And the update on the women's side, uh, as we see here in our feature match, it is a 2-2 draw between Italy and Chinese Taipei. Also a draw on the other side of the field, Estonia evening things out with Ukraine heading into the third end. So we will not have any decisions on the women's side, but we could see some winners on the men's side. This means a draw for Indonesia and France will give them the win and a certain spot for the Olympic Games. Correct. All they need to do is achieve a, a, a tie score on the a Tie score end. on the end, yes.
This brings us to the third end. Eight for Chinese Taipei. Not so happy Italian people. Oh, they shot a nine. Shot a nine. Great shot there from Lee Chin Ying for the 10. Uh, Italy also with the 10. Italy responds with the 10, remains a one point advantage. Lin Shi Chia with an eight there. And Claudia Mandia on the line for Italy. Quite bad shot, but yeah, ten not, points. Not her best looking uh, <laughs> release there, but the the result was just fine. In a situation like this, you just take what you can get with your shots. Correct. Yep. When the wind picks up, sometimes uh, execution becomes a little bit uh, difficult, and you you hope for the best on the result. Just making sure you can actually get the arrow fired. Exactly. Good 10 there for Italy. They're going to have a two-point advantage, it looks like. And there's a nine for Chinese Taipei. So seven to tie, eight to win again for Claudia Mandia. And she's uh, low on the clock again this time. Four, three, two. Gets it off in time. Nine That's points. A nine. That's a, a lot of pressure. Although some, ar some archers, that may help. They, it forces them to work through their execution uh, There's no time to think about anything. You just work and it will be normally a good shot when you don't force too much. Some archers need it, some archers cannot shoot in this pressure. Correct. And when uh, the pressure, I guess the pressure is a little bit less simply because she knew she didn't need a, you know, a nine or a ten. Yes. Uh, so she didn't have to try to aim as small. She could be a little bit more relaxed on the aim and focus on the execution and working through the execution with a, a relatively short amount of time, which she did and achieved the result. Italy takes a 4-2 lead over Chinese Taipei. On the men's side, we could have already two winners. Let's see what the results will bring us. Even if it looks like the French team would be better as the German team, but I mean, both teams are really good. They wouldn't be here if they cannot shoot good points, but Germany was losing the two sets with only one single point, which is like quite of disappointment because it's if it's 10 points difference between the, the, the set point, you, you can accept it because you know you were shooting one bad error, but if it's 55 on 54 it's like ah, it's a bit heartbreaking i could yeah. i could still make it but i i didn't correct it's hard to accept uh we have two winners on the man's side indonesia wins 6-0 against malaysia and france wins 5-1 against germany with a really good end because both teams were shooting 57 but france just needed to draw on this set to win the match. So three strong ends by Germany, but w they were not able to win any of them. Um, now they have to, they, I'm sure there's a lot of disappointment with that. They just had a, a opportunity to earn a spot in the Olympics and did not. Now they move to the bronze medal match. They're so shooting you have strong right To now. focus again and be concentrated. Correct. And They need to, to take the, the strong end they just shot and continue that type of result throughout the bronze match. Exactly. So it, it should be a little bit of encouragement, but obviously there's a lot of disappointment to go with that. Uh, update on the women's side, our featured match here. Italy has a 4-2 lead over Chinese Taipei. And on the other side of the field, we are in a dead heat. Estonia and Ukraine, three points each.
stretches are coming back. This means we start now with the fourth end of this semi-finals for the quota tournament for the spots for the Olympic Games. And a dead center X for Tanya Ting. Chinese Taipei takes a 10 to 9 lead to start off the first arrows of end number four. Two points lead for Chinese Taipei. And another nine there. Claudia Mandia at the line. If they continue shooting like this, looks like we'll have a shoot off. Very well, May. And Claudia Mandia with an eight there for Italy. So they will have a, it's essentially a two point deficit. Right now the scoreboard's showing 12. Uh, Chinese Taipei has fired four arrows to Italy's three, so they're a little bit ahead on pace. There's another good 10 for them. So Italy, Italy tends to be a little slower. Uh, we've seen Claudia Mandia go to the end of the clock virtually every time. And that can, as we've said, that can add a little bit of pressure. Um, you know, a rush shot can be difficult at times, but for some people it helps them move through the shot a little easier. This was now really good air to re-enter in the match. Chinese Taipei with another 57. Strong shooting from them. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to a shoot-off. Another shoot-off here in our featured match. Four points apiece for Chinese Taipei and Italy. Uh, again, shoot off rules. Each archer will shoot one arrow. In the event of another tie, the arrow that is closest to center for both teams will earn the victory. And here we are talking <laughs> off camera, and they show us on camera. So. <laughs> Next time they really have to <laughs> watch we, we gotta, us when they... <laughs> we got to communicate here. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. So pulling the arrows and returning to the line uh, again on the men's side. Give us that update again. Our bronze match and our gold match is set. So the bronze match is Malaysia against Germany, which will be shown after and commentated by us. And um, we will shoot first the bronze matches together, and after we will shoot the gold matches together. Correct. So uh, we will not go to the alt alternating clock format. It will stay the same way as it is now. The bronze matches will be shot at the same time, and then the gold matches will be shot at the same time. So we will show the men's bronze match and the women's will be shot congruently 
Uh, following that, we are unsure as to who will be our gold medal match just yet. We're <laughs> unsure as to who our contestants will be, but uh, we will also have a gold medal match featured for you. And another update on the women's side. It looks like Ukraine has taken a 5-3 victory over Estonia. And we'll move on. Some strong shooting from Ukraine. 57-48, uh, 53-54. So one bad end in there, but uh, three other solid ends and earns them the victory. So maybe to announce now again, we have a shoot off Italy against Chinese Taipei. Um, which will decide who will go to the gold medal match. Ukraine, the women team of Ukraine, took already a quota place now because they made it to the gold match. The same for the French uh, men's team and the Indonesian men's team as well. And here we go, shoot off between Italy and Chinese Taipei. 60 seconds, three errors. There is coming up a bit wind now. Yep, we are getting a bit more wind. It looks like it's uh, moving from basically a seven o'clock to one o'clock if you're referencing a the hands of a clock it's a bit quartering away from the archers two eights for both teams there's a good 10 for Chinese Taipei and also 10 for Italy Not quite sure who has the closer arrow of the 10, but that could be the deciding factor. Sounds like Italy was winning. <laughs> Not quite sure. See if we can get a look at the targets here. Italy's hugging it out, so I, I think we've got a win for Italy here. Yeah. There yeah. was one crane quite hard. Correct. We have a 26 for Chinese Taipei and a 27 for the team from Italy, earning them the victory and a spot at the Rio 2016 Games. Another shot for Chinese Taipei uh, in our next match, in the bronze match. So their hopes are, are still alive. But the fact is that they have to win against the Estonian team now. Correct. And big celebration here from the team from Italy. Obviously a lot of excitement there for them. Uh, we've got their, their fans and supporters behind us. Also high fives all around. And for Chinese Taipei, time to get ready to shoot another one. You could see that the judge was showing with the left arm that it was Italy, so the left target. Who was winning um, this shoot off? And this confirms the shoot off officially. There's a shot at the target there. 10-9-8 uh, for Italy. Against a 10-8-8 for Chinese Taipei. Oh, oh, we see that uh, there was a mistake. Both teams shot 27, but 
Italy had to close there to well, the they're, center. Yeah, they're showing there a, uh, a measured win. Quite interesting with the new system they have here. They have more possibilities than with the old one. They got now for the Olympic Games in Rio, they get a, a really new system for the showing the time and also to show the teams and the names of everyone. This will be their last test before the Olympic Games in Rio. And the team of Germany and Malaysia is entering the the targets here and this match will be commented now. And entering into the field now, the team from Malaysia featuring Karul Mohammed, Hazik Kamaruddin, and Muhammad Akmal Noor Hazreen competing against Germany, Florian Kalund, Florian Floto, and Carlo Schmitz. This match will decide now who is going to take the final Olympic quota spot for weaker men team. Correct. Yeah, this is the match with all the fireworks. This is the one that counts. Uh, the, the gold medal matches, again, those teams already have their places cemented. So they're really shooting carefree at this point. They've done their job for the day. Uh, these two teams are they're, they're still battling it out. They have a lot of work <laughs> yet to be done and a lot on the line. Yep. It would be like a, a friend match they would shoot in the in the gold medal match. Correct, yeah. It's, it's a, they would be it's free like a, of every pressure. In it's like a friendly in football. Yeah, yeah exactly. First end. Carlos Schmitz starting things off with a nine for Germany. And it looks like Malaysia has an eight on the board. Another eight there for Malaysia. Germany's second arrow and eight as well. Florian Cullen shooting. Nine for Malaysia. No, oh, for Germany. Oh, excuse but me, seven for, for Malaysia. 
Nine for Germany. And the wind picking up. You can probably hear it through the microphones. Uh, it gets going pretty quick at times. Another nine for Germany. Eight, maybe nine for Malaysia. Ten points for Germany and nine for Malaysia. Quite easy air for Callens. Yeah, 54 48, so a, a strong showing there for Team Germany. And a bit of a tough start for Malaysia. Uh, with this set system in play, they'll look to turn it around and even things out after N2. But a uh, good start for Germany. And I uh, could carry it over their good shooting from the semifinals in their match against France. Don't forget to watch it, the bronze medal match for the week of women. Still waiting for those. an update. Yeah, I'll we'll get you those results as soon as we have them. Let's see if this eight, maybe nine, of Malaysia will still change their score. Looks like it was an eight, not a liner. Yeah, basically a moot point, but still something the, ju uh, the judges need to go through. They can't just go through the motions out there. They have to process and they follow it. And still no update. Looks like, well, we may have one here on the women's side. Correct, we do. It's Chinese Taipei with a 2-0 lead over Slo uh, excuse me, Estonia. 55-53 uh, to 53 that ends, so Excellent shooting for both those teams. Estonia are quite surprising that they really made it to the bronze match. Correct, yeah. Uh, the 16th team, the last one in, uh, shot strong all the way through, and here they are in the bronze match, still shooting strong, but facing a 2-0 deficit. And the second, win, the second end about to get underway. Again, two minutes on the clock for two arrows per archer, six arrows total. That gives an average of 20 seconds per shot. Plenty of time for these archers to get on the line and Quite execute a good shot. Room. Carlos meets. Yeah, not a great shot. Seven to start for Carlo and a nine for Malaysian Archer. Florian Floater shooting. Good nine for Florian and a nine for Malaysia as well. There's a 10 for Germany. Nice 
nine points. Really strong shooting for Malaysia now. Yeah, they got a good solid group there in the gold. Just pretty much surrounding the ten ring, consistently out the right side. Probably just a little bit of wind moving through there. There's another nine for Malaysia and Germany as well. Long shot. Final arrow of the second end. Malaysia with a nine, so that should seal it. Long. Ten for Florian to finish. Correct. They're putting a, an eight asterisk on the board, so uh, if that last arrow for Malaysia is indeed an eight, we'll have a tie on the set, and Germany will take a three to one lead. If the arrow is upgraded to a nine, it will go two to two, and we'll be tied on set points. It looked to me like that arrow was in, but the, the judge is going to go down there and, and make the official call. Waiting for results coming in. And it looks like the call has been made. They have upgraded that 8 to a 9. So Malaysia takes the set points, 55-54, and moves the match to two set points each going into the third end. Still waiting for the points of the weak women match. Chinese Taipei takes a 4-0 lead over Estonia, so if Estonia still wants to take this spot, they have to go in a shoot-off. Correct. They'll have to do it in a shoot-off, and they cannot have a draw over the next two ends. They have to outright win both ends to move it to a shoot-off. Meanwhile, uh, dead heat over here on the men's side, two set points each. Uh, this one is definitely going to go at least two more ends, and it could go either way. And here we go with end number three. First arrow is away, and it is a 10 for Germany. Malaysia matching it with an X. And it looks like a 10 for Germany. That yes. would make, yep, they confirmed it is a 10. And, and a 10 for Malaysia. To match. <laughs> Just when you think, hey, I made a good shot, maybe this will get us some ground. Nope, sorry, it doesn't. Another 10. Another 10. Perfect 30 start for Germany. And, and another one. <laughs> oh, wow. We're, we're uh, really strong shooting. Yeah, being treated to some great shooting here from these teams from Germany and Malaysia. And there's one out of the 10. Eight ring. You there see that the Germany. teams really want to fight for this spot. Correct. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, 
They're bringing out the best of them, I, I think, here. Good arrow there. It's a nine. That gives Malaysia a one-point lead. Two arrows to go in this end. Nine points nine for, for Germany. Germany. Malaysia no, with another ten. ten. A nine there. So Malaysia's going to have a little bit of wiggle room. Uh, an eight will take the set here. And he got ten. it. Another ten. Yeah. <laughs> Five tens and a nine. A 59. Great shooting for the Malaysian squad. And they will move ahead four to two in this match. And an update on the other side of the field for us in the women's bronze match. Chinese Taipei. Oh, nope, that's, a, that's what we had last time, right? It was 4-0. No update just yep. yet. Actually, after this bronze matches, we can already calculate how many places will be shot tomorrow. Correct. Yep, we'll know for sure uh, how many spots will become available, if it'll be three or if it'll be more. There will be for sure already one spot more because we have... Uh, no, in the week of men, we have Indonesia who got already one spot, one spot in, in an individual and they will shoot the... The gold medal match, which means there will be one spot more to shoot tomorrow. And the update is through on the women's side. Chinese Taipei takes the victory 6-0 in three ends. And I believe that will open up one more spot. Is that correct on the women's side? Uh, I have to see. Chinese Taipei had already one individual place, so... This will give, uh, and also Indonesia had already one single place. Oh no, this was for the men's side, sorry. Yeah, we'll get all that sorted in between uh, matches here. So moving into the fourth end here, uh, Germany against Malaysia. Malaysia holding a two set point lead, four to two. All they need in this end is a tie to take the match. Germany must win the set, and if they do, we'll force a shoot-off. Three arrows per team. And first arrows are away. It is a nine for each side. And a little bit of wind picking up here. Another nine. 
nine for Germany. And an eight for Malaysia. If they would tie now on this end, this would mean that Malaysia would still win the match because you need five set points to get the victory. Correct. And after three arrows, Germany holding a one-point advantage. Again, nine points for Germany. And a ten for Malaysia to draw it even. Eight for Germany and a nine for Malaysia, giving them a one-point lead. So they need one strong arrow here from Florian Kalund of Germany. They really need a ten. Yeah, he got a nine. So gold wins it. Malaysia, and it's, it's a ten. ten. Great shot to finish. This means Malaysia was qualifying now for the Team Olympics. Correct. And Malaysia earns the bronze medal and the three spots in the Rio 2016 games. And watching at the individual places which were shot already. Malaysia took one single spot in the continental qualifying tournament. But they took a team place now. This means that um, there will be five places tomorrow for the week of men. The win going to Team Malaysia. Six set points to two. Hazit Kamaruddin, Kairou Anwar Mohammed, and Muhammad Ismail Lo Hashim deliver the goal. And we also have the update now for the individual quota competition tomorrow for the week of women there will be six spots shooting or six spots will be shot tomorrow because italy chinese taipei and ukraine had already a single spot and it will be those three teams who will get who got already a quota place in team correct so again it can be a little complex determining the qualifying for the rio 2016 olympics there are the, the first opportunity for a team to qualify was at the World Championships in 2015 in Copenhagen, Denmark. Uh, there was also individual qualification available there. Uh, from there, teams who had yet to qualify a full team uh, competed here for the final team qualification quota. Mm. And three spots available. And as you mentioned, the three teams who have earned that quota all had one individual qualified. Ex except, no, 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 no. On the on the women's side. On the women's side, yes. Correct. And on the men's side, there was France who didn't have a single spot, but they earned already their place because of the gold match. Correct. So there will be two more five spots for the men's and six spots for the women's. Correct. So tomorrow, individual shoot-offs for six spots on the women and five on the men. Exactly, yes. Oh, other way around. Five so on the Five on the men, men and six, six on, on the, the women. women. <laughs> yep. And again, if you're uh, interested in learning about how all of this works, 
As I said, it is a bit complex. Archery.org, and you can read an article there on the homepage, Olympic Qualification 101. It will explain all things Olympic qualifiers. And here we go with our, as we called it, international friendly. We have Indonesia and we have France shooting for gold here. Uh, it, it is a bit uh, pedestrian as both teams have earned their spots. The celebration is over. Now they're just shooting for a bit of pride and a bit of practice. And Indonesia opens up with a nine. France matches it with a nine of their own. For Indonesia and a seven France with the seven. On the week of women's side, we have Ukraine shooting versus Italy. for Indonesia and a 10 for France bringing them within one two arrows to go and a nice little tight group there <laughs> at uh, seven eight o'clock in the nine ring and uh, looks like Plepure is shooting the arrows a couple out the top there yeah could be a bit of a difference between uh, this side of the field versus where he was at and the way the wind is affecting him or even a slight difference in distance. I mean, these, these fields are surveyed very well, so I doubt that's the issue. I'm, I'm guessing it's either lighting or, or wind that's affecting him there. No, they are like um, 50, 60 meters between the target they were shooting before and the target they are shooting now, which is a lot when you are shooting outdoors with... Dif with a different wind situation. Correct. It's more the wind than the sun. Yep. So Italy, or excuse me, Indonesia, two set points to zero. 
And we have Italy on the other side of the field against Ukraine. And we'll give you that update as soon as we have it. And the update coming through, it looks like Ukraine with a 2-0 set point lead over Italy after the first end. And again, this gold medal match, uh, more of a formality. Both of these teams, uh, all four of these teams, between the men and the women, earning their Olympic quotas. They will be sending a full team of three to the games in Rio. Maybe one more information about the individual quota place it is not possible that one nation gets three individual places and will qualify team you really have to qualify the team in team matches to get a team quota place correct now and uh do explain to us can a, a nation earn two individual quota positions or just one? they can only earn one in every category correct but if they receive a team plays, this doesn't mean that they cannot can compete in individual. This just means that they can send three archers to the Olympic Games. Pierre Plion again with a high nine, uh, high seven, sorry. I guess that could be a bit confusing. We talk about team qualifiers and individual qualifiers. You know, as I said, all these archers who qualify as part of a team, they will also compete individually at the games. Correct. They, yes. they won't be going just as a team. Uh, good start, 29 there for Malaysia. And a bit of a tough start for France with a 24. And one error to go. We have a two-point advantage, both in set points and in score for Indonesia. Uh, eight will take the set here. After a nine from France's Jean-Charles Valadon, and there's a ten. ten. So strong shooting there from the squad from Indonesia. We are talking the whole time about the Rio 2016 Olympic quota places, but 
we still should work up here in Antalya. So on Saturday there will be the compound session and on Sunday there will be the recurve session for the World Cup 2016 Antalya. Correct. And uh, those will also be streamed live on YouTube. Um, Carl Arkey will be on the commentating. Uh, the, the voice you're accustomed to. He's not here today, <laughs> so you got you got uh, Pitt and I. But Carl will be joining us, and we'll handle the commentating on Saturday and Sunday. And there should be some excitement there. There's some interesting matches uh, on the compound side. You have two Turkish archers, which are they're both relative newcomers to you know the finals venue. That neither of them have ever made an individual Correct. final, and they'll be competing for gold. Uh, on the other side. You know, the Mr. Perfect, Mike Schlosser, who's a, a total regular on the podium. He'll be shooting for bronze. Against Tomo Goibun from Croatia. Correct. So Who made already a really good uh, World Cup in Shanghai this year. Still a young archer. Yep. Um, on the compound women's side, you have Dahlia Crook, 16-year-old from the USA, will be shooting against Sarah Lopez, who will be attempting to win another... World Cup. <laughs> uh, Sarah obviously has had a lot of success. Had the big win at the last World Cup, Stage 2 in Medellin, Colombia, there on her home turf. And then uh, Turkish archer Yasim Bostan will be competing in the bronze medal match against Marcella Tonioli. So Turkey really had a great showing here on the compound side, at least. Unfortunately, they lost two times in this eighth final in the qualification now in the quota tournament. Correct. So they will not be putting a full team into the, the games. Uh, on the and it's not long ago, within three weeks, that they got the individual place. Correct. Yep. At the European Championships there. On the recurve women's side, we have, in the bronze medal match, Tanya Ting, who we saw in our featured match, part of Team Chinese Taipei. She will be competing against Cheng Haijin, the team captain from the strong, strong nation of Korea. <laughs> and in the gold medal match, again, another Korean, Choi Mi Soon, who matched the individual world record here in qualification this week. Yes. Uh, against Ksenia Perova of Russia. So Choi Maybe Mi Soon. Also interesting to say that Korea showed a new world record in team qualification. Correct. Yep. I believe they beat their own world record. <laughs> so on the men's side, uh, it's an all-Korean affair joined by Atanu Das. So we will have Atanu in the bronze medal match, Atanu of India, and Kim Woo Jin of Korea competing against him. And then in the all-Korean final, the gold medal final, uh, Ku Bon Chan against Lee Sung Yoon. So should be some interesting matches. Uh, it's always, if you're an aspiring recurve archer, highly recommend you, you watch some of those finals because... Watching the Koreans in action is, is literally watching the amazing. best to ever have done it. It's and amazing. A lot to be learned from them. Uh, in our current match, three arrows into the third end, and France and Indonesia. They had a deadlock at 27. Indonesia, four set point to zero lead. Uh, looking to close it out. There's another nine from France. So Indonesia just needs to earn the tie in this uh, this end, and they will earn one set point, getting them a victory. Both teams were shooting only nines for the moment. Yep, nines across the board. There's a ten. For both teams. For both teams, <laughs> of course, yeah. Eight for France. So, so nine will win. And even if they shoot eight, it will be enough to win the match. Correct. Yeah, eight would win. Uh, there's a nine. Indonesia takes gold. So on the men's side, congrats to Indonesia, France, and Malaysia, all earning a full team quota at the Rio 2016 Games. And as soon as we get you the update from the women's side, but we do know Italy, Ukraine, and Chinese Taipei have earned those quotas. Congratulations to them as well. 
still waiting if Ukraine won already after three ends this gold medal match or if they have to go to the fourth end. So, the women are shaking hands, so it's not officially yet, but looks like Ukraine was winning. Yeah, it looks like Ukraine earned the 5-1 to one formality win there. More importantly, earned their spot in the games. Um, so again, just a quick rundown on the women's side. Italy, Ukraine, Chinese, Taipei, and on the men's side, Indonesia, France, and Malaysia, all earning a spot in the games. That's, that's very big for France. I know... Uh, the size of, you know, just the, the popularity of archery there, the number of archers within they, the country. They have in Europe the most archers as country. Compared to Germany, for example, they have just like four times more archers, which are registered. It's Correct, a really archery country. Yeah, it's very, it's uh, archery centric, you could say. But uh, a, a great victory for them here today uh, to earn a spot in the games, a full team quota. Uh, with no individual spots yet to be earned. That really, I'm sure, is a, a big relief off the shoulders of those three men. <laughs> and also the pressure they had because they were not earning any spot on the World Championships, not earning any spot in the European Championships on the quota place, uh, on the quota competition. So it's a big release for them, for sure. So with that said, uh, again, live on Archery TV, on Saturday and Sunday, Saturday featuring the compound finals and Sunday the recurve finals. Uh, signing off here from Antalya, Turkey, I'm Steve Anderson for Pitt Klein, and we will see you Saturday. long wait is over. Welcome to Guatemala and welcome back to archery. There's been more competition here at the International Standard in Latin America this week than there has been for the last 18 months and it's all because Guatemala City is hosting the first stage of the Hyundai Archery World Cup Series. A beautiful setting that we've got used to. Disappeared for 18 months, but look, it's beautiful here. 28 degrees, perhaps a little hot for the archers. I'm Karen Bashir, and joining me for this season is our analyst and former world number one, Nikki Hunt. Recurve Sunday, and we're down to the individual matches. Yeah, I'm going to be excited to see who gets to get to the final four. Yeah, that is really the crux of it. Winning here and you go through to the Hyundai Archery World Cup Finals at the end of the season. And uh, we've got the women coming out first. So let's look at the women's final four. Well, here they are. Mackenzie Brown, Dapika Kumari, Alejandro Valencia and Madalena Amastraya. Surprise package in the finals and here is our schedule two semi-finals the new lineup 
is followed by both the bronze and the gold medal matches, and then we'll switch over to repeat for the men. So a very exciting lineup for today, starting with the women's semi final. So let's have a look at the brackets. Uh, Mackenzie Brown coming through the top against Di Velasco, and she goes up against the surprise package, Madalena Amastroya from Romania. Topeka Kamari takes on Alessandra for Valencia in the bottom half of the draw for a place in the finals. And out they come straight away for our first semi-final. Leading us out, Alejandra Valencia from Mexico. And she will go up against Topeka Kamari. They will, of course, be presented out to the crowd. So, Nikki, uh, your thoughts on this match? I think it's going to be a really tight one. I think um, Kamari's probably got the edge here, ranking third in coming into this head-to-head. -head. De Topeka is the world number nine, 26 years old, and very famous in India. Dos, México, Alejandra Valencia. Just 20 years old, Alejandra, and uh, ranked 25th in the world. Uh, strong contender here Juan in the Guatemala and Shooting for a place in the final against Topeka Kamari. The pair came through the ranking round with Kamari shooting a 671. Ranked third, Alejandra Valencia shot a 663 and was ranked seventh for the knockout stages. So here we go. Semi final number one on Recurve Sunday in the women's individual. Beautiful conditions. We're expecting some big scores. Uh, remember, there's been a long break before we've got to this first World Cup in 18 months. To Pika Kamari to get us underway. Good start. Decent arrow there just outside the 10. Exactly the same place for Alejandra. Just a little adjustment from the Mexican there on the side. The three arrows per archer in the individual per set. Yes. And that's in the 10. If you win a set, score more points than your opponent, you get two points. The scores are level, you get one. Target for the win is six points. Or I could put this out of reach with another ten. Ruby puts it in the nine. So Valencia needs a ten to share the set points here. And she's got it. Well, we thought it was going to be uh, very close. Uh, it certainly looks that way, Nikki. Yeah, it doesn't start much closer than that, does it, Tyne, for the first set? So, yeah, it's going to be an exciting match. Yes. Oh, so you can see Kamari just got a little bit of nerves, a little bit of tension. She's trying to relax herself. Weight of the world on her shoulders. Yeah, I mean, they're under pressure now, aren't they, to book their place into the World Cup finals, and there's a lot to play for, so she's been working hard on a mental game, uh, but being out here on the stage, you know, you are under pressure. Great shooting from both of them, all in the centre, relieved to have got through that set, Topeka Kamari, uh, all square with Alejandra Valencia. And, yeah, and of course they are looking to book their spots at the uh, World Cup Finals. The, the winners of each stage do get a ticket to uh, the Finals. Uh, there's that pressure and then of course there's that other little pressure later on this summer with uh, the Olympic Games coming up. There's both of these potentially to feature. More on that in a minute. As we begin at set number two. And Kamari will shoot again. Yes. Fantastic arrow, straight in the 10. Good. Little adjustment still on the site. Didn't look happy with that. And What's on? You can always tell a lot from the instant reaction from the archers as they release. Ruby. Yeah. 
Yeah. Open up a point there, so Alejandro really needs a 10. Push back. Yeah. Ooh, drifting out right again into the eight. This one could be put to bed very quickly, and the eight will do it. Son. Yeah. Uh, it's in the 10. Brilliant shooting from Kamaria. A 29 this time, and she will get all the set points. Important Good arrow game. from Valencia, though, dropping it into the 9, but uh, everything's drifted over to the right a little bit for uh, Valencia. Yeah, she sort of looked telling as soon as she shot that first one, she knew something was wrong, but, you know, they've all just drifted over there together. But, um, I mean, Kamari just so strong and powerful, really comfortable in the groove now. Yes, yes. Uh, one quick question. You mentioned after the yes. 10 that she shot with her first arrow, she adjusted the sight. Why, why would she do that? Well, she just felt maybe she, she might have seen that she was aiming maybe slightly low anyway and it went low, so just give it a little tweak. Um, you know, it's quite precise, so just a little click on the sight. There might be 20 clicks to do a complete revolution of the sight, so, you know, they're quite precise. It's almost a relief, I think, when she came off the line that it all went as just as you wanted it to. Well, she's broken away in the second set of Dika Kamari. So it will be Alejandra Valencia who will shoot first. She needs to get right back into this. Big score required to put pressure on her opponent. And now she's gone over to the left-hand side and making a big adjustment on the side that time. Yeah, she didn't look happy with that at all. Yes. Ooh. Very, very close. Marked as a nine, but subject to a measure. Yes. Yes. Quick arrow from Valencia, and perhaps a little too fast. Yeah, I, d I don't think she knows quite what's going on here, either side of the gold. A little bit of movement here from Kamari holding on. Yes. And that's why she held on. Beautiful ten. Ocho. Well, this one has gone again. Nueve. Little wince, but it's a nine. Uh, that 28 could be marked up to a 29, but either way, it's enough to take the two set points in the third set. And Kamari leads Valencia 5-1. Now, what is going on with Alejandro Valencia? Because, oh, well, let's ask a different question. You're a high-level coach. What would you be saying to whoever you were standing behind her right now? Think about the shots that you really want. You know, she's done this thousands and thousands of times before. She knows what a good shot feels like. So I think you can over-analyze what's happening right now, and you've just got to really let go of that and just get back to what you normally do. Um, so, yeah, she's just got to reset. We're in this set system. She's got everything to play. For, so just get her back into a normal groove. Yeah, well, here we take a look at her. And she's got a fairly quick kind of draw anyway, but uh, she put one left and then uh, one right, and Kamari was a little bit disappointed with the, the nine. There was a winch from her. That just shows the level of these archers are at. But the nine isn't good enough for them. Uh, she's certainly, as Nikki has been saying, working on her mental strength. Looks. Vika Kamari leading 5 1 as we go into set number four. Alejandra Valencia has no room for error here. She has to win all the points in this set. Better. Yeah, back into the gold. That's what she needed. Yes! Stunning from Kamari. She's really in a groove now. Yes! Signs of life from the Mexican. Nine at. Good start. Now ten would be ideal to put some more 
pressure Ruby. is drifted over to the nine. So a nine is enough to draw level on points in this set and get the one point required for Kamari to go through to the final. Waiting. Ocho. That's drifted out into the eight though. And a 27 from Kamari. Uh, perhaps when the opportunity came, it was a little bit too much pressure. But good news for Alejandra Valencia. She's got the two set points in set number four and pushes this into a fifth set. There are a number of options here for what can happen. If they level on score in the fifth set, uh, the points will be enough for Kamari to take a 6-4 win. If Kamari takes it outright, she will win 7-3. But if Alejandra Valencia can nick these two points, we'll be all square. And guess what? We'll have a shoot-off. Still in this, Valencia still trails, so she will shoot first. It's time for the fifth and final set in this women's semi-finals. Oh, just dropping low there. She really needed a 10, really. Got to put the pressure on Kamari. Kamari taking a time there. Yeah, I wonder if there was a problem with the clocks maybe or something, why she started a little bit late. Yeah. Good nine. shot for her, but a nine. Kamari making some adjustments. Valencia with a second into the nine. Just skirting around the outside. So close to this ten. Ten's about the size of a CD. Valencia needs a big score here. Ruby. Dropped it into the nine, so a 26 for her. An eight now is enough for the win for Dipika Kamari of India. Ruby. She's put it in the nine. It took two goes to get there, but Dipika Kamari has made it through to the final here in Guatemala City. She's beaten Alejandra Valencia of Mexico 7 3. And the Indian will go for gold a little bit later on. I think she might have been indicating she was a little bit nervous there at full draw. I think she's thoroughly enjoyed that match. And it's going to give her the confidence now to go through to that gold medal match. Yes, certainly is. And she'll be so pleased with the work that she's been doing during the restricted period working on her mental game, so much pressure on her, understandably in India, uh, as the press uh, have high expectations for for her, and that she's found very difficult to contain. And of course, she was a, a star of a, the Netflix women's first series, the story of an archery champion coming from rags to riches. Brilliant performance from Dapika Kumari. She's into the final. We take a look back here. Sketchy moments for Valencia throughout that match. You just see in her cheek there how it was just sort of um, pulsing. Like she just wasn't quite happy with some of these shots and just glanced either side of the goal sometimes. But Kamari was just solid throughout, really. Really gained back into the groove. And I'm really, really looking forward to this gold medal match now. Yeah, well, that's one semi final done. And uh, replacing the targets uh, as they normally do. Uh, because we have got the second women's semi-final coming up very shortly. And of course, we do know that uh, we will see Alejandra Valencia again because she'll have to come back out and fight off for the bronze medal here in Guatemala City. So the world number 25 still has a shot at being on the podium. We know, of course, Kamari will have a shot at gold. Worst she can walk away from Guatemala City with is a silver. Uh, but now it's time to find out who she will face in the final. It's time Senoras for the recurve women's 
semi-final number two and uh, leading us out a bit of a surprise package here it's just 18 years old from Romania it is Madalena Amastraya of Romania uh, definitely a surprise package world number 54 has made it through to the final and she'll go off against the world number 19 the 26 year old American Mackenzie Brown Mackenzie being presented to the very limited crowd here, restricted to basically uh, the technical staff, umpires, uh, and the officials of the tournament, because we're doing this behind closed doors. Uh, it's been a great competition for Madalena Amastraya. Nikki, would you have predicted this semi-final? Not at all. I mean, you know, the 18-year-olds come here, you know, had an absolutely fantastic tournament, um, taking out some great names on the way through. Um, Elisa Tartler of Germany, you know, and Casey Kaufold of USA. I mean, she's definitely earned her spot here. She certainly has. Uh, good work from Mackenzie Brown as well to get here at 90 in the world. She's uh, certainly trying hard to, to get into the USA women's team. But it's time for the semi finals here in Guatemala City. Mackenzie Brown will get this semi final underway. Looks strong, looks solid, a little bit high, but yeah, great first shot. Oh, wow, yes. what a response from the 18 year old straight in the 10. Ocho. Mm -hmm. Just drifting out to the left there, made an adjustment, Mackenzie Brown. She looks so confident, doesn't she? Wow, uh, just unbelievable. She's in the zone, isn't she? Two tens straight out. There it is. Into the ten for Mackenzie Brown. But Amastroy can put the points away here with an eight. Finishes with a 9 and a 29 for her. Solid start from the Romanian. And the two set points go to Madalena Amastraya. Right. First impressions. I mean, she looks incredible, doesn't she? Does. She does. Yeah, really impressive. I think sometimes when you're 18, you walk into the stadium, you know, you've got nothing to lose. Everything's just really fun. She looks super composed. She didn't even really look nervous, did she? So, yeah, fantastic shooting. Yeah, Mackenzie Brown also looking pretty composed and pretty determined. But you can see those arrows are all high. They're in a line, so she's got her, you know, she's got a marker for her height. Yeah, I mean, her group was a little bit high, a little bit left, I think, as well. And if you had centred that, I think it wasn't much more than a 10 size group. So it was just, you know, perhaps a bit of a sight mark issue there. So if she can bring those in, I saw her make a big sight adjustment, then uh, let's see what she can bring in this next end. Well, it's uh, time to get on with this match. Second semi-final. Uh, Mackenzie Brown shooting first in set number two. Ocho. Wide out to the left again. She's not sure why she even raised her hand. Yes. Strong shot. So All the way. Well corrected out to the other side that time. Yeah, she looks a bit confused. Good strong shot. Nine point eight at nine. Just not really finding the ten, is she? Struggling at the moment. Another opportunity here for Amastroya. She puts it into the nine. A 28 from her is more than enough to take the second set and all the points with it. 4 0 for the Romanian. She really looks like the real deal. She does, yeah. Even a little smile there at the end, being a bit more relaxed between the ends. You know, it's really nice to have a chat with your coach and often you talk about something completely different. You're not going to be talking about the match. It would just be something relaxing, something to make you laugh maybe and just calm the nerves. But she doesn't even look nervous. 
No, she doesn't. She looks like she's sort of ready for business. And, and this is the other thing there as we look back on that set of Mackenzie Brown's sort of, well, quizzical set of shots. I mean, again, the, she's got the height right. The height, well, I say she's got the height right. She's, she's, everything's on the same height. Yeah. Yeah, it's just the windage, the left, right of it is uh, just out of balance somehow, left and right and left, you know, she's just got to settle down. Like we say, we're in the set system. She can come back now. She certainly can. Mackenzie Brown will shoot first trailing 4-0 in the recurve women's semi-final number two. She needs to start big. That's not what she wanted and the coach is sort of not sure either <laughs> from the head tilt. Great shooting. There you go, that's better. A knowing smile there. Ruby. Good, strong shot. Nines are enough at the, the moment middle. for Madalena Amastraya. There it is. Yes. There's your 10. Took a while to get there, but uh, just look at this. A 10 will take victory here. Oh, she's popped it into the nine. So 27's a piece, and Mackenzie Brown gets off the mark with a single point. She still trails, five to one, but she's off the mark, and that that could set her off, but she's got a big ask now. Yeah, I mean, she came off the line looking ever so disappointed, and you've just got to keep your head in this. You can't, you know, kind of get upset that you might have just lost, or, you know, you've just got to stay in the moment. It's not over till it's over. Just keep your mindset. I'll take a look back at the shots here, and. The, on the second one, yeah, very disappointed. She's not sure what's going on. One has to then default to well, possibly execution. But the second shot, she had that smile because she knew that she'd done everything right, I guess. Yeah, it was a better shot. It was quite central. It was just slightly high. You know, she was unlucky to get a 10. I think that's where the smile came from. But, you know, let's see if she can bring it back now. Well, she's off the mark, Mackenzie Brown, trailing by five points to one. She'll shoot first in the fourth set. No room for error for Mackenzie Brown now. She has to take both set points in the remaining two sets. Yep, great there start. You go. <laughs> Fantastic. Back in the 10. That's what she needed. Keep the match alive. Ruby. This is such consistent shooting from an 18 year old that is a surprise package here. See that little steer, yeah. Mackenzie's front arm there, just as the shot went off. She knew it was going to go left. She tried to pull it across, but just too up, too late. Got a nine from it, though. And Ooh. that is the first time we've seen a major slip-up from the Romanian. Big opportunity for Mackenzie. Yep, yeah. And now back in go. the tens. <laughs> so this one's out of reach now for... Madalena Amastraya. This shot, though, very important. Still drifting over to the seven there. What on earth has gone on wrong with Amastraya in that set? You know, it could be just down to that glimmer of, I could win this. It's possible, you know, and it's going to the right is usually a little bit, maybe a soft shot. Um, but did you see the smile in Mackenzie's face then, the ignition of, I'm back in the game. So she's going to hunt her down. Yeah, she really is. Don't count her out at all. But look, you have to say, oh, what a remarkable performance from uh, Madalena Amastraya. We can forgive the six and seven. I'm sure we're about to get a, a look at those as well. Mackenzie Brown, oh, that was your, your bow steer that you were talking about, yeah. trying to drive it in. Just looking from behind her there, the bow looks slightly canted to the right. I don't know you if know that was just the camera the angle, but if you're canting your bow, you're tilting it over to the right, that is going to cause the arrow to go off to the right, which it did. So I, I can't tell if that is a factor just from that angle, but it certainly looked a little bit like that to me. And the coach is definitely going to have seen that, so we'll, we'll be able to spot it. Uh, Madalena Amstrad still in pole position here, still... Uh, leading by two set points. 5-3 she leads. Still has an opportunity to take this. Just waiting on the line for a clear range at the moment. Just when the momentum was with uh, Mackenzie Brown, there's a, 
a pause in proceedings. And it does give us an opportunity to talk about how good the Romanian is and how good Mackenzie Brown has been to get back so into good, this. Strong shot. Looks like we're ready to go again. Set number five, Mackenzie Brown fighting back. Yep. Boom, straight in the X. Here we go. Pressure now on Madalena Amistraya. <gasps> Just in the nine. Good focus, good finish. Trust it. Yep. Yeah. Show me another one. I'm sure she's thinking, what, what on earth? Where was this earlier on? <laughs> Two tens for Brown. You could just see in her face, as soon as she let go of that, she knew something was wrong. Yes, yes, <sighs> Brilliant, yes, yes. perfect Perfecto. from Mackenzie Brown and a knowing smile and raising of eyebrows. She's drawn this one level and things are going a little wild for Madalena Amastraya. She needs to get things back together here. Uh, she's made things interesting for us because, of course, it means that they're all tied after five sets of five set points each. And what does that mean, Nikki? We are going to the shoot-off. So it's one arrow per archer. Closest to the middle is going to win. Book their place in the gold medal match. Yeah, single arrow this year. There's, there was a, a toying with a two arrow shoot off for some seasons, but now we're back to one arrow. Here we look back at Mackenzie Brown's perfect 30. And she was shooting eights and nines early on. That's why we got the smile from her at the end. And uh, then after a wayward five, uh, we're now calling it a wayward seven because it was tens and nines all the way through the first three sets for Madalena. Amastraya, a surprise package. And I, I, you know what? I keep saying surprise package. It's not really a surprise when you think we've had 18 months out. And it's always the case that over a period of that time, you see some new stars come through, some younger athletes come through. And that's no different here. It's just that we haven't seen any archery for 18 months. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Brady alluded that to that earlier in the week, didn't he? He said, let's see you know, who, who's out out there now and who's coming through so it is fantastic to see these young archers coming through and see what they can do on the scene I just saw her going through with a coach there the technique of you just putting a hand under a chin just practicing that release I think it's probably the release that's um, upsetting her shot just now so she's really got to keep it strong snug into under a chin keeping the back tension and letting that shot explode so let's see if she can get it back but she's certainly lost a bit of a flow at the moment she just re needs to regain it yeah, uh, imagine the pressure on an 18-year-old on her first podium match, and she's only got one arrow to correct all of the things that have started to go wrong in the final two sets. A longer break, though, as the targets are replaced, maybe just the order of the day, but all square after five sets, and a place in the gold medal match is up for grabs, and it's just one arrow per archer to decide. Inicia disparando, Vaca, número uno, Mackenzie Brown, Estados Unidos de América. Going through a process, Un trying to stay calm. Una flecha, Mackenzie 20 Brown, segundo. will shoot first in this tiebreaker. Trust it. Gone out into the eight. Chance for Madalena Amastraya. She's in the eight as well. I think that's further out though. And I think you may well be right. And uh, Mackenzie Brown may have won the shoot off in the women's recurve semi final with an eight. We wait for confirmation, but I think from the body language, you can tell that 
There was a little bit of disappointing acceptance from Madalena Amastroya, and there we have it, confirmation. It did look at first glance that Mackenzie Browns was closer, but winning a shoot-off in the women's semi-final with an eight is incredible. She's now got to clear her mind and get ready for the gold medal match, while Madalena Amastroya has to think very quickly about how she's going to take on Alejandra Valencia in the bronze medal match. But there is confirmation, Mackenzie Brown takes the second recurve women's semi-final. Well, uh, how many times do you see a shoot-off one with an eight as we take a, a look back at uh, some of the action here? Look at that. Just out to the left, but very close to the nine line. Yeah, I mean, it's not common, especially in these conditions. It's fantastic conditions. But again, it's just so telling of the pressure these guys are under. You know, with the prize fund at the end of the, the competition and in the finals up by 20% this year. There's a lot at stake. Um, so the pressure, I think, just really getting to both of them now. Yeah, it was... Um, it, I tell you what, I think we're going to see a lot more of Madalena Amastrava. Well, certainly we are. We're going to see her in a minute in the uh, bronze medal match. But she does look like the real deal. A little bit more experience on in these uh, high tense moments and uh, she could be converting these into more medals well let's see how things line up now the two semi-finals are complete so we have our lineups for the bronze and the gold medal match uh, here we go Mackenzie Brown sneaking through at the top with an eight winning shoot off uh, Dabika Kamari coming through Two chances, two bites of the cherry in that uh, semi-final against Valencia. So it will be Amastroya against Valencia first for bronze, and then Brown versus Kamari in the gold medal match. Yeah, so we think that we'll see more of Amastroya in in future competitions. She doesn't. It doesn't look like a flash in the pan. No, I mean those first couple of ends were absolutely solid, um, and then things just fell apart a little bit, but. That is experience, you know, I think you can hold the nerves for so long and then after a while I think you get the glimpse that you could win and sometimes that becomes too much. But um, yeah, we're certainly going to see her again, I'm sure. And Mackenzie Brown uh, fighting uh, for a place in the women's USA women's recurve team. Yeah, absolutely. So um, America have got one spot already for the Olympics. Um, you know, she's looking good for that. Um, I don't think the team have selected um, for America just yet. So, you know, she's obviously pushing hard to, to take that spot for America in the Olympics. And one chance perhaps to get a uh, full team in for the Americans at the uh, final qualifier in Paris? Yeah, absolutely. There's still some team spots there, so they could qualify the whole team. Well, more on that, I guess, in the future. Now, right now, it's time for bronze here in Guatemala. Alejandra Valencia of Mexico going up against Madalena Amastraya. Valencia has had a little bit more of a rest after losing her semi-final, which came up first. Amastraya has just come straight back out after losing that semi-final against Mackenzie Brown. So Amastraya will be on target number one, en Valencia Baca, on target number two. Rumania, Still got the smile. En la Baca, dos, y a México, Alejandra Valencia. Uh, Valencia, just 20, so only a couple of years older than uh, Amastraya. But... Uh, Ranked 25th in the world to Amastroya's 54. Now, will Amastroya be able to clear out the uh, downward turn in her performance from the semi finals? I think it's going to be really hard to clear that out of her head. You know, she just had a couple of ends and a shoot off that just didn't go to plan. So, and there's a very quick turnaround here back into the bronze match now. So, it is going to be a tough ask, but if she can just shake it off and try and relax, you know, let's see what she can do. Well, she'll be shooting first here, this for bronze, and a place on the podium at the Hyundai Archery World Cup, stage number one in Guatemala City.
mai lung lucrează, mă, da. Intră prin loc vorbie și lucrează mai lung, da? Yes. Yes. Absolutely solid there, X10. More experienced archer. Brilliant group, just moving a sight. She switched targets as well, so whether that makes a difference, she's gone from target two on the last match to target one on this match. Sometimes that can change your, your sight. Made the adjustment, but still at the same height and a 24 for Amastraya. And another 10 from Valencia, a 29 for her, and both set points in this first set. Well, you said it, Nicky, the, to, to lift your uh, your game after fall, it falling apart in the previous match, which was just a matter of minutes ago, it's going to be very difficult for anyone, especially for an 18-year-old on her first podium. Yeah, I mean, ideally, you go off to the practice field, you shoot in front of a, a close blank boss and just really get your rhythm back and feel. Um, but she hasn't got the opportunity to do that. We're right back here into the bronze medal match and she, all she can do is, is try mentally just to think about that shot that she wants. You know, she's done this thousands of times before, but you know, can she bring it now? Well, Valencia here shooting very positively right from the start and by contrast uh, to this young Romanian her performance turned up in the uh, semi-finals she she improved through her semi-finals and has continued that upward trajectory here in this bronze medal match Madalena Amastroia of Romania the 18 year old trailing by two set points will shoot first in the second set Still dropping them low. Another sight adjustment. Got to keep them strong and powerful. Beautiful time in there. Straight in the 10 from Alejandra. That is more like it. Door open. A little bit of movement. But into the nines. So a, a nine for Valencia and they'll share the set points at ten. And she'll go four nil up. Drifted out to the sevens. And I tell you what, I don't think we predicted that. Uh, for the second set. Uh, it's good for Amastroya that she started to show an upward trajectory, uh, but a couple of drop points there uh, for Valencia. She looks a little bit annoyed with herself. She feels that's her own issue. But you've got to feel for Amastroya. She's pulled it back together. And I've got to say, Nikki, I think the coach has played a real blinder here. He stayed very calm and he's given her some very clear instructions. And it looked to me like she's just trying to follow what the coach is saying. Yeah, I mean, the person behind you in these matches is really important. Um, you know, they can say fantastic things or, or, or not the best things. So, um, you know, having someone behind you, hopefully that you've worked with and can give you those normal kind of words that you're used to to get you back on track, yeah, it can make a big difference. Yeah, I'd love to have a, a chat with the coach afterwards because it seems to me like he's, he said, to Rob, well, literally, we have to just treat this like training. Fire the next shot, shoot the next arrow this way. And uh, she's got back on level terms here. So another cracking match in the Greek women's individual podium matches. Amastroya will shoot first in set number three. Bravo. Higher arrow in the nine. Yes. Yes. Back in that ten round. Patele drept. Mijlocul bărbiei, dar mai lung. Just looks back in her groove. You, you just, uh, without having the expert knowledge that you have, she just looks more comfortable. Yeah, her whole body yeah. language, her facial expression has gone back to what we saw in those opening sets in the uh, in the first semi-final. So 28. 
not forget she shot a 24 in her first set. But another 10 from Valencia and she has shot a 29 and she looks like she's right back in her groove too. She's taken the two set points in set number three and the pressure really is on the 18-year-old now. But she is starting to look a little more like her very best that we saw earlier on. Yeah, both of them now raising their game. It's going to be a really tight match into this last set or two, which way it goes. Both got to fight hard. We look back at the match here and the, the set, and she looks so much uh, smoother, so much calmer. Uh, everything looks comfortable, but Valencia, having dropped a few points in the previous set, was right back on form, and a 29 from her means she goes back into a two-point lead, and she can do it in this set. Madalena Amistroya will shoot first in set number four, shooting for a place on the podium. Great shot, maybe a touch longer with the timing, but you know, she sent it straight into the 10. Yeah. Extend. I mean, Alejandra's timing is so quick. I love that the speed. It, you know, watch the Korean shoot. They're ever so fast. Yeah. 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 You could see that in her facial expression, couldn't you? As soon as the shot left, went back into the seven. Long, long, on a carpet. Up into the eight, but it's enough to have put this one out of reach because of the seven from Valencia, and she shot another seven as well. Well, these have been topsy-turvy matches, that is for sure, but uh, that doesn't make them any less exciting. We're level at four set points each. Uh, one question, Nikki. How, how can the shot look, look to, to, to someone like me that doesn't know exactly the ins and outs of everything that's going on. The 10 and the 7 shot looked pretty much the same to me. What's the difference? What are we looking out for? Yeah, I mean, we're shooting 70 metres, um, 122 centimetre face. Not much has to change for it to come out of this 10. It's the size of CD. Um, so, you know, things that could make it go right for a right-handed archer, it might be a little bit of pressure coming off the front bow arm, um, perhaps an error of the release, not as clean as usual. Um, but the Romanian's just looking so strong now. Yeah, she really is. And it's just been a bit up and down. We've seen moments of brilliance from uh, Valencia, like you're saying, shooting like the Koreans. And then the next shot, and that's a that's a, a great compliment. They're the world's leading nation in archery career, uh, who aren't here for other reasons. Uh, shooting like that in one shot, and then the very next shot, uh, it all falls apart. But we're level at four apiece. Uh, Madalena Amastraya is right back in this. She's shooting first in the fifth and final set. So now the opportunity is there for Valencia. Yeah. Quick shot and in to the 10. Good time with that shot, but just going high again. Valencia says that she can put this one to bed. Stronger. You want her to finish strongly. Another eight. So a 24 for her again, and uh, this is a massive opportunity for bronze. She needed no more than that. An eight does it, and a 27. And Alessandra Valencia wins the bronze medal here in Guatemala City, beating Madalena Amastraya of Romania six point to four, but what an intriguing battle between these two. 
up and down, Nicky, wasn't it, really, for both of them? Yeah, it really was. Um, some great ends, some not so great ends. I think, you know, Valencia is not going to be very particularly happy with that. It wasn't a great experience for her. Um, but, you know, when things don't go to plan, they're the days you learn. So if it all goes to plan and it all goes really well, yep, you can go and win. But if it doesn't go to plan, then at least come away learning something new. So I'm sure she's going to reflect on that and build on it through this year. Yeah, uh, and it's not bad when you've... Um come away from an event where you feel like you've got some things to learn and you've still got a bronze medal in your suitcase uh, so she does she will be on the podium a little later on and uh, hats off to Madalena Amastraya and her coaching entourage uh, she is something new to look at for the future that's for sure but it's Alejandra Valencia who's taken bronze here in Guatemala Brilliant shots to finish things off. And the fist bump from the coach. A beautiful performance. Uh, an intriguing one. Up and down. That made it very exciting for the casual viewer. Beautiful stuff there as the targets are replaced. <laughs> one more man medal match to go in women's recurve. And that will be Topeka Kamari of India up against Mackenzie Brown. As the pair of them right there waiting to come out are going to go for gold at the first stage of the Hyundai Archery World Cup in its 15th season. And here they come. Topeka Kamari from India leading out the women's finalist world number nine. Going for gold in recurve women's here in Guatemala City. Kamari goes up against the 26-year-old American Mackenzie Brown world number 90. En la faca número uno y representando a Estados Unidos de América, Mackenzie Brown. Brown will be shooting on target number one. En la faca Kumari on target number two. De Pica, Kumari. La juez del partido, Maya Salami. So the athletes are ready to go. And an online judge there just indicating that it will be Topeka Kamari who will shoot first. Would you favour Kamari for this one? Yeah, I would. Um, higher ranked, higher seeded coming in. Uh, Mackenzie's been a great archer in the past, had a bit of a dip. She's on her way back, but um, I think I'd go with Kamari on this one. Yeah be interesting to see how Mackenzie Brown starts against uh, Kamari but Kamari the favorite for gold here in Guatemala City and she will shoot first hey. nice and solid straight in the 10 trust it Kind of shot that and then kind of had a look to see where it went. Not quite so sure. Good. Boom. Good focus, good finish. Robin. Really nice group just to the left to tweak on the site. Kamari can take the first two set points with a nine here. I'm sure she'll be thinking about the perfect. She's got the nine. A 29 is enough Good for the contact. first two set points for the Indian archer. Moving. Adjustment to the right, but still in the nines. And a 27 for Mackenzie Brown. Not a bad start from the American. I don't think she'll be too disappointed. Clearly, she's not got any points, but uh, starting better than she did in the semi-finals. She snuck through. 
now as the targets are being cleared. It is worth mentioning the fact that, um, you know, it's great to see these two athletes here. They fought their way through. But the Koreans, the most winning nation in archery, the leading nation in world archery, uh, are not here. And uh, it's worth just mentioning that uh, whilst that is very sad, they've made it for very good reasons. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, with the restrictions uh, returning back to South Korea, they would have to self-isolate for 14 days. And for an archer, that is just not possible. This is a skill sport. It's a field sport. You need to be training regularly. So to be stuck in a hotel room in Olympic year, that is just not an option. Yeah, so they decided to uh, stay at home and not compete on the World Cup circuit. Uh, but uh, the good news is there's a new Olympic ticket to the Hyundai Archery World Cup Finals. Winners of the Olympic Games in Tokyo will get a ticket to the finals. So, uh, for example, Kang Che Young, who is the reigning champion from Korea, does have an opportunity to defend. Uh, I hear rumours that there might be a world ranking event in Korea as well. Uh, before the Olympic Games, and that might give us a sneaky chance to have a look at uh, the Korean lineup for the Olympics, which has been announced this week. But back here in Guatemala City, these two are fighting for their place at the Hyundai Archery World Cup good Finals. Then you're going to be announced uh, later on this week, I understand. Mackenzie Brown trailing by two set points, Whoopee. shoots first. And that's the fourth nine in a row for the American. Just looked really solid there, didn't she? Great shot, straight in the ten. Trust it. There it is. Another one. Show me another one. Ken Kenzie Brown finding the center and coach asking for another one. Yeah. Drifting out yeah. to the nine. So a ten here. Trust it. We'll put some pressure on Kamari. Not happy. Watch on. You see the reaction, didn't you? Straight away she knew as soon as it was released. So another twenty-seven and a nine will be enough for Kamari to take another two set points. Watch She's on. dropped it into the eight. And that is a 27 for Kamari. Not happy with that, but she does salvage a set point. And it means that Mackenzie Brown is off the mark as well. Kamari leading three set points to one. So a couple of stray arrows, one from each of them. Yeah, she'll be disappointed with that because really, you know, the momentum, momentum was there for her to take it and then to drop it feels a bit, you know, come out badly. So Mackenzie will be happy. She's on the scoreboard. Um, but yeah, they just haven't got their feel quite right, have they? Some some of these shots are not quite where they want them to be, and they've just got to get back into the groove here. We take a look back here. Kamari looking so strong at the beginning of the set, shooting a, a ten and a nine. Mackenzie Brown equally looking very strong as well. Nine followed by a ten for her. And then a big twitch on the last one, pulling it out into the eight. Or do not know, we shouldn't call it a twitch. The reaction was clear that she wasn't happy with the shot. She's off the mark. She's got away with a, a single set point, trailing by three points to one. Mackenzie Brown will start Russia. set number three. Yep. It looks so much better. Good confidence, good timing, solid. Good shot, just out, just tweaking the side a little bit high left. Oh. That's unlucky, just below the 10. Yep. Having shot. a bit of a, a joke with the coach as well, so I think she's feeling less of the pressure now. Mm. <laughs> Called an eight, but marked for a measure. Yes, please. <laughs> that one's close as well. Called a ten, so a twenty-nine. No uh, indication of a measure. Well, Mark, buddy, yeah. 
Well, that looks like it's Move just in. gone into the nine. So even if that eight is marked up to a nine, it's not going to be enough for Kamari to uh, level up with Mackenzie Brown. So just like that, Mackenzie Brown is all square at three set points each. Now let's focus on Mackenzie Brown, a 10, nine, 10. Great shooting. Yeah, she really got back into a groove there. Like I said, after that second arrow, a little smile to the coach, uh, feeling much more confident. Kamaria, on the second shot, just after, I noticed she pulled her arm guard up. Whether that was just coincidental, it wasn't feeling the right place, or whether she just clipped it, she had that low arrow down into the eight on that, on that arrow. So I don't know whether she just caught her arm. And when you're talking about catching on, you, you mean the bowstring coming yeah. through and collecting it on the way? So as we release the bow with um, a recurve, so it's on your fingers. If you imagine that the string is going to go inward towards the archer first and then swing outward away from them. So it's like a little S shape um, going towards the target. So it does, it hits your arm on the way back. So it may have just hit her arm guard on the way back or she might have just, just clipped her arm guard as the arrow went through, which may have then caused it to lose a little bit of speed and just go low into the eight. Okay. Well, three apiece in terms of set points here. The pressure has just ramped up a tiny notch more. It was already 20 degrees outside when we started this session. I fear the athletes may be feeling a little more hot than that. Three all, set number four, Kamari will shoot first. X10, exactly what she needed, put the pressure on. Moving. Just drifting wide of the 10, not far. A long hold. Five seconds remaining and it's gone into the eight. Right there with it. So all square after two arrows each. So this set has come down to the final arrow. <laughs> Just into the nine. So a ten here for Good Mackenzie focus. Brown. Good finish. And she'll be in the lead. Yep. Well, and there it is. And there was a, a little bit of steering by the looks of things on that one. It did seem to be a little bit and a big smile as she realised what she'd done. So 28 for uh, Mackenzie Brown and she has shot into the lead. She is now five set points to three up. Uh, and was, well, I'm not going to say all at sea after two sets, but she was certainly 3-1 down. Uh, the last two sets, she's uh, hit three tens and three nines. Uh, it's been more than enough to overtake the Pika Kamari, who is starting to look like she's feeling the pressure of the final here. And there was the big steer from uh, Mackenzie Brown and a little smile from her. Affording herself a, a moment to let the emotion wash over before going back into business mode. Kamari has been working on the mental side of her game, just starting to show signs of pressure here in this final. We'll go into a fifth and final set here. Mackenzie Brown with one foot on the gold, gold medal step of the podium. Kamari shooting first to stay in the match. Yes. What a great reply. X10. Better timing. Moving. Not missing it by much, but just into the nine. Moving. Looked like a good shot. Again, just drifting right. Trust it. Good focus, good finish. It's a good opportunity here for the Kenzie. Yep. Yeah. Show me another She's one. She's leveled things up. So now Kamari's got to put down the biggest possible score she can to put some pressure on Brown. Into the 10. That's what she needed. A 29. She's back. But Mackenzie Brown can win gold here with a 10. 
She's pulled that one to the right and it's gone into the nine. And look at that. What a joy it is to watch this archery after such a long time. We're getting brilliant matches. Dapika Kumari has leveled things up five set points apiece after regulation five sets. So we will have a shoot off for gold in the, the recurve women's final. What more could you ask for, Nikki? Oh, it couldn't be tighter, could it? She just didn't look happy with that last arrow, Mackenzie, as it went off. You could see it in her face. She was uh, nervous as to where, what was going to happen, but uh, it was enough to tie. And uh, we're going to see each of these archers shoot one more arrow, and it's just the closest to the middle. Great stuff. Can't ask for more. After 18 months without a Highland Archery World Cup Series stage, uh, we have got bags of brilliant archery so far here from Guatemala City. First time that Guatemala have hosted a Hind Archery World Cup stage. I fancy it won't be the last. Oh, it's been a fantastic week of shooting. But Kamari, as we said, has been working on a mental game. A better way to test it out than a one arrow shoot off for gold. And a place, a guaranteed place at the Honda Archery World Cup Finals at the end of the season is all down to this. Clearing the target faces at the moment, clean targets, because this is one arrow closest to the center. If there's a measure required, they don't want any holes from the previous sets in the targets. Gives a moment for the athletes uh, to well, either panic or get themselves set up for this shoot off. Both of them taking a slightly different approach had her words early with her coach and then just sat back and just went with inside herself she's going to shoot first in shoot off gold nine Good, strong shot. Good focus, good finish. Trust in the it. 10, and it will be gold for Mackenzie Brown. That's in the 9, and I think that's further out. Yeah. I think Topeka Kamari has taken the first stage of the Hyundai World Cup Series here in Guatemala City with a shoot-off 9. Nikki. what a match, but it is Kamari, isn't it? She's taken it. She has indeed, yeah. I mean... We're just expecting a 10 from either of them there, but nine was good enough to take it and to book her place in the World Cup finals later this year. Wow. Brilliant stuff. Confirmation then that Dipika Kumari from India is the champion here at the Hyundai Archery World Cup Series Stage 1 in Guatemala City. And she will go to the finals at the end of the season. Very sporting from Mackenzie Brown there. She must be very disappointed not to have won, but standing with her opponent for a photo op, really, really good to see that kind of respect between archers, which is well known on the circuit. Yeah, definitely. You know, these girls to travel around the world together and there's definitely that mutual respect between them. It's been a long time, but we've been waiting for uh, this sport to get back underway and it's been a brilliant return to archery here in Guatemala City uh, the women's recurve individual gold medal goes to Topeka Kumari of yeah, India still more to come though today let's go and have a chat with Topeka Kumari Topeka back on the podium here in Guatemala how do you feel with these two gold medals uh, it's a long time I play in uh, like in a box and I'm still shivering <laughs> so it's feeling great uh, at the same time uh, feeling happy and feeling nervous so both <laughs> shoot offs are always never uh, what do you focus on to win that shoot off there? actually it's very difficult part that the sound duk, 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 it's, <laughs> it feels actually very nervous but uh, 
uh, I just focus my on shooting and on my form. Yeah. How meaningful is this medal for you today? How many? How meaningful is it for you winning these two gold medals in this season? Uh, they all medals like give us so many confidence and uh, push push me up to give better performance and uh, you know uh, always go strong and keep playing hard, you know, train hard. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Well, brilliant stuff there from Topeka Kamari. Uh, she answered one question for me. I often wondered how the archers cope with uh, the heartbeat noise in, in, at the beginning of the shoot-off. And she said, well, that doesn't help. <laughs> yeah, it's really loud and it kind of thuds through your body in that stadium. Really adds the pressure. That's what it's there for, to add the tension and excitement. Perhaps the archers don't like it, but I think uh, the audience, uh, both on TV and in venue when possible, uh, well, I really do enjoy it and uh, look, lovely to see that smile. She's been working so hard during lockdown on her mental game and uh, she really did test it out with a gold medal shoot-off against Mackenzie Brown. Mackenzie Brown shooting brilliantly in the end uh, in the final, having struggled through her semi-final, will be on the podium with a silver medal very shortly. Señoras y señores, la ceremonia de premiación para recurvo Femenino. Well, there we go. The athletes coming out for the medal presentation for the recurve women's individual. And whilst the Pika Kamari will be the happiest, she's definitely booked her place at the Hyundai Archery World Cup Finals at the earliest possible opportunity in the season. It's good ranking points for Alejandra Valencia and Mackenzie Brown. So Tom Dean, Secretary General of World Archery, will be presenting the medals. Don't envy him wearing a suit in 28 degrees temperature out there. Medalla de bronce, representando México. Alejandra Valencia. So here we have Alejandra Valencia, the world number 25, 20 years old, from Mexico, collecting the bronze medal. traditional doll. You know, I've been asked a question about the doll. I knew the doll would in, in, in excite everybody. Why is it so big? The traditional doll is usually a maximum of two inches tall. Well, I can tell you why it's so big. It's for us tourists. Guatemalans have made them bigger for Western tourists. Silver medal here for Mackenzie Brown of the USA. She fought so well and she's given herself a big shout at uh, claiming a spot, a spot for the Americans still trying to qualify a team for the Olympic Games and got a bag of ranking points. And we see her at the finale at the end of the season. Y la medalla de oro representando India. But the archer of the moment is Topeka Kumari, the 26-year-old Indian, ranked number nine in the world, has been working hard on her mental game throughout lockdown and uh, has a beautiful smile, uh, very well liked on the circuit. She's taken the gold medal here and she, with that, has booked her place at the Hyundai Archery World Cup Finals. A brilliant performance from her. Señoras y señores, por favor, pónganse de pie para escuchar el himno nacional so, de India. It's time for us to hear the Indian national anthem.
Señoras y señores, por favor, démosle un cálido aplauso a nuestras medallistas. Well, there we have it. The Indian national anthem played in the stadium. I'm not quite sure that the archers know what they're supposed to do now. COVID protocols are, are strict, and uh, there you go. We've got it sorted out for the photos. They are now having their shots for the press before they'll exit stage right. A brilliant uh, way to conclude things in the finals and here are the Hyundai Archie World Cup rankings. Kamari at the top, a stage winner going to the finals at the end of the season. Mackenzie Brown and Alejandra Valencia picking up the other medals. A brilliant stuff from all of the archers through the semi-finals and this new semi-final bronze and gold medal match lineup. Topeka Kamari coming through her semi-final. Alejandra Valencia settling for the bronze medal. Kamari coming away with gold. A few sketchy moments for her. Mackenzie Brown pulled it all together in the final that went down to a shoot-off. We saw the teenage sensation Madalena Amastraya from Romania, who I'm sure will f feature in the future. Mackenzie Brown getting a perfect there and a knowing smile to her coach. There is that Romanian teenager. Had a few wayward shots in her semi-final, but made it through to the top four here in Guatemala City. Valencia with the bronze medal in the end. Again, some wayward shots from Amastraya in that bronze medal playoff was enough for a very determined Valencia to come through and take the bronze after disappointment of losing in the semi-finals. And there is that mutual respect all around. We then switched on to a beautiful gold medal match up and down. Mackenzie Brown was down and out 3-1 after just two sets. Davika Kamari though had a wobble and Mackenzie Brown actually went into the lead. Kamari had to fight back to force a shoot off which she won with a nine and then proudly stood on top of the podium for the national anthem of her home country. Brilliant stuff. And that is the women's recurve done and dusted here in Guatemala. Well, not much time to waste here as we switch over to the men's side of the draw. Two semi-finals, a bronze match and a gold medal match. Let's take a look at the final four. Well, here they are, Steve Vaya and Daniel Castro going up against each other in the second semi-final and it's Angel Alvarado against Atanu Das in the second semi-final. Nikki, another great lineup of four archers here in Guatemala. Yeah, definitely. Really excited to see um, all four of these go through. E any of the four could make the gold medal match, so it's really exciting with this new format. Yeah, the lineup for, the, for, for these sessions has changed somewhat this year, so we get to see the semi-finals. What do you think of it? I think it's great, you know, coming into the last day, um, there's opportunity for any of the four to, to take the gold. Well, here's how they got to uh, this semi-final via coming through the top against Alvarino Garcia, uh, and he will go up against uh, Daniel Castro. And they, the first semi-final is actually out already on the stage, and that was Angel Alvarado from Mexico, the 20-year-old world number 94, up against this man here, India's Atanu Das. He's 29 years old, and uh, he's world number 38. Referee being announced out to the very limited crowd here in Guatemala City. Um, right, one quick question. Atanu Das is married to another archer. Yes, indeed, Deepak Kamari. And uh, both featuring in the finals here in Guatemala City. I wonder if the pair of them will walk away with a medal of any colour. Atanu Das is about to find out. Semi-final number one. Tano Das will shoot first. He's facing Angel Alvarado of Mexico. Shot a 668. 
Alvarado and a 680 for Atano Das in the ranking round. Das ranked second and managed to hold up that ranking throughout the knockout. Long hold for the first yeah. arrow, but into the 10. Das had to uh, beat one of his teammates, Jadav, in the third round. Um, well, a bit of a rough start there from Alvarado. Yeah, it's not what you want to start with, but, um, you know, just coming into the stadium, he needs to make sure his sight marks on. Fantastic there from the Indian. Still not quite centered. Twenty-eight. It's enough for the first two set points. Alvarado will want to finish with a good arrow in preparation for the second set, and he does just that. So 27 in the end, not a bad outcome for Alvarado, but 28 for Atanu Das of India, who leads two set points to nil. Solid start then from Das. Yeah, definitely. Um, straight in the middle, so he's going to be pleased with that. It's going to give him lots of confidence. He's smiling and very, very happy, looking quite relaxed. Alvarado's arrow is just a bit more spread out on the target. I think he just took that time over the th like second, third arrow just to get into the middle, so hopefully he can start off in this next set closer to the middle. Here we take a look back. Very deliberate process there is the winning smile of Atanu Das. Very relaxed character on the circuit. The two set points have gone to Atanu Das. So it will mean that Angel Alvarado will shoot first in set number two. Just out the 10. Unlucky there. A little tweak on the site. As soon as he shot that, he was just looking, wasn't he, to see where it went. Just a wee bit high. Yeah. Better. Got his sight centered now. Over correction. Possibly. Oh, I can put this on the bridge. And he has a 28 for him. Das finishing with a 26. So after a brilliant start from Das, that 8 in the first set and his third arrow, making the 20 after two tens, has uh, perhaps indicated the direction his performance is going in at the moment. Yeah, there's nothing between them though, is there? Um, and we see this in some of the other matches, um, up and down, you know, this is what the set system lends itself to. you just got to reset and get back out there and shoot the best three arrows you can. Yep, shooting over 70 metres as well, so just that little bit further than compound that the arrow has to travel. So the tiniest of change at the shooting line end that we're looking at here makes a very big difference 70 meters down the range. So two apiece after two sets. And uh, not a consistent performance from either archer just yet. Atanu Das will start off set number three. Yes. 
straight in the turn. Did you see his glowing sight pin as we saw that Whoa. angle from the back there? He's just using that to aim straight in the centre of the gold. Yes. And what reply? X10. See that sight pin sticking up in the middle of that sight. It's got a little glow fibre from his side that you can see. Just drops low into the nine. Firme y fuerte. Very similar sight pin used by the competitor as well. A similar result. Good response, good pressure here. Colorado, how will you handle this? Ten required for a share of the points. Gets a nine, a great score, 28. Uh, but a 29 from Das means he takes set number three. And the points with that go to him. So 4-2 now to the Indian. Uh, th this is swinging one way and t'other. Absolutely. More solid, though, from both of them. I um, want to see a bit more of that as we go into the next set. But, um, yeah, just looking... You can really see different competitors have um, different sight pins. So you can have a little fiber, you could have just a clear open ring, you'd have a little dot. Um, so, yeah, different people aim um, with slightly different sights. Yeah, the process is different and the, the, the equipment setup is different for the archers. Very individual sport. Very individualized sport for the archers. So set number four about to get underway and it is Atanu Das leading 4-2. So Angel Alvarado will shoot first. Mustn't let Das win this set. Yes. Brilliant start straight in the ten. Yes. And a reply on the line. It's going to be the highest score in the ten. Yes. Both archers really finding their groove now. Yes. Well, as the performance ramps up, so does the pressure. Both are on for a perfect here. Verado has the slight advantage of shooting for it first. Drops into the nine. Now the door opens for Atanu Das, a 10, and he'll take this one in four sets. Oh, what a brilliant finish from Atanu Das. A perfect 30, and what a way to clinch the first semi-final. A very confident looking young man as well. He believed that he was going to do that, and he saw his way through. Brilliant 30 to finish things off in semi-final number one. Well, Nikki, the impo improvement from both of them just ramped up after set number two. Yeah, it did. A little shaky start, and sometimes just coming out into, these, into this final venue can just put that pressure on you, but they both settled down really well to give us a great match there. Superb stuff and uh, confirmation from the target jug that uh, Atanu Das of India has taken semi-final number one and he will go on to compete for the gold medal here in Guatemala City. Well, the archers uh, leave the field of play. Uh, a superb performance in the end from, uh, from the Indian archer. Yeah, really, really solid, lovely shots. He looked confident throughout, smiling, joking, you know, just slipped up a little bit in that second end, but really came back strong. Yeah, superb performance uh, from both of them. Uh, we will see Angel Alvarado again. The 20 year old will be back out to shoot for the bronze medal. So still a lot to play for. And he showed some 
well, some tremendous performance in that semi-final. A couple of shaky arrows in the first two, uh, but then he got right back into the groove and only dropped three points in the last two sets. It was a high-quality performance from the pair of them, but Atanu Das is through to the gold medal match. And look, they're already ready to come out for the second men's semi-final. Brilliant performance in the first, and we're expecting more from these two. It will be Daniel Castro of Spain leading out Steve Weyer of the Netherlands as the two go up and compete to see who will face Atanu Das in the final. So semi-final number two in the recurve men's individual. World number 35, Daniel Castro against the world number four, Steve Viner. In la paca numero uno, y representando Países Bajos, Steve Viner. Steve Viner is uh, just 24 years old, shot a 665 in the ranking dos, round, ranked 17th for the elimination Daniel Castro. Daniel Castro is 24 as well, and he shot a 666 in the ranking round to be ranked 13th. Steve Vaya came through a, a quarter of the draw that was actually very, very tough, but his teammate Broxma, uh, he faced in round three, had knocked out uh, perhaps the, the biggest contender in, in that quarter. Yeah, he did indeed. Brady Ellison fell in the second round. Do you think he might have bought him a, a non-alcoholic beverage in the bar afterwards I would I would imagine he, he would have done a decent <laughs> chap he is I hear uh, it did open up the side of the draw for Steve Viner so a bit more of a comfortable ride to this semi-final Castro well he's a uh, a slightly tougher draw but uh, he shot very well and he's booked his place in the semi-finals can he book his place in the final here Let's get set number one underway. Robin. Look really solid, just a little bit high. Oh, a correction there. He could see straight away it was going to go low. Do you see how he just flicked his front arm up in the hope to just send it a little bit higher? Stay very calm with it and then very quickly made the adjustments. Got away with a nine. Castro shoots a second nine. Ruby. Opposite side. Longer hold that time, but another nine and a solid 27 to start. Opportunity here for Viner, though. Doesn't quite get it, but matches the 27 and it's one set point each. Anything of note there, Nikki, that you spotted? I just think, yeah, Steve doesn't look quite comfortable, does he? Even that last arrow, it was a little bit kind of almost twitchy um, as he released, so it's just not quite smooth. I think Daniel's come out, he looks really solid, um, lovely smooth release, so yeah, just looking a little bit more um, clean, I suppose. Let me take a look back and you see the action there from behind. Oh, just see the, the grimace. That was his last arrow, which was actually the best of the three. But making changes all the way through that first set, Steve Viola. Try not to give away too much in terms of uh, the facial features. A bit deadpan, but that's part of his process, staying cool, calm and collected. Daniel Castro, pretty much the same actually, doesn't really give too much away in the facial expressions. So shoots first because he shot first in the first set. And they are all still square at one set point each. Yeah. Really solid, straight back in the 10. Yeah, first 10 of the second semi final here. Yeah, another 
direction, but right in the X. We just hear a little bit of breeze straight in the X. Didn't affect him at all. That was a nicer looking shot, wasn't it? It just looked smoother, cleaner. Well, both on for a perfect here. <coughs> Drops up into the nine. So opportunity again for Steve Vire. That's a better one than last time because he's already shot two tens. But Twitch is on that one as well, and it's another nine, and it's another set point share for Castro and Vaya. <laughs> is, this, is this part of the um, fact they haven't been competing for such a long time? They're not, there's not that consistency that we would be used to. I think, to be fair, with Steve, this is a little bit of his technique. Um, we often see him using corrections. Um, and yeah, it's no different here. So, it, you know, he can just tell if, if it didn't quite feel right, then he can just make it, try and make a little adjustment to, to see if he can get it closer to the middle. Yeah, you said in particular that the, the second shot from uh, Steve Vire was that just looked different and I think it produced the best shot so far from him. All square after two. They've shared the set points. It's time for set number three. Over to you, Daniel Castro. It was a long hold. They got 20 seconds to shoot the shot. Another high left nine. A lot of movement. It just doesn't feel pretty, does it? It's <laughs> uh, as a coach, I just want to see that smoothness and uh, you know direction to the target. But like I say, this is classic of Steve. Yeah. Got away with a 10 in his first shot, and Castro's just uh, matched that. Yeah, square again. Another high nine, so 28. An 8. Sorry, a 10 here for Steve Vaya will get him the points. Yes, and that it. is what he's got. So a 29 for oh Steve Vaya, and he goes clear. 4-2 up, having won the first set. First win of a set so far in the second semi-final. Nothing in particular that you, you can say stands out for Daniel Castro in terms of improvement, tens and nines. Yeah, he's looking really solid. Um, lovely smooth shots, um, just drifting a little bit out. I mean, 27, 29, 28, fairly consistent. Um, so he's just got to, you know, keep with his normal shot process. Well, you're talking about the, the technique and the process that Steve Meyer goes through. What in particular would you be looking at? I mean, what would you correct as coach? I mean, that it is the indicative of their style. Um, they like to steer. Um, that's a thing with the Netherlands. Um, we see some of the other guys doing as well. So um, it's not normally something we would teach. It's really an instinct to try and steer the arrow towards the middle. Well, it's worked for him. He's 4-2 up. So Daniel Castro will now shoot first because he is trailing. It's time for set number four. Really nice. This whole group just a little bit high. I hope he just tweaks his sight, brings that down. Again, just a little adjustment on, on release. 
todo lo mantiene la intensidad. Solid. Bit of pressure now. Oh, this could be put to bed with an eight. Daniel Castro. He's yeah. done yeah. a ten, yeah. so a perfect 30 for him and a perfect result. He draws level on set points for a piece. Uh, but Steve Vier has pumped his third arrow into the ten in preparation for set number five. And it, well, uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to know really what to say about that. Vaya is just, well, we've said it before throughout uh, Recurve Sunday, it's up and down in performance. Yeah, that last arrow was really nice. It was just much, much more smooth, went in the 10. So if he can recreate those, um, let's see what can happen in this last set. Well, four apiece, so uh, we will go into a fifth regulation set. And there you see the adjustment that Nicky's been talking about, pulling the bow, trying to steer the arrow uh, in the direction you want it to go. And don't forget, these bows are taught, the arrows depart very quickly from when, from when you release. Yeah, recurve bow probably traveling around 200 feet a second. So fast, I think, is the <laughs> technical term for that one. So opportunity still available for both of these archers to make the final. They could both do it in this set if one of them can just get more points than the other. And it does smack of one that could potentially go to a shoot off. <laughs> really solid. Yeah, really good start. Just what it needed to put some pressure on Steve Viren again. There's a big pull. Now that's going to be marked as a nine, and uh, well, as suspected, it's been marked for a measure that could become very crucial. Just a touch high. Keep moving your sight, please. Come on. <laughs> All the whole groups up there just want a little tweak on it. Yeah. A better okay, so 10 for Viola. So these arrows, all important, they potentially are, as we can see, sharing 19 each. Viola potentially could be up on 20, though. Crucial arrow into the 9. So a 28 for Daniel Castro, and as you can see, a 10 to win, but actually a nine might be enough. Now the measure becomes important. Now the measure is really, really important. Things stand 28 apiece, five set points each, and it would be a shoot off. But Steve Vyer's first arrow is marked as a nine asterisk. Let's see if we can hear the target judge. He's having a measure from both sides. So it's important they look from both angles. Wow, we can't quite hear the target judge clearly enough. What I guess was I could see a little bit of yellow, and it was indeed a 9 for Steve Vire. That first arrow so critical to the outcome of this second semi final. It does mean that the two archers share the set points in the fifth set, and we will have a one arrow shoot off. Well, it looked like that from the start, didn't it, Nicky, that this was heading towards a tie? Yeah, these guys are just so close this week. I mean, that arrow uh, liner there, I mean, it could have been within a millimetre, and that has just cost him winning the match straight off, and we're going to go to this shoot-off. Nail-biting. Yeah, who knows what's going to happen here. Arco recurvo masculino individual, semifinal. Well, they're trying to prepare themselves and stay relaxed and stay calm. The pressure is phenomenal here. Don't forget, winning this match 
puts them into the final, winning the final will give them an automatic place at the season finale. Big deal for these archers. So here we go. A shoot off in the recurve men's second semi final. Daniel Castro on target number two will shoot his one arrow first. Really critical to get a good score and put some pressure on your opponent. It's a really long hold. <laughs> Quite a wide nine. So any kind of ten will do it, but actually a big portion of the nine ring is open to Steve Vire. What can he do? He pulled that one into the eight. Oh my goodness me. I don't think Castro thought he was in with a chance at all, but Daniel Castro has beaten Steve Avaya by a 9 8 shoot off. Uh, what a tremendous <laughs> a bit of entertainment, I have to say, uh, from these two archers yet again in Guatemala City. Unbelievable. I just, yeah, I thought, you know, Steve had a fantastic opportunity there. We saw a massive steer and just into the eight. Well, Steve Vire will be back very shortly because he'll have to pick himself up for the bronze medal match. But what a performance from Daniel Castro. Up against the world number four, let's not forget. That could have been shaky enough as it was, but Daniel Castro has performed brilliantly throughout that semi-final and is confirmed as a finalist here in Guatemala City. He will face Atanu Das for gold a little bit later on. As we take a look back at uh, some of the highlights of that match, Nicky, you said he was strong throughout. Yeah, just nice, consistent, smooth shots. Um, we just saw more of that steer in there from Steve and just really caught him out on the last arrow there. Yeah, I don't think you could quite believe what he saw. Fist bump of course from Steve Vire, uh, definitely disappointed that's for sure but uh, he'll have to pick himself up because he'll be out for bronze the targets being replaced again a couple more matches left to go here on recurve Sunday in Guatemala City So uh, let's take a look at how those semi-finals have left things. At the top, Steve Vire going down to Daniel Castro into the bronze medal match where he'll face Angel Alvarado of Mexico who lost 6-2 to Atanu Das. Das and Castro will be the last match here on Recurve Sunday, the gold medal match. But first up, it will be the bronze medal match between the Netherlands' Steve Vire and Mexico's Angel Alvarado. Just uh, preparing Steve Vire, obviously, having just come off after his semi-final. Uh, disappointment for him uh, in terms of the result, a shoot-off. But he has been pretty wild here in terms of, you know, Archer's key thing is looking for consistency. Consistency of process, consistency of performance. And it's the one thing that we've not seen. Yeah, each of these matches have been like a little bit of a roller coaster, good ends, bad ends. I think it's just indicative of the fact that, you know, it's been 18 months since they've stood together on these final fields. You know, you can do a lot in practice to um, work on your mental game, but there's nothing like standing here on the World Cup final circuit. Yeah, it's, uh, it's critical that uh, they get this experience, especially in the run up to the Olympic Games. Uh, it looks like our archers are. All but ready to come out onto the field of play for the recurve men's bronze medal match. And it will be the 20-year-old Mexican Angel Alvarado Señora, who si leads them out. Not much of a chance for Steve Vire to recover after his semi-final loss. But he's got to remember, he's got 
a medal at stake here. This is the recurve men's bronze medal final. En la faca número uno y representando Países Bajos. So Steve Lyon will Wheeler. shoot on target number one. Remember, he is the world number four, at 24 years old. And Ango Alvarado, Mexico, the 20 year old world number 94, will shoot on target la number two. Partido, so, Nikki, as they prepare to begin set number one, who do you favour in this one? I'm going to go with Angel. I think he's um, on form, he's looking solid. Um, has he got the momentum to bring him through this match? Well, some big questions that need to be answered. Uh, it's about time we got on with the bronze medal match. It will be Angel Alvarado of Mexico on target number two. Who will shoot first? consistency he had in the semi-final despite the loss he looks strong starting well looks like a nine but goes for a measure matched by Steve Vaya Another 10. We're going to get a measure on that first one, so potentially a perfect start, Mangal. Better time shot, but still in the nine. Steve. The measure becomes important already if I can get a 10 here. Pulling that one Moving. gets a 9. So they are matched for 27 at the moment, but Alvarado's first arrow could be marked up to a 10, and so Alvarado could be two set points to nil up. So the measure becoming critical already in this bronze medal match. Yeah, definitely. It did look really close, I think, from what we just saw a glimpse of it. I think I'd call it in, but it's really tight. Very, very tight indeed. Oh, it's thumbs up from the teammate. Interesting to get that signal so quickly. It's great, though, for an archer. You know, you just want to know. You don't want to stand there wondering what's happening. You want a confirmation from your teammate who's down there, your agent, to pull your arrows so you can get on mentally with where you're at for the next end. Let's just get a look back and that last arrow really pulled. I mean, we're talking here about a, a bronze medal match, and Steve I just he's, he doesn't look happy at all. Yeah, you know, he's just got to get into his groove, get, you know, the normal feelings or what his shot feels like, go out there and do it, forget what's happened in the past. Well, the measure was confirmed as a 10 for Angel Alvarado. He leads by two set points to nil. So Steve Meyer shoots first in set number two. X10, really happy with that. The nod, he's feeling comfortable. Slight adjustment again, but finding the 10 this time. Oh, X10, the technique, he just looks so good, doesn't he? Wide into the seven, so big opportunity here for four clear set points. Angel Alvarado, a seven, will do it. 
he wants a 10. Yeah. He's got a 10, a perfect 30 from him, and a real sign of dominance there from Angel Alvarado. Four nil up after two sets. He could do this in the magic nine arrows here if he wins the third set clear from Steve Vai, who looks in all sorts of bother at the moment. Yeah, big adjustments from Steve, just not really happy as the shot goes off and feeling like he's needing to just give it a bit of a steer into the middle of the target. See there, just pulling their arm over to the right, trying to make an adjustment as the area went high left in the seven. Not happy with things. Uh, you can understand why. He's such a high level performer, but it's just not coming together for him at the business end of the tournament. Steve Vaya has got to forget about everything and just go back to the basics. Has an opportunity with the set system, but he trails by four set points to nothing. Can't really afford much of a mistake here. Really should be looking at taking all the set points here. Shooting first in set number three. Back in the 10, just where he wants to be. Matched by angle. Oh, it's really heating up now. Tens on each side. Just slightly low. The whole group, there's two arrows there, just slightly low. A little tweak on the site. Opportunity here though for Vaya. Didn't get really happy with that one either. Yeah, no massive adjustment, but he's just not he's not in the groove, is he? A ten required. He's forced Anga Alvarado to get a ten to share the points. Gets a nine and Vaya is off the mark. And just like that, things can change around. 4-2 Angel Alvarado leads, but will those two points give Steve Vier a bit bit of a boy? Will they push him forwards? I think just give him a bit of confidence. He looked a little bit more comfortable on that end, so he's just got to stick with that now. You know, set system, you've got every opportunity, each end, uh, every, each set to go up there and uh, do your best and take the set points. So, yeah, let's see what he can bring. Yeah, so two, starting with two tens, and then just he just didn't look happy with that third arrow. But actually, it wasn't too far from the ten. So um, perhaps uh, he's just being a little overcritical of himself. And if you look at those three arrows, the grouping there really very good as well, and you know quite easily could have been a perfect. Yeah, the group size, but just tweaked his sight and lifted them up, and uh, it could have been a straight thirty. Well, still trailing. Set number four, we'll see Steve Vaya shoot first. It's the line. Gets the ten. Next ten in reply. Just dropping it low. The shots are looking a little bit smoother, not as erratic, but got to get the tens here. Opportunity for Angel Alvarado here. He's hit the nine as well. That looks like a solid ten to me. Pressure on Vaya here. Pulled that one as well. Now that could be an eight. We have it marked as a 9 for a measure, but a 10 is a definite here for a win. A 9 actually was enough, uh, but it's because that measure for Vaya has been marked down from an 8 measured up to a 9, so a maximum he can get is 20. 
28 and 29 was the score for Angel Alvarado. Not a curious end to that one, but I think uh, the measure will happen, of course. But Angel Alvarado looks like he's taken bronze here. Yeah, we're just going to have to make, w wait for confirmation of this because it could split the set now. No, it's not going to be enough, is it? But we need that score on the board. Well, they're definitely not sure. No <laughs> celebrations down on the shooting line. I think Steve Vaughan knows what the score is here. And there you go, confirmation that it was enough for Angel Alvarado to take the bronze medal here in the recurve men's individual. Six set points to two. A bit of a curious end with the measure there. No one could quite work things out, but there is confirmation that the recurve men's bronze medalist is Mexico's Angel Alvarado. You called it, Nicky. I've got to be fair to you. You did call it. You said he was strong. Uh, there were signs from Steve Vire of, of some uh, repetition of what we've seen in the past of how high a standard he has. Hey, here we see him, uh, not necessarily with the best shot, but this man here, Angel Alvarado, strong throughout. Yeah, he was. He just looked solid. He looked on form. Sh the shots were smooth. Um, so he just looked in the groove to take this match, which he did. Yeah. Not quite there for Steve Vai yet, but we've only just got back to archery. Doesn't need to beat himself up too much. Uh, he has made the podium matches here. Just missing out on a medal. But we will see Angel Alvarado on the podium in bronze medal position a little bit later. Coming up right now, though, it's time that we turn our attention to the recurve men's gold medal match. Another thriller in store for sure. Atanu Das of India taking on Daniel Castro of Spain. Señoras y señores, por favor den la bienvenida a los atletas del campo para la disputa del último partido y la medalla de oro en la categoría arco. Here we go. Time for gold. The last action on a recurve Sunday here in Guatemala City. It's been a brilliant host for this uh, first Honda Archery World Cup in 18 months. And the first time Guatemala have actually held the stage. I'm sure that we will be back. But it will be Daniel Castro of Spain, ranked 35 in the world. He's going to take on the world number 38, Atanu Das from India. And we've got an absolute thriller in store here, Nikki. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is going to be another tight one. Uh, Daniel is ranked higher, but I think Atanu Das is more on form here. I think I'm going to pitch for him. Yeah, an interesting one, this, uh, because uh, no, not too much emotion shown from... Uh, Daniel Castro shooting on target number one. Uh, completely opposite on the other side of the shooting line. Tane Das is, uh, you know, quite free with his uh, expressions, his smiles, his frowns, his quizzical looks down the, down the down the range. But like you say, he is on cracking form. It's about time we found out who is going to pick up the recurve men's gold medal here at stage one of the Honda Archery World Cup Series in Guatemala City and book their place in the finals at the end of the season. Atanu Das will shoot first. Yeah. Oh, what a start from the Indian. X10, that's exactly where you want to be on that first arrow. Yeah, Oh, what a reply. Well, I'll be happy if the standard stays up here. Just a little bit low on that second arrow. Opportunity to take a small lead. Both follow each other out of the 10 and into the 9. Slightly different directions. That's a, that's yeah. Back in the 10 for Das for a 29. 
pressure applied to Castro here needs a 10 to share the points. And he's put that into the nine as well. So a 28 for Daniel Castro. And the first two set points, just like that, go to Atanu Das. It's very quick, isn't it, Nicky? I mean, you know, this could potentially, or a lot of the matches potentially, could have been done in nine arrows. Uh, it just takes one slip up. Yeah, absolutely. You can go through 6 0 just in those nine arrows, but we've had a bit of a roller coaster run through some of these. Anything can happen. These guys, you know, have had that 18 month break. They're not finely tuned just yet, so we're seeing a little bit of up and down through these matches. Yeah, good point. Uh, roller coaster ride as you put it uh, you know we can't we can't quite <laughs> confirm it's over but a 10 9 10 from Atanu Das a bit of uh, bow steering there from him or just a reaction I think the shot? I think it was more just have a little look he wasn't quite sure it want where it went and he really wanted to see immediately what had happened Archers have eyes like hawks. If I stood 70 meters away from even a target that big, I'd struggle to tell whether it was in the, the uh, 9, 10 for sure. Set number two. Castro shooting first. Yeah. He's got a naturally long hold. It doesn't look like he's holding it for a long time but whereas if you put that in another archer's hands it would look like a long hold yeah different archers have a different length of you know, that hold what we would call timing from the time you hit your face with a string to the time that you execute but what we're really looking for is the consistency you want the same every shot yeah. it's working for Daniel Castro in this second set two turns after Atanu Das had dropped an eight for his first arrow. So already this one is looking Lord like it's gone away uh, from Das, even with that 10. Nine from Castro puts this one out of reach and puts the match back on level terms. Oh, he shoots an eight, so all of a sudden, the opportunity switched over to the other side of the shooting line, a 10 from Das, and he maintains the two-point lead but gets closer to the target score. Oh, he's drifted over into the eight, so a 26 from Das. Nikki, the roller coaster, it's back. <laughs> yeah, that release on the last shot there just didn't look nice at all. Um, so yeah, I think it really just came from a bit of a poor release, just took it down into the eight. It's it's fascinating this competition. Uh, I mean, great <laughs> we're back to archery, but what what a way to come back to give us all this entertainment. The ups and the downs throughout uh, the whole tournament have been absolutely incredible. You just don't know what's going to happen, which makes it absolutely compelling to watch. Tony Das looking like a master in set number one, and then dropping two eights in set number two. Hey Castro, at least we can say he's been very consistent. 10-9-9 in the first set, 10-10-8-2-28 in the first two sets. Uh, if anything, that might be the better policy, consistent shooting. Let's find out. They're all square two set points each. That's time for set number three. And it will be Atanu Das from India to shoot first. Yes, sir. Immediately turning to try and look to see where that arrow went. Very long hold. Oh. What a shot, though. The opportunity was there for him, and he took it. Pressure now on Tanu Das. Dropping another point. It's just, yeah. you really needed to put the pressure on here and uh, three points down. Good shot. Very close. It is a nine. Oh. 
Bob. Back. Yeah. Back in the tens for a 27. So an eight to share the points, a nine to take the lead. Puts it in the ten. Brilliant stuff from Daniel Castro and a fist bump there as well. A 29 after 228 sees the Spaniard going 4-2 up in set points. Nicky. Is it going to be this consistency that's going to win this for him? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, well, it could be just one set left or it could be two. You know, you've got to be on your form now. This, you know, the next three arrows are really important. You know, take a look back. and We talked about the strength and the consistency and the solid nature of Daniel Castro's approach. I'm not saying there's anything particularly wrong with Atanu Das. It just seems almost like just a couple of moments of lapses of concentration, perhaps on a shot, not it's a dice. Sometimes the release doesn't look as smooth, so it's an execution issue. Yeah, there's slightly different lengths in the holds, aren't there? It just doesn't look as like finely tuned as uh, Daniel. Well, Daniel Castro now is in the unenviable position, as we've noted at this competition throughout, of being in the lead. Uh, now, the thing is here that he's two set points away from a win and a, and a gold medal at the first stage of the High Under Eight Watt Archery World Cup Series, but that pressure so far has not been anyone's friend. Bob. Tanu Das <laughs> gets uh, set number four underway with a nine. Loading anchor transfer. Y ahora mira y la intensidad. Solo sigue dirigiendo, eh? Just talking him through the shot. Seis, cinco. He looked a little bit unsteady, didn't he? Threw it and just wide into the eight. Muy bien. Got corrected over to the right. So Muy bien. One would think the last one from Das will be right in the middle and hit the 10. Oh, this is it. This is what we've seen throughout this competition. Get right the way up to the finishing line and then have a big stutter. There you go. In the middle for the 10 and a 28. And uh, the points again go to a Tanu Das. And again, we're going to be level after four Sets of regulation archery. Can he get this one back in the middle? That's slightly better, but his lowest score so far, a 24. Mr. Consistent in the gold medal match has suddenly uh, gone on a downward trajectory. Four set points apiece. Atanu Das back in the game here. One more set of regulation archery to go. Just a, a much more solid and fluid performance from Atanu Das in that in that uh, in that set when the pressure was really on yeah he did bring it back there didn't he um Daniel's second arrow you just see the release it's just I think it was just a little bit soft it was definitely different it wasn't as smooth as the ones before um it was just threw it out and when you say the release is soft what, what do you actually mean by that what 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 is the effect of a soft release it just sends the arrow in a different direction so it can affect even the way that we, when we talked about before the um the string kind of moving in and out as, it, as the arrow gets released so it, you know just deflects out the ten and saw some reds there yeah technical release error causing the issues so here we are all square at four set points each. It's time for set number five. This is the recurve men's gold medal match. And Atanu Das has just brought himself back level with Daniel Castro. And puts it into the ten. That's marked as a nine or called a nine in venue. It looked very close to potentially being an eight. It did, yeah. Look near the line, but if it does touch the line, it'll get the highest score. Fuck. Called that one into the ten as well. What a return to form at the right time for Atanu Das in this gold medal match. Mm. 
Good yeah. shot. He really needed that. He had to put the pressure on Atanu for this last brilliant. shot. He certainly did, and Atanu Das can still do this. A 10 will take him to the gold medal. Oh, what a way to finish. A perfect 30 from Atanu Das of India. And Daniel Castro can't match this despite being more consistent throughout. A brilliant finish from Daniel Castro for a 29. But what a return to form for Atanu Das, shooting 9-9-10 in the fourth set and then finishing with a perfect 30 to take the recurve men's gold. Six points to four against Daniel Castro. Yes, yes, Atanu Das. Well, Nikki, what a match. And again, up and down. Yeah, up and down. Another roller coaster. I mean, that last arrow from Atanu Das was not the most pretty, but do you know what? It did not matter. Straight in the 10 for a perfect 30. Fabulous stuff from the Indian here. Gave us a real thrilling ride through the men's gold medal match. And has taken... Uh, first stage of the Hyundai Archery World Cup Series recurve men's gold here in Guatemala City and has booked his place in the season ending Hyundai Archery World Cup finals. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Well, a great, a great performance from. Uh, all four archers in the men's semi-finals, but it's Atanu Das who will be standing on top of the, the podium here in Guatemala City. And I'm sure that they're whisking him off to the interview area as we speak. Uh, hopefully we'll get to hear what he has to say. He looked very happy. Congratulations, Natano. First World Cup of the season, goal, your first win, and a ticket to the World Cup final. How does it feel? It's, it feels amazing, you know. It's, it's like dreams are coming true. Uh, I was working so long, you know, so for so many years, and now this is paying off. So this is my first title. So it's I'm very happy actually. It was a very close match until last that last perfect uh, yes. set that you shot. What was crossing your mind through all those three hours? I just uh, give my best and uh, be at the present. That's it. I didn't think about the future or the past. I just enjoy and be at the present first title but how important for you is it to start with the goal this season yeah it's a, it's a beautiful you know it's a uh, big moral boost for me and uh, olympic is this year so i'm i'm working in the right way thank you very thank much thank you so much well, well liked on the circuit and I think you can see why a lovely chap just saying it was a beautiful feeling and that all the hard work he's been putting in has paid off and he's finally won his first title. A beautiful sentiment from him. Yeah, definitely. He talks about being in the present and that's really important. You know, it's easy to think, oh, I might win this or get a future thought, um, but bring yourself right back there into the present and shoot that arrow. Yeah, fabulous stuff from him course we are preparing now for the medal ceremonies uh, for the men's recurve and uh, he mentioned Olympic year I mean it's a massive year for uh, many many sports uh, and archery is one of them how important is the Olympics to to an archer and to archery it means absolutely everything the Olympics is the pinnacle of our sport and that is what everybody wants to win that gold medal yeah, and then after such a tricky time across the world coming back to archery here and seeing the archers performing successfully yes it's been a bit up and down after the break but still very high level and just the fact that world archery and uh, the guatemalan archery federation and the local organizers in guatemala city have been able to put this on and safely as well yeah i mean archery is a socially distant sport naturally so um, they've all done a great job to bring us this incredible tournament yeah, and uh, Hyundai, of course, uh, have pumped in a little bit more money into the second. In fact, that was agreed before uh, the COVID pandemic. It was supposed to come in last season, but of course, everything got cancelled last season. So a 20% uplift in the prize money across the board 
is a fantastic thing for archers. I bet they were really itching to get back to the field. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it adds the pressure certainly as well. There's a good prize fund on there, <clears throat> and you certainly want to come home with it. Yeah. Well, it sounds like uh, we are ready to go to the ceremonies. It's been a brilliant competition here in Guatemala, and this is the last of the medal ceremonies. It's time to celebrate the podium athletes and the recurve men's individual. Well, the presentation party. Uh, Medalla de bronce, representando México. Ángel Alvarado. So our bronze medalist is from Mexico, the 20-year-old Ángel Alvarado, performing superbly both the semi-finals just being outdone in his semi-final performing brilliantly against world number four Steve Vyer in the bronze medal match a very proud young man collecting that bronze medal So they put in a fine performance uh, throughout the competition here. Very strong and promising for the future. Saluting someone in the crowd with a big heart. It's the 24-year-old Spaniel, Spaniard Daniel Castro. He has taken silver here. I think there's a lot more to come from this young Spaniard. Well, look at that. Kissing the ground. Tanu Das has won his first ever Iron by Archery World Cup title here in Guatemala City. What a way to return to archery. Not only getting the gold, but getting your first ever gold medal. Saying the hard work is paying off. Congratulated by the dignitaries here, receiving his traditional worry doll from uh, Guatemala. I don't think he's got any worries for Tony Das standing on top of the podium. Señoras y señores, por favor, pónganse de pie para escuchar el himno nacional de India. So now it's time for the national anthem of India. Well, brilliant stuff here in the Guatemala City. 
the recurve men's champion. Atanu Das from India, delighted with his first ever title and booking his place to the World Cup finals. Daniel Castro of Spain getting silver and Angel Alvarado of Mexico picking up the bronze medal. And they will just take their moment to have their photos. I'm sure that will be a treasured possession of Atanu Das. Beautiful conditions, brilliant hosts here in the Guatemala City. It's been a fabulous return to archery. Wonderful sentiments from Atani Das as well. Talking about being in the moment and being grateful for the beautiful moment and all the hard work paying off to take him to this title. Let's have a look at how that affects the World Cup rankings. Tano Das at the top. Stage winner will go to the season finale. Behind the Archer World Cup finals, Daniel Castro, Angel Alvarado and Steve Vaya picking up valuable ranking points as we look all the way down. There's a bit of representation from Guatemala as well. In Mr. Floss back. At uh, Nikki, superb tournament. Uh, any particular highlights? Yeah, I think me seeing the um, Madalena, the 18-year-old Romanian, come through to this final four. Uh, previously, the best result they've had is a top 17, and then finally seeing Atanu Das win with a 30 in that final set to take the gold. Uh, yeah, they're both brilliant highlights, and thank you to you for all your insight. We take a look back here uh, across the semi-finals and finals of bronze medal match and the gold medal match Atanu Das fist bumping his coach Steve Vire well he was up and down having issues but he made the top four here so let's not be too harsh on him and Daniel Castro of Spain showing great consistency a couple of wobbles uh, at the end in the gold medal match were what outdid him but you can see from the face of Steve Vire he just wasn't happy with what he did Angel Alvarado was on fine form throughout, solid to make the bronze. Uh, a little bit of a curious move from Matanu Das in the final, just checking where his arrow went. Daniel Castro happy with his performance. He shot 29s in that final, but wasn't yeah. quite enough to take out this man who finished with that perfect 30. And look at the celebration. What a way to win your first World Cup title. A brilliant performance from Atanu Das to take the recurve men's gold and stand on top of that podium. Well, beautiful scenes at the end here. So grateful for seeing the national flag of India at the top of the podium. Now well, that's it from Recurve Sunday here in Guatemala. The married couple, Dapika Kumari of India and her husband Atanu Das, have won the gold medals here in the Recurve individual and booked their places in the World Cup finals at the end of the season. The next stop on the Hyundai Archery World Cup circuit will be Lausanne, Switzerland, with live coverage beginning on the 22nd of May. We'll see you then.